justified our sin And we're gonna take you on a ride Till we find answers within Location not here In shadows we all disappear Hold on, switch gears We're gone as fast as we appear
History, strategy, and mystery. Across the ages, wars have been won and lost on a knife's edge. Yet these three themes have remained true. From the battle cries of ancient barbarian hordes to the crack of gunpowder sparking. Age of Empires is all around us. A truly global game with a community that spans the length of the world. And many on this planet have played since they could barely walk. With players sliding up to a computer hearing the soft whir of the fans as it turns on. Eyes gleaming at the prospect of controlling your empire's destiny. In this realm, you cease to be yourself and become a hero of an age-long past. But these heroes are not gone. They are undying. They live on through our actions and deeds. So when these heroes all meet on the field of battle, something unique is created. Stories are made that transcend time itself. And these stories, well, they become something new. They become... Legend. Ladies and gents, hello, hello, welcome to the final day of Hidden Cub 5. And yet again, you get a look at that excellent trophy, the actual trophy that exists. Random guy on Twitter who messaged me and thought it was just a random uh, animation that wasn't real. Sorry, random guy on Twitter who thought it was an animation and it wasn't real. My apologies for calling you out. Hello, everybody. Welcome in. Those of you watching live on Twitch, those of you watching live on YouTube, should be an awesome final day. We'll have the third place match today, as well as the grand final. And we also have two live viewing parties happening as we speak. Uh, I have not got a peek to see how many people are there yet. It is quite early, so we will really get to know who the early birds are uh, in a moment here. I was not expecting to see my face, but I think we will have a peek at the viewing parties in just a moment. Kind of scared myself there. Um, that's kind of how it is when I look in the mirror. There we go. There we go. Here's our live viewing party here in the U.S. Uh, wow, we've got some people dressed for the occasion as well. And they're all going to act as though they're not on camera right now. Uh, as you'll notice, there are doubt faces on their screen. Uh, not on their screen, sorry, on their chairs. So if we have any failed castles today, the crowd will be there and ready, I hope. Um, we also have... The live viewing party in the UK. Thank you, everyone in London. And as you can tell, it is five or six hours later in London because they are all there and waiting. Whereas here in the US, people are still waking up. But that's epic. Look at that, man. Uh, everybody ready to go. And these guys, yeah, there's a little bit of delay on the, on the broadcast. They, they want to make sure they know that we know they're ready. Well, salutes uh, in chat. I don't think they'll get to see the... Well, no, they will get to see the chat on the side of the screen here. So salute away, please, to everyone who's made it. We should have similar amounts of people at the U.S. and the U.K. meet up, and you'll get to see uh, peaks at them all day today. But uh, thank you, everybody who's there. It means a lot. Uh, to those of you in the U.S., I will see you on uh, later on today. Get to meet you guys. It should be awesome. But uh, live stream, welcome, everybody. Hope you're ready for a big day. It's going to be amazing. We've had a crazy week of Age of Empires 2. I loved the energy and the, the guessing aspect uh, of even the chat during the countdown there. We have some people saying, oh, man, I hope so-and-so does or doesn't do this today. And then someone would reply and be like, I'm not sure that so-and-so is who you think it is. It's been fun. Uh, we'll look at the bracket now and see what's transpired over the last seven days. And this is how Hidden Cup 5 has looked. Uh, we have... Many, many games, some excellent games, some, some players we feel pretty certain on. But there's definitely more confusion this Hidden Cup than ever. I don't know how many Hidden Cups you guys have watched. But in the past, it was a bit easier to, to nail things down. It was a bit easier to know who was coming into the final weekend. And this time, definitely some more possibilities. I think the level has risen in some ways. In other ways, it stayed the same. Which, well... I'm assuming a lot of things myself here. <laughs> uh, final today will be Vasco de Gama versus Alexios Komnenos. 
Both those players have done an amazing job. Uh, both players only losing three games the entire tournament so far. And, of course, winning 12. Uh, but before that, we're going to have the third place decider between Gajimata and Kozrob. Maybe give us some additional guesses as to who these players are. And then they are fighting for a prize pool, which has been getting larger by the second, it feels like, because of the support from the community. Uh, guys, when we started Hidden Cup 5, the prize pool was down at $50,000. It is now at 65849 Thank you so much, everybody. Um, I, I, there definitely has been some confusion, so I'm going to restate this. Thank you to Anonymous for the insane $20,000 donation that happened uh, off stream, basically, uh, in between days that I announced yesterday. So that is a big part of why that's gone up. Thank you, Anonymous, but thank you, everyone who's donated. Seriously, um, it's been insane. Uh, we got someone says canceled my Netflix subscription for donating actual good content that isn't canceled after one season. Lol. All right. Well, Netflix, you just got called out. Uh, thank you, Real. Thank you, uh, Tochin, very much. Thank you, uh, Dreadnuts. No, Dreadnoughts. But oh, whatever. Maybe you Dreadnoughts too. Thank you for the twenty dollars. Thank you, Dance Muffin, for the twenty dollars. Also, we had Mero with the three hundred dollars. Said, thank you, T90. Your content was a companion to my life. Always a beacon of happiness and nostalgia. This is way too feelsy. Over the years, no matter where life took us, your streams have always, were always what I looked forward to. Uh, where I can go rewinds back to simpler times in the past. Yo, salutes, please, to everybody. To all the subs, to all the gifted subs flying in right now. The energy's high. Thank you, guys. I'm uh, trying not to let the, the magnitude of the moment get to me at the moment, you know? Uh, as my... Uh, as, as my therapist once told me, don't face your emotions. Just push them down. Push them down and face them later. That's what I'm doing right now. That's also not what <clears throat> my therapist told me. But uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Websey. Thank you very much, Fly Guy. Thank you, Low Elo Nobody. Thank you, John Chest as well. And yeah, thanks for the love. Um, as we're going to have our third place match starting very shortly here. So the schedule for the day, if we can go back to the bracket, is a best of five into the best of seven final okay uh, i i say this because again just saw some people wondering how that was going to go so it's a best of five third place decider which will start soon and then our best of seven final i do have some things to tell you though and they're very important so right now if you're watching on twitch we have a comment that's pinned that takes you to the guessing submission now uh production maybe you could remind me when the guessing submission is actually shut down today. But I did my guessing on all the players right before this stream started. You guys should do that too. I've been saying all week, all right? People have strong opinions. After Hidden Cup, if you want to come into my chat or my comments and say, I knew, I knew it the whole time, I knew everybody, then you better submit your guesses right now and prove it because you can't come after the fact and say that you knew when it's not actually on paper or, you know, on the site. Um, at the conclusion of the final today, we are going to have the big reveal that reveals every single player. And then we're also going to have data on who the players thought they were playing. We're going to have data on what you guys submitted to what the wider community thought for the players as well, as well as, of course, the votes that we've had. If we look at the votes uh, that we've had throughout the week right now, every time we've completed a series, we've done a vote. And it's been very clear, especially during the round of 16, that people didn't necessarily know um, who was who. And, and here it is. So, you know, the, the fun one, this Hidden Cup, was really the bottom of the bracket, where apparently Viper beat Hart 4-1, but then Viper was so good that he then beat Leary 4-2 right after that. I, I don't know how he had the stamina or how he was allowed to play twice, but apparently he did. Uh, and then, of course, it was like Hart got beat by Viper, but then Hart right back up on his feet, turning it around, and great, great job. He beats Ganji 4-1. So, you know, that that aspect is kind of fun. Um, also, apparently, Hart, in some people's minds, good enough to beat Robert Giscard, but not, not good enough to beat Jan Zizka 4-1 because it went from, like, Hart in the first round, and then everyone's like, no, 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 not Hart. We're going to Leary now. And people pretty much stuck with that for Alexios ever since the first round. Now, I would like to I would like to apologize because I rewatched a lot of the games. I said heart a lot in that first Alexios series. 
I think that might be on me. The votes weren't that high. Maybe Leary was like second place. I think that might be on me. I actually think if any of them, that might have been my me swaying people. I have seen people saying that whatever T90 says, chat votes, which is funny because that's like the opposite of my chat. Like people normally do the opposite of what the streamer wants here. So I don't know how that works in Hidden Cup, but I guess when it comes down to you guys being right, you, find, you, you truly trust my judgment. So thanks for that. Uh, anyways, we're going to do the highlights from yesterday before we move it along here. Let's jump in and see what happened in the semifinals, guys. Uh, big semifinals yesterday to get here and just kind of refresh ourselves on what took place. Um, it was not a good start for Gajimata. Let's be honest. Gajimata, uh, well, that, that's the only highlight we have because Gajimata died so quickly and everyone was like, oh no, this Vasco character is just going to win this series and, you know, get a 4-0 and move directly into the finals. This game was incredible. We had demos, we had knights, we had crossbows, we had castle drops. It was back and forth, but ultimately Gajimata wasn't able to stabilize the eco. And that's what Vasco da Gama has done so well in Hidden Cup 5, is just take good engagements and then expand that economy. And ultimately, with two very quick moments, just uh, took, took the eco lead. And then took it into game three. And then even in game three, it was like Vasco da Gama trying to bring in Rhinos. And this is not the only Rhino highlight we had from this. But this villager ends up getting sniped. Uh, also, we have a highlight of Vasco da Gama's rare mistake on the Rhino. That's funny. See, I said put that on the highlights sarcastically. And production heard me yesterday. So, hey, sorry about that one, Vasco da Gama. But listen, Gajimata tried to make it messy. But he didn't have any control of the middle. And not having any control of the middle here was a big problem. Vasco went directly into Paladin, used all that gold. For the second time this tourney, went for Onager to cut down the trees. And it was just a massive eco lead. Game number four, we had uh, a landing from both players. So if you didn't watch this, you got to go back and rewatch this one. Because it was Gajimata not giving up, landing his opponent. Then we also had a landing from Vasco. And so it was villagers on both opponents' islands. And Gajimata just never gave up this position. He continued to fight. He continued to be stubborn, even though he was down three games and ended up winning that game. And then come this game, he continued to fight as well. Now, everyone should have, should have an excellent fight in them at this level. But with Vasco's dominance, I think it says a lot about whoever Gajimata is. That after going down 3-0, especially with how some of those games went, that he just kept coming here. Like have raids, Meganel pushes, great engagements, and then also a castle drop that was on three TCs from Vasco. Vasco went full greed, got punished for it. And that took us to game number six. This was an amazing engagement for Gajimata, and all of a sudden everyone's feeling like, oh my god. Like people, there were a couple people that left and came back and were like, what happened? Look at this moment, though. Gajimata, fancy moves here to block off the monks. He pre-built those palisades and those houses just to block off the knights there. Ends up getting some conversions. And behind this, just had such good eco, but also a ton of aggression here, which is something that Vasco de Gama definitely needed to do better after losing those two games against Gajimata. Gajimata, I think, completely misjudged this one. Uh, we were speculating because of the upgrades probably looked and saw the opponent didn't have the upgrades he did like a minute or two prior but alexios had the numbers or sorry alexios didn't have the numbers but vasco had the numbers and vasco moved on to the finals now this series here was shaping up to be another massive semifinal. It was very interesting because alexios was advertised to be the aggressor and instead alexios he played incredibly defensive and we had like a castle getting denied here but ultimately it was Kozrao who just again he was the aggressor and he built towers in perfect spots and people were worried for Alexios whoever he is but then Alexios turned it around this is a moment it's just like one of those where we can't show everything that happens on screen it's just impossible we had this villager going down but there was water control happening for Alexios at the same time and Alexios just turned that into aggression the whole way through Alexios was never in trouble this game. He had fished the whole time. Anytime Kozrao tried to move out, Kozrao was getting his monk sniped. That's a beautiful find there from Alexios. 
and Kozrao could never stabilize. Now, Kozrao's home map is Islands. And I talked about how you can go for diversity of strategy on Islands. We've seen landings, we've seen fires, we've seen fast castle, we've seen feudal age. Both players went for the I'm better than you, I will micro you down approach. Only the most confident Island players do this. In fact, I think this is the only Galley v. Galley war I remember over the last like month of, the, of course, the qualifiers in the main event. And Alexios just steamrolled Cosrow here. It was so good. Like, maybe steamroll's unfair, but his micro was was better than Cosrow's. His eco was better than Cosrow's. And then Cosrow, on the Mudflow game, tried to go up to Castle Age here, but didn't have Feudal Age Army. It was a lot of defense with Quick Walls and a lot of defense with Gates from Cosrow. And the greed got punished here by Alexios. Now, I thought this was game over, right? I'm looking at this like, okay, GG, game over. But somehow, Khosrow ended up getting multiple relics. Somehow, Khosrow ended up taking this late. And we had heavy demo. I made a bet a month ago, which, unfortunately, I had to pay out yesterday, that we would never see heavy demo. Because why would we see heavy demo? It's, like, so expensive. There's so many other things. I didn't think the game would go on for a while. Watch this. Conversion. Cool. There was a, there was a blue demo there. It got converted. And it destroyed four or five other ships there. That could have been the end of Alexios if those demos hit. Game number five then, after Alexios ended up taking that one. And Khosrow, he wanted blood. And he really felt like this Ravamsha Rider with the Gurjaras would be the answer to the Mongol Mangadai. And uh, newsflash, Mangadai are one of the best unique units in the game for a reason. And what Alexios did is he escaped the trap there was he also mixed in pikemen, which a lot of players are resistant to doing. Most pros are not going for pikes because they're only going to go for that if their sieve gets the next upgrade, which is help. But having the pikes in front of the Mangadai really helped out here. And this is Khosrow just taking a bad fight after bad engagement, just trying to stay alive. Here's another one. The pikes are doing work. The Mangadai are doing work. Sure, he kills the Treb, but he just, he never had an army that could deal with this. And this was the first civilization pick from Alexios, which I'm going to talk about here in a second. It is a bit surprising to me that we saw that. Now, we've had a couple, we've had the hiddencup.com site, which has had stats, but um, we also have a site, it's called awestats.io, which handles stats like general stats for Age of Empires 2. And they have a tab for Hidden Cup. So listen to this. So I, the, the person who runs the site is, is Jerbot. And he said that the player who bans Mongols the most, or if he doesn't ban Mongols, picks Mongols first, is ACCM. And Alexios was always either banning Mongols if he couldn't get the pick, or picking Mongols first. He continued to pick Mongols first over civs like Chinese, which a lot of other players do. So that speculation is maybe for later in the day at the final, because Alexios is in the final. But I already have some people speculating. Maybe Gajamata is ACCM. Maybe it's Tato. Maybe it's Yo. What do you guys think, by the way? What do you think, chat? Um, this, this would be an excellent third place match here coming up. But uh, just, I wanted you guys to think on it a little bit. And again, you will have to submit things. Uh, again, I'm not sure when. I, I would love to know. I need someone to tell me. I, I think production needs to find out when we're going to shut down the voting. But the voting will be shut down. Uh, either in the middle of the final or like somewhere when the final begins. So please make sure to head over to hiddencup.com and submit your votes there. Also, to everyone who's at the live viewing party, if we can get a peek into the live viewing parties again, uh, there is also a mobile version. So that should work. I have not tested it. I have not tested it. But uh, man, they've got a sick bar back there. Here we go. Let's see. How long's the delay? How long does it take for them to get really excited? It's unfair to them, really. Uh, but this is this is going to be a bit delayed as we are just basically streaming this on Twitch and then pulling it up. They're listening so intently to my words. Seems like we've got a little bit as they're all holding the doubt faces. And yeah, there, now, there's doubt. Doubt confirmed in the crowd there, guys. Gotta love it. All right, good stuff. Uh, shout out to London. Nice to see you guys ready. Man, I mean, I think every seat is filled already here. That's crazy. Good stuff. Love to see it. We've got doubts in uh, in Twitch chat and doubts in person. And like I said, in the uh, the U.S. meetup, we've got people filing in here. It is morning here, guys. It is 10, 10 a.m. So people are filing in right now. 
Uh, we should be able to get a little bit more light in there at some point to be able to see the crowd once everything's going, but we're still just filing in there as we get into our third place match. So uh, salutes to you again, guys, for being here. Let's let's get started here in our third place match. Uh, our caster today, who's joining me for the third place match, sounds very familiar to you. Uh, it's me. So I'm just going to cast this one solo. Um, and then we're going to hop into the final with Dave. Wanted to give Dave a little bit of a rest as we head towards our big grand final. Um, Gajamata on the left side of the screen. Kazra on the right side of the screen. And the draft looks a little bit different because this is a best of five. And so what this means is they basically have a bit more they can ban out. Now they are fighting for a little over $1,000 here in this best of five. So while the, the big thing obviously is people want to see who wins the whole thing. People want to see the reveal today. There's a lot of money on the line and I expect some high level games to give us a nice little warm up as we lead up towards our final. Game number one is going to be Bypass, which immediately excites me because I remember Kazrao and Gajimata winning on Bypass throughout this tournament. And then Gajimata has Bay as the first home map pick, Cup as the second home map pick, and then Kazrao has gone for Arabia and High Tides. So very um, standard-ish maps for Kazrao. I mean, Arabia and High Tides, at least in the little screenshot we have there look the same they they are not the same there's obviously water in the north on high tides and water in the south on high tides but they're similar in some aspects you know open standard lands map which maybe cause looking for today seems like they banned out a lot of the funky ones so they banned out like hidden forts for example evacuation that weren't maps it seems like the players really wanted to play here i personally would not want to play gajimata on evacuation because gajimata had that two-hour game, two-and-a-half-hour game, excuse me, which went down to the final tree. I'm not sure Kazra wants to deal with that today. Uh, but then also, the other game Agashimata had on evacuation was the forward with Byzantines and was towering and had skirms and spears and things were pretty crazy. So, looking forward to it. All right, chat. So, before we dive into this, I want to ask, we want to go player by player. And I'm very curious on what you live viewers think. Now, we've got the live stream on YouTube as people are coming in. We've got the live stream on Twitch. If you had to guess a player name for Gajimata, who would you guess? Now, every single vote we have done has said Tato. Tato, I think, is an amazing guess for this. Tato has been one of the favorites in this tournament. I'm seeing Doubt. I'm seeing Yo, I'm seeing Jordan, I'm seeing Tato, I'm seeing Hera. I'm seeing Yo. Oh, I saw a T90 official. Thank you, guys. Well, you must have missed it. But, uh, guys, I, uh, I, I'm the Viper. Okay, I, we don't know who the Viper is. But according to ChatGPT, the Viper is, is, is T90 official or, or Tristan Barry. Okay, so... Okay, we got some Sebastians there. Interesting. Okay, so it seems like people have it. It seems like people have it set to like five or six potential players. What about Cosrow? If you had to guess Cosrow, who would you guess Cosrow is? Because again, I know what the people voted before. What's it going to be here? Looks like we have a lot of Vipers being guessed as we go. All right, ladies and gents. Well, here we are. Welcome to the third place match. Now, this is interesting. The third place match is a best of five. And we have people spamming my chat with who they think Kozrao is, because I just asked them. And Kozrao, for the first time this tournament, shows up for the third place match in yellow. So if we needed a Viper confirmed moment, this might be it. Uh, Kozrao playing as the Khmer here on Bypass. We've got the Britons then. Uh, actually, hold on. The scoreboard screwed up. It says Alexios at the top. They're fixing it. It's okay, guys. At the bottom right, it said Gajimata. It's all good. We didn't screw things up, but they didn't set the scoreboard. Right now, right now, uh, they're like Alexios Komnenos. They're trying to type it out. They're mistyping it. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. We're used to fails on this stream. It's all good. Everyone just T90 find it in chat. It's all good. But yeah, we'll continue the cast here in a second. I guess for YouTube's sake, we got to act like that didn't happen, right? We got to edit this out. Let's see. Ladies and gents, welcome to the third place match here in Hidden Cup 5. 
And uh, wow, we have Kazrao opening it up, picking yellow. And Kazrao has never picked yellow so far in Hidden Cup. We were speculating on who this Kazrao character might be. So maybe this is the Viper confirmed. I know there's a lot of Viper fans out there who really don't want to believe that he is out. They want to believe that he is in the finals as Alexios Komnenos or Vasco de Gama. We'll see about that after the final and, of course, after the reveal. It should be amazing. Now, we've got Kamur here for Kazrao. We've got uh, Britons then for Gajimata here on Bypass. Really interesting matchup, actually. Um, you know, usually we see a lot of gunpowder or monk civilizations on this map. So we've seen Spanish in Hidden Cup 5. We've seen Turks in Hidden Cup 5. We've seen, like, Armenians here. But neither of these civilizations really scream heavy monks or or heavy gunpowder. Um, I guess, technically, the Khmer can get gunpowder later on, but it just doesn't feel like a natural thing to do. But both of these civilizations are very natural for the map still in their own right. Uh, the Khmer can skip steps and go up through the ages. You don't need to build required buildings, which means... They will have a much faster castle age time if that's what Kazro chooses to go for. It feels very, very flexible, very easy for the Khmer to also mix in scouts to fight for map control to maybe try and get some relics. Now, Gajamata with Britons has cheaper town centers once castle age comes in and then has archers with ridiculous range. I would say the Britons want to play maybe towards the middle here, if anything, because, you know, the outsides of the map, it's going to be really hard to contest if you are a slow civilization like the Britons. And we can take it off their fog of war for a moment just to look at the other areas of the map. We're going to have food. We're going to have gold, stone, everything on the sides of Bypass. And this, it looks like an area that you might want to go out to and, and boom in. But actually, uh, the reasoning behind this, the reason we added all that food there, guys, is because in the rare instance that we actually have someone go YOLO through the middle, I wanted the player who escapes to have resources to go to. So I uh, we did see that situation actually against Kozrao. We had King Steven castle dropping without loom against Kozrao. And then Kozrao, I believe, was Portuguese in that game, was able to escape. Yeah, stay stay humble here, folks, with your guesses. <laughs> and welcome in here. Like I said, I'm going to cast this best of five solo. We're going to move into the final. I'll have Dave with me for the final, as always. But an extra thousand dollars here on the line and a little bit more guessing opportunity. What is this? I don't know if that was intentional from Kazra. It looked like he was blocking the ostrich with a goat. Has anyone throughout Hidden Cup 5 tried to get their friends into it? Maybe their spouses? Try and explain to them the game? Has there, have there been any attempts there? I, I'm wondering how that has gone. Maybe that's something you can send me on Twitter at some point when I'm... When I'm not casting anymore, I can look through. Looks like a lot of people are saying yes. I just, there's certain things that would be very difficult to explain, I imagine. I saw some memes about uh, this type of thing on my subreddit. Not on my subreddit, sorry, on the subreddit. But it's like, you're trying to explain the complexities of Age of Empires 2, and then you show up, and the caster is talking about an ostrich getting blocked by a goat. If anything, is probably my fault. But still, I can imagine there are some instances where they like, you kind of get them interested. And then they're like, oh, I'm going to pay attention now. And then they're like, okay, this makes no sense. Like, why is that cat? Why are people doubting the castle? Why, why is that? Why is everyone spamming ones? This makes zero sense. By the way, I do have a video. It's called What is 11? Um, I made that video because I accidentally texted many, many people with Age of Empires 2 taunts, and I got tired of explaining it. Now, I've done this for 10 years now, so at this point, someone knows if I text them with a 1, it's yes, or a 2, it's no, uh, 11, it's laughing, right? They know that, but uh, I had viewers tell me, like, oh, go oh, no, what have I done? I just texted 11 to my boss, and he was really confused. Do I let him know I'm a massive nerd? You know, those types of situations. <clears throat> so that video is out there if you ever want to, you know, be like, oh, this is, this is why I said that to you. Now, a little risky here from Gajamata. You should know that the Khmer are going to be up a bit faster. And Gajamata is likely to lose the scout at this point. And Gajamata knows that the faster feudal age means the faster scout and the extra attack. There was no realistic way for Gajimata to get home. 
And there's the castle age time for Khazral. If you want a really fast castle time, play the Khmer. The real weakness of the Khmer is, what do you do with it? Um, they have strong elephants, but elephants are really expensive. Other than that, they lack Bombard Cannon like a lot of civs have. Their tech tree is definitely a bit more awkward. So as far as the player guesses go, there is a player who played Khmer before it was cool. I'm just going to say that for those that those that know. Um, just to add a little bit more teasing in there. I submitted my guesses already. I don't think this yellow is a bait. I actually think that this yellow player here, this Khosrow player, could be the Viper. I think Gajamata. I mean, Gajamata is really the biggest story of Hidden Cup 5. Uh, I voted Tato all week. But I didn't see a lot of Tato tendencies come round two and come, you know, the semifinals. In all honesty, I think maybe Gajamata is not Tato, which makes you think, where is Tato? Who was Tato? Is Tato Vasco de Gama or Lexios? Lots of things to think about here. We're going to see scouts now from Khosrow out in the fields. And Gajimata is also going to contest in some ways for map control. So this is probably just going to be like a scout game, a boom game. In some ways right now, it's going to look really good for the Khmer. Just because... Oh, wait. Hold on a second. Oh, wow. That's a siege workshop from Khosrow. Okay, so I just assumed that this was going to be a second TC. The scouts go out to get relics. And I'm pretty sure Gajimata is assuming the same. This is going to be a push. And I don't think Gajimata is expecting this. It just feels very... I don't want to say it feels very unnatural. But I mean, pros typically, if they're making scouts like that, are not using the scouts through the middle here. A lot of aggression coming here from Khosrow. He's going to go Scorpion. So, Khmer Scorpions are really strong. They have extra range. The issue with the Scorpion is it doesn't have as much utility again. Oh, God. Okay, Gajimata knows what's up now. Actually, Gajimata has a decision to make. If he tries to go back home, he will open the gate. And he would let Khosrow through. His scout sees the Scorpion. Scout's trying to kill the Scorpion. Khosrow might need to try and block here to not allow this to happen. Losing the Scorpion would be painful. He doesn't lose the Scorpion. Gajimata knows about that, which is good. And now he's going to need to protect himself here immediately. As we see Light Cab, we have a Ram. We have Villagers here from Khosrow. And the TC goes up for Gajimata. Gajimata is being very casual about this. Light Cab are about to be through. No Quick Walls for Gajimata. And Khosrow in an amazing position to deny this TC. The Quick Walls have to happen. Quick Walls do happen. But Loom isn't in. Oh no, Gajimata. This is brutal, dude. So, players just aren't expecting the pressure, right? Gajimata did queue up the loom upgrade, but the villagers are so weak without the loom. And even though the scorpions are going to go down, even though the villager might go down there for Khosrow, even though the, the ram might not take out the TC, that's still four villager kills. The villager actually is alive there for Khosrow. He could actually go inside the ram, and the TC will actually get destroyed. Yikes. Well, like we said, guys, more often than not, we're going to see the scouts go to the outside. The potential's there for the middle, but even I didn't expect it. I thought that Khosrow was going to opt for the safe economic play. And behind this, we are going to see the safe economic play now for Khosrow. It's like, you kill five villagers, just get to creating more. You deny the gold from your opponent. Villagers still inside that ram. And Gajimata, he should... I mean, the knight is much stronger than the light cap. He does have his own light cap here, but uh, it just feels like Khosrow is in full control right now. I'm still waiting. Like, I believe that Khosrow could be the best quick waller in the world. This villager is so weak, though. If he quick walls this one... Okay, well, villager just dies. It's going to say, if you quick wall a 2 HP villager that just hops out of a ram, that would be some next level stuff. Light cap picking off another villager. So that's the sixth villager killed, but the light cap attack should end here. And we are going to see TC number two now for Gajimata. But perfect start here for Khosrow in our third place match. Now, I think what this could do, though, is this is tells your opponent, like, okay, I'm ahead of you now because I killed all those Vils. And now, you know, this, this gives Gajimata an idea of what he needs to do, how he needs to address this. 
Because he can't make the third TC. He lost the stone there when that got rammed down. So the third town center isn't an option. If anything, I'm thinking Gajimata is going to have to push through the middle right now. And that's going to be something Khazra is going to have to prep for. Uh, did add a new gate. Does have a monastery as well. So should be able to, in theory, convert any knights that are there. A nice job there from Khazral. I forget if we've seen Khmer here on this map at all, but... I, I think we've seen Khmer picked for other maps. Oh my god! Okay, Khazral wanted to trap these units. And Gajamata noticed it and is like, No, dude, you're not going to flex on me like this. Uh, unfortunately, Gajamata, you need to leave. And he does leave because he sees that monk. And this is a tough feeling. Because you wanted to counterattack, but now your opponent's prepared. And if you attack that gate, you might get trapped in there. Some beautiful stuff there from Khazral. And here comes TC number three for Khazral, who, who seems to be living the dream right now. I, I guess the dream for both players was to be in the final. But if you could have like a secondary dream, this would be the secondary dream. Trapping your opponent. Nice little aggressive strategy. Strategies your opponent's not expecting. Hmm, okay, so Khmer do get redemption for their monks, but Khazral is not heavily on gold to be able to afford that. And Khazral is still making scorpions. If Gajamata starts to make Manganels here, it almost looks like Khazral won't have the gold to be able to go for redemption for the monks, won't have siege of his own, and we might not be too far removed from the gate going down. The knights and the scouts running through. We get the light cap upgrade here for Gajamata. I think Gajamata's got a good chance here. Like, yeah, Khazral, his eco is flying right now. Has collected more resources, but... The middle matters now more than ever because of the type of game this has turned into. And as we said before, like, Britons are always going to be the one to push the middle. And there's the scorpion, there's the monk, but both of these things cannot be dealt with. Uh... And, uh, sorry, both of these things can be dealt with with Manganel. And that gate's going to go down. It should go down anyways. Now, you can technically use enough Khmer Scorpions to outrange a Manganel. Which seems to be what Khazra is going to try, because he has that one extra range. But if you get hit, you lose the Scorpion. That's the problem. Okay, this is so nerdy here from Khazra. He's actually using Scorpions against the Manganel here. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, I would be so annoyed. I would be so annoyed. This is like... Th th this should not happen, man. I mean, it should if the micro is good enough, but it, it doesn't feel like we're playing under the same rules here, Khazrao and I. And he advances forward with the Scorpions, with his Light Cav, with his Monk now. Now Gashimata has to wait for another Manganel. Gashimata thinking about engaging with the Light Cav to kill the Monks. He does pull the Knights back. And the monks were going for those knights, and the light cav are going to kill that. And finally, life is fair, because Khazral's going to get punished for this. The monks go down, the scorpions are going to go down. And honestly, could have been a bit better there for Khazral. He's going to save that scorpion. But now the next Manganel's on the way. Now, he did buy himself a little bit of time. So now you're in a situation where you can... Your eco is, is stronger than it was. You maybe have more food floating with all the Khmer farms. But this needs to be stopped right here. Reminder, though, you cannot build on the... It feels weird to say sand when it's all sand, but the, the very clear sand in the middle there. Where, where the skeletons are, the uh, you know where the, where the corpses are, that's the area you cannot build on. So a castle drop there is, is kind of unrealistic. Instead, you're going to be castling kind of in your opponent's base or in your own base. Gajimata has a villager here to repair the Manganel and is hoping for big shots. Just sent a bunch of villagers on the stone, so is thinking about a castle, and it is still just scorpions here from Khazrael. Khazrael with two relics collected. Went to the outside for those. Might be getting more. Could maybe get the redemption upgrade. And has two stables now. Is starting to get upgrades for Cav. And I, it wouldn't surprise me if we see a third and a fourth stable as well. We're going to see big engagements through the middle here. Both players making light calf. Khmer get bloodlines. So the additional HP is there. Something the Britons don't have. But the siege numbers. There's three Manganels now for Gajimata. One shot on those Scorpions and the Scorpions get flattened. Like Gajimata knows, as long as the repair villagers alive, 
Scorpion shouldn't be that big of a threat. Feels very greedy from Kozrael not to make a Manganel here. And there you see, Scorpions are going down. Here comes the push. The Light Cav are through. The Scorpions are all flattened. The Monks are going down. Here comes Kozrael with his own Light Cav. Now, first, he's going to start with the Monks and try and kill those, which he will do. Then he could maybe move over to the Siege. And, oh, jeez. Well, in the end, I mean, I guess Kozrael does end up getting the better of the engagement. Has a 20 Villager lead. And gets the job done with Light Cav and Scorpions. Uh, Gajamata, he lost some expensive units there. Losing monks and siege like that. I mean, Manganels are more expensive than Scorpions, right? So he wasn't really able to recover from that one. And this is how it started. Like, Khazrao going through was never on the cards for Gajamata. Again, Loom wasn't in. I guess it. We're, we're maybe this is something that could change how players approach the final or something. Because we haven't seen a lot of attacks through the middle. I can only remember one game, the entirety of Hidden Cup 5, where that's what we were seeing. But uh, game ends. Kozrow gets the win on the board here in our third place match. And he was the one applying pressure. Very well played to him. All right. Salutes to everybody in the chat. Welcome in, everybody. Want to say thank you again for being here on the final day of Hidden Cup 5. This is the third place match. We'll have the finals later on and the reveal. But Kozrow takes the first win with Kamur. Gajimata has Bay. Gajimata has Cup available as home maps. We'll probably see that next. See some people asking. These games are live, so we might just have a few minutes till we're into the next one. And then we'll have the final later on. Uh, I'm going to do some shout outs here because usually I have a co caster with me and we're going heavy speculation, but I'm going to try and do everything myself here for just the third place match. Uh, thank you, Colby. Thank you, Hoff. Thank you, Anonymous and Team London. Okay, you guys, you're going to love this. Okay, can we first see the live viewing party production uh, of London? And then we'll go to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Let's, let's take a look at live viewing party. This, this is going to be something you guys will appreciate. So here's London. These tickets sold out in 48 hours, people. I was like, I don't know if we can get 250 people. I'm not going to be there. There's not going to be... There's not going to be any players. I don't know the situation. And within 48 hours, these tickets were sold. Everybody was ready. Everybody was excited to be here for the Hidden Cup 5 viewing party. Awesome to see. Awesome to see. There's the... Oh, we got the lights too. Sick. Love it. Great stuff, everybody. Well, some, someone's going to make you all look bad here in just a second. I'll get to the joke here in a moment. Um, but we've got... What's going on in the back there with the shirts? Did you see that trio? I don't know what was on their shirts there. We've got Fort Lauderdale, Florida as well, where we have people trickling in. It's filling up because it is still morning here, but eventually all those seats will be filled as well. And we've got signage as well. Sick stuff. Love to see it. So I got a donation from Team London. It was $10, and it said a dollar for every fan in the Florida audience. So apparently we have a UK-USA rivalry here because somebody in that crowd donated 10 bucks and was making the joke like, hey, we're all here. Where's everybody else? Well, everybody else is still filing in. We're going to have their, their mimosas, their breakfast, everything coming out. Actually, don't quote me on that. I don't think you guys have breakfast. I think you guys get lunch, but there will be mimosas and, and drinks. And don't ask me, okay? Listen, I'm, I'm casting, but thank you everyone for being there. Freaking Team London. Who is that guy? Who ostracized him, London? I love it. Okay, we, there's one guy in my Twitch chat right now in all caps that said, we are hammered. Okay, we spotted someone who's at the London audience. Well, enjoy being hammered there, Yepper, and enjoy the final day of Hidden Cup 5. All right. So Chinese, Bohemians, Bengalis, Hindustanis, and Malians for Gajimata. Uh, Gashimata always went for Bengalis on Bay throughout this whole tourney. So that's what I'm leaning towards here. I think Italians or Lithuanians would probably be the most standard picks for Khosrau. But I do also remember, I think Khosrau went to Ravidians before on the upcoming map. We apparently have a minute till we're in. Guys, uh, production is even calling this map Pants now. So you guys have well and truly done it. We have the Observer calling it pants. We have the production team that I'm paying 
calling it pants. I mean, I guess at this point, what am I going to do? Fire them? It's the final day. We need these guys. But yeah, it's going to be pants for the next one. Mapu says, to be honest, you should rename it, Tristan. I'm not renaming it. It's a bay. Guys, it's a bay. You guys don't know that you guys don't know how long I had to draw on paint to get this map concept. You don't know how many versions we have. All right. It's bay. Uh thank you, Low Elo Nobody, who was apparently is is apparently an American viewer in that crowd who is also now donating for me to make fun of <laughs> to make fun of the people in London. I'm not going to start this, guys. <laughs> as much as it would increase the prize pool, I am not going to start this back and forth, okay, uh, of UK to US. I mean, technically, it was already started, I suppose. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish it here. Oh, God, I love it, man. All right, so we've got... <laughs> We've got Bengalis for Gajamata as we expected, and Kasra goes for Dravidians. Now, guys, I forget who it was. I don't know if it if I'm gonna be able to remember this. Maybe it'll come to my mind. But there was a player who went for the Dravidians. Oh, it's coming back to me. Okay, there was a player who went Dravidians against Gajamata, and it was on this map. It was the same exact matchup. And you know who it was? It was round one. And it was Gregory the Seventh. Freaking Gregory the Seventh has been the player in this tournament that I think is going to be the big one that surprises everybody because a lot of people were like, okay, initially someone got 4 0'd. That was probably a weaker player, but then people start to remember this is random seeding and any matchup can happen. Gregory the Seventh could have been Viper, it could have been Hera, it could have been Leary, could be a big name that got 4 0'd by Gajamata. This is the same build order, okay? So it's very... Well, I, I guess at this point, all the games have been seen, so maybe Kazra is messing with us. But still, early Dravidians pick, the early dock here, the chopping of the straggler trees to get fishing ships out. Very reminiscent of what Gregory the Seventh did in the first round. I would guess that Kazra and Gregory the Seventh probably are, are close friends, maybe teammates, maybe training partners. So it does make you think a little bit. Now, I'm going to be honest on what I think about this build order. I think economically, it's not great. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, I think that it's really difficult to get the most of your economy after you get to Feudal Age. But the thinking of the strategy I can explain, and the thinking of the strategy is what you need for economy here is fishing ships. And Gajamada is going to have a dock. Gajamada is going to want fish too. And because the Bengalis get the additional villagers, I, I, it, maybe you feel like you have to win water. And that's what this build is set out to do here. Now, you can only do this with the Dravidians because the Dravidians get the population space from the dock. So that dock gave you, gave Khosrau plus five pop space. And the plan is just one fishing ship for now and then saving some wood to be able to, to get the lumber camp. And then from there, everything is going to go to wood. Everything is going to head over to gold. And the plan is going to be to make ships. But you still need the food for feudal age. You still need the wood for the buildings. Like, getting this timing right is really tricky here. So Gajamata, with the more standard timing here on the dock, and the scouts are engaging. I felt like this happened every time Gajamata played yesterday in the semifinals. Now, Viper always wins these, just saying. Let's see if Kazra wins. Oh, three HP for both. I don't even know. I, I don't even know if Kazra can go back home. It's a, it should be a coin flip here. Both units don't die, and oh, Gajamata gets the win, and now Kazra is in the dark here in Hidden Cup Five third place match. All right. Well, Kazra confirmed to not be the Viper. Gajamata confirmed to be Viper here, and ever, now everyone's even more confused. And oh God, dude, Gajamata. I love this so much. So I'm glad I'm saying this when I'm not casting with Dave because I've done this to, so many to him so many times. It tilts him off the planet. But I love nothing more than to use a scout when they can't do anything about it and attack random houses, attack random docks. Like he's just sitting there like, what are you going to do? You going to come back with a fishing ship? I would love Gajamata if he encounters any building on his scouting mission here, just give it a little, give it a little doink. 
To be honest, there's not many buildings here, though, for Khosrow, because Khosrow's going up so quickly. And of course, that is a very weak scout at this point. The villager would be able to kill that scout. So Gajamata now seeing there's a second dot coming up. And we'll see what Gajamata does. Because two docks... I mean, this build is incredibly streamlined. He's even using that second dock for the extra pop space. And Gajimata so far has collected more resources. Gajimata will get the extra two villagers. But will Gajimata keep those two fishing ships alive? That's the main thing here. And yeah, look at that economy. There's just so few villas. I also hate the house on that wood line. It feels like Khosrow kind of disrupted his own wood efficiency. Dravidians will receive plus 200 wood when they get to the next stage, though, which is another big part of this build. This is why I think only the Dravidians can do this. And those fire galleys are, are going to be out before Gajimata or around the time Gajimata queues up his first one. So this build should lead to Khosrow having two fishing ships, killing two fishing ships, which evens out the eco count. And of course, there's the potential then to dominate water fully. And then you can have six, eight, ten fishing ships and, and then compete with the Megali economy. Now, what happens to Gregory the Seventh against Gajimata? Now, this was like seven days ago, and I don't know if you guys were here for every day, but just to explain, it was the same thing, but then Gajimata came back on water. So Gajimata has faced this before. So it was uh, excellent patience from Gajimata and good timing on a demo. That ended up exploding some of Gregory the Seventh's fish. And then in that case, of course, the fishing ships weren't alive. Much longer for Ka uh, sorry for uh, Gregory the Seventh, And things were pretty problematic from there. That villager was just repairing the fishing ship, just trying to be patient and buy time. Wow, what great stubborn play here. Keeps the fishing ship alive. I mean, good luck fishing out there, but still. A demo here from Khosrow bit of a traffic jam out here and we have the demo land that should lead to a kill the fishing ship actually blocked off though so the villager could repair again gajimata being very stubborn that is a weak villager and kazrael getting exactly what he would have wanted here on bay two fishing ships alive still can't justify adding more of them but nice situation resources collected is pretty close you know what's wild to think about this? And I, I realized it coming into Hidden Cup, but I'm not sure if you guys did. So we had so many civilizations introduced to the game between Hidden Cup 4 and Hidden Cup 5. And we've seen a lot of those new civilizations utilized here in Hidden Cup 5. Oh, man, man big demo. But yeah, Bengalis and Dravidians weren't in the game three years ago. And so it was never an option here. You know, it was there were less options to go for. So this is a brand new build with Italians and Mongols. Everything we've seen from Italians and Mongols this tournament, we saw from Bay all the way back in Hidden Cup 2. Demo. Oh, man, that's a waste of a demo right there from Khosrow. You need your demo to at least connect with a ship. Nice micro there from Gajimata, who still just wants to stay alive. Like, he's waiting for a big demo himself. Oh, God, loses the villager there. Also takes some losses on the ships. But he has his own demo, and the demo connects. And, man, we, we've had quite a few big demos here for the last few moments. And now, where is Khosrow going to go? Khosrow's going to lose the ship there. Uh, all these ships are so weak, though. And Khosrow loses one. Khosrow's going to lose two. And we've kind of reset here. Now, what we don't look at is we don't look at the farming eco... We don't look at how these players are transitioning their eco behind it. We're just looking at the fights. Res Collected tells me it's quite close. Seems like the berries and the farming eco is similar there. And sometimes this is a situation where you end up seeing the market come up rather early. Because you do have quite a few villagers going to gold for these ships. We will see players just buy the food sometimes. So a little sloppy here or there on water, but the eco KD is solid for Khosrow. He killed two fishing ships and he killed a villager. Also, they've both done an excellent job with their with their TC production. Just 10 seconds of TC idle time here for Khosrow. I just... If I were to describe these players, 
and how they played in the Hidden Cup. I would say Kazral is creative. Creative and adaptive. I would say Gajamata is a freaking fighter, man. Gajamata has had so many situations where things should fall apart turn into advantages for him this tournament. It's crazy. And here's another example of it. Gajamata has not given Kazral full water control. Gajamata holds on. I think the semifinal was another good example of that from Gajamata. Gajamata was down 3-0 in the semi. Won two games straight. Could have won three games straight, taking it to a seventh game. Like, it's just so tough to break Gajamata, which is such a great trait to have. Obviously, you, you prefer to have, like, the creativity and the strategy as well. I'm not going to say that Gajamata hasn't been creative or strategic. Of course, you do have to have that element to your play. But Kazrael's on the way to Castle Age, and Kazrael doesn't have water control, which is what Kazrael would have wanted here. Remember, no scout to scout the map either. Oh, we have a gate there. We have a gate, and the scout went down. So gate went up to funnel the scout into a villager, and the, a little bonk happened there. Kazrael, beautiful plays, which immediately leads to everybody screaming Viper. <laughs> uh, I mean... Okay, chat. I agree with you guys, but also can we please all recognize that the top 16 players in the world can all place one gate? Can we can we acknowledge that for a second, okay? Now you're going to laugh when I say this, but I I could have done that one. Okay? I I actually could have done that one. I'm pretty sure. You just you just place the gate. It's it it's it. It's not quick. It's a 3 HP scout. You need one hit. Okay, don't laugh that much. Jeez, don't don't laugh that much. She settle down, people. Settle down. All right. Well, to make myself feel better, uh, Muscala, thank you for the fifteen dollar dono. Says thanks for all the great content you provide, T ninety. Glad that you make the A week community so alive. Nevertheless, not happy you were saying that this can be the last hidden cup. Hope is the V of L. Hope is the V of L. I don't know what the last part means. Listen, I, I don't know. It could be, guys. It could be. I'm treating it as such. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying it could be. All right? And I've enjoyed so much of this one. I've had so much fun. Looking forward to this being an amazing day. I have no clue what the end of that message was, but thank you. Someone just donated, said, on the plane to the USA meetup now. You are on the plane now? Okay. All right, somebody's going to be a little late, people, at the USA meetup. Donating from the plane. I don't know if that's a troll or what, but look at Kozrao back on water. That's pretty epic anyways. And Kozrao says, how dare you doubt me? Kozrao says, this is my water. This is my area to fish boom. Drops TC number two, TC number three. Knowing Gajamata, Gajamata's going to hold on here. Tries to with a couple demos. But pretty close game here, guys. Really close. I mean, the, the resources should be set up quite nicely for Gajamata to be able to do some pretty nice things as well here. I am noticing, though, that Gajamata doesn't have a stone right now. And so Gajamata chose to sell that stone to go up to the next stage, may buy it back, but cannot afford a TC right now. And Kazrao is already on three. Gajamata will get the upgrades, though. There's a lot of weak ships there for Kazrael. One demo here could be disgusting. There's there's nowhere to run, right? You don't have a lot of areas to really flee. And here comes Gajamata. We've got the demos coming in as well from Kazrael. We're going to see big booms on either side. And this is all so the opponents can't fish. And there's probably less than 1,000 food available at this point. Pretty close. I, I can't really call this one. Great micro from both to avoid big demo shots. They've kept their ships spread out this whole time. Not easy to do. It's very easy to take the lazy approach and just patrol in and hope for the best. But these guys microed every last unit. And Kazra holds on. Okay, so... Gajramata has scouts on the field and has gone for a forward monastery. Now that monastery position can actually be nice to convert some navy potentially. And the scouts could pick off some villagers here. I think at this point... They both committed so much to water, they don't want to give up on it, but I do question whether or not it's really worth it. Kozral, no loom, loses a villager. 
and realizes, oh shoot, I don't have Loom, and it's going to queue up Loom right now. And so the scouts pay off now for Gajimata. Gajimata didn't have Loom in the first game and wasn't expecting scouts and got punished for it. And here we go. Will we see a quick wall? We will not see a quick wall there from Kozrov. Messy wood line, messy situation. Of course, there's the water to worry about as well. Gajimata being very patient. Gajimata still defending on water here. Villagers have gone down to the light cap. There's going to be monks. There's going to be siege. This has been incredibly greedy play from Kozrov. Does bring over a spearman though. It is one TC for Gajimata, but the vill count is 50 against 55. That's due to the excellent job from Gashimata to keep that one TC producing. And then also the Bengali bonus, right? Four of those villagers were just from going up to the next stage. Feels like Gashimata could kill some of Khosrow's fishing ships. Also, Khosrow doesn't know the siege push is about to begin. Has no intel on that. Really tricky area to defend right now. I would prefer Gashimata's position, but if all Khosrow needs is one defensive moment, and then suddenly the position starts to look stronger. And you need recognition there's going to be monks, and you need light cap. Okay, I changed my mind. I like Khosrow's position a lot here. Spears to defend. A couple light cap out there for the monks. This is tricky against Bengali monks, though. Yo, Heisenhof, nice to see you, man. I did see, uh, did see you in chat before everything started. Nice to have you back. Villager goes down. So now Khosrow is basically out of wood in his main base, and then he's going to get surprised with a big siege push on his face. The siege push is already there. There's the light cap. There's the monk. There's the siege. Can't take his stone anymore. Losing his fish. Things are falling apart. Gajamata. Still one TC, but you can tell that with how he's focusing, right? He's able to focus so heavily on things here because he doesn't have the distractions. Here comes the, the scouts, though. Soon to be like have here from Kozrael. Kozrael ends up getting the kill. Did also take some big shots, though. He's going to split away. I don't know where that monk is going for Gajimata. Uh, he's trying to convert a spearman. Monk goes down to the TC fire. That's not something I expected to say today. And now three mangonels here for Gajimata. He does not have spears here, though. If he had some spears here to protect this bush, this could be really nice. It feels like Khosrow could still defend this. It's going to come down to how good the attack grounds are. Also, of course, there could still be conversions from Gajimata. Right now, Khosrow can't take stone. It's going to drop TC number four as we see a loop around from Khosrow. Kind of tricky for him to surprise Gajimata right now because of how Gajimata built these buildings. He can see that coming. Now, losing the villagers wouldn't be ideal. But he's tracked that the whole way through. And Gajimata all over Khosrow at the moment. He's ready. He sees the spears. He'll convert them. He backs away. He can go right back to the TC. This production from Gajimata is insane right now. And Khosrow kind of falling apart. Again, look at the vill count, guys. It is one town center play from Gajimata. He's had one minute of TC idle time this entire time. It's over 11 minutes for Khosrow, which can happen when you have so many TCs so early. It's really hard to have the foodie go to produce consistently, but that is an extremely high idle TC count. I think Khosrow was expecting to find moments where he could take good engagements, and his opponent is always waiting for him. Here we have it again. The pathing has been really awkward here for Khosrow. He's receiving a lot of hits from the opponent's light cav. He'll go in and he'll kill the monks. Still can't see the siege. He does have a light cap counter attack actually happening at Gajamata's base at the moment, though. So we've got the siege there. This could be lead to a big distraction. The light cap have made it through. It doesn't seem like they've done too much, though. And then, oh! Oh, wow, that split from Gajamata was ridiculous. He actually noticed that and had to split away from it, but it still doesn't mean he's out of the woods yet. Tries another attack rounds. Siege is kind of weak right now. Here come more light cav. Khosrow kills that one. There was four before. There's going to be zero now. Light cav moves in for the monk. Khosrow's holding. Khosrow still is the villager count. Khosrow still, you know, pretty good eco setup. Does have some exposed areas, but could stabilize, maybe get into pikemen. 
and defend from this, but I'm, I'm also seeing some sloppiness here from Cosrel. Villagers headed back out to the attack. There he defends. Here are the villagers I was talking about. Okay, so let's talk Ideal Age of Empires 2, okay? Ideal Age of Empires 2, obviously, win. Haha, <laughs> I mean, duh. But, I mean, beyond that, right? How do you get, how do you accomplish that goal? I would say that the ideal, and some players don't agree with this, but you want to have a solid army investment, and then you add the TCs afterwards. Now, many times you see that, and players who are good defensive players will kill your army investment, and then their eco wins games. So that's kind of the, the tricky thing. But I would say that the way Gashimata has played this has been ideal. You go army control, and then you expand the eco afterwards. Kazra has said... I'm going full eco, and then I'm I'm gonna have eventually have the resources to stop you. But I would say in some ways he has been punished, and this honestly feels like this game could go on for a long time. If Kazra doesn't find a way to clear this up, if he loses more of his TCs, this could be brutal for him. He's trying to find the monks though. Does end up finding a couple kills there. These are Bengali monks though, they're very strong. The siege is still pushing his TCs down. And it's going to be Pikeman for Khosrow. Sneaks in with his own siege. Gajamata doesn't see it. And this is the defensive side. The defensive side of it is, okay, come at me. But I have the eco lead, and I can do just that. Two Manganels go down. And Gajamata doesn't want Khosrow to have a chance to, to do that again. And so the Manganel gets sniped immediately. There's also another Manganel, and then Gajamata and... Khosrow are both microing, but Khosrow again with beautiful micro, and now he's going to swoop in with his light calf. He's going to try and kill more monks. I feel like we've seen this three times over already. He's going to kill one, two, three, four, five monks. Also defended from the light calf the whole time. And Khosrow's on pikemen now. I mean, you know, the pikes in combination with the light calf feels very strong. Monks shouldn't be able to have too much freedom moving around with the light calf. And then the light calf from Gajimata shouldn't have too much freedom if there's pikemen around. Another monk goes down. Wow. Again, it's like when you can... Khosrow has played greedy here in some ways. But when you can get away with this, why not do it, right? Very impressive stuff from him. And I just love the pros and cons of it. It's what makes the game so interesting to me, right? We have seen the positive for Gajamata be map control. The negative, of course, would be in some ways he hasn't had the eco. I still think with he's he's been able to maintain a decent eco count. Remember, this is Gajamata we're talking about, and Gajamata isn't gonna have one bad fight and just give up on the push. He's gonna continue. And I think if he can get redemption to convert his opponent's siege. As well as maybe just like keeping his monk mass next to his own siege at this point, not even moving around with the light cav, it could be really nice for him. Interesting move for Kazro in the north. He seems to be looking around with a couple extra units to see if he can find any kills. He's running around. He hasn't found anything there yet. I just see the movement on the mini map. Redemption's on the way for Gajamata. Guys, what a game! 93 villagers against 89. There's a couple fishing ships for Gajamata, but that shouldn't really mean too much at this point. Gajamata is known for his forward castles on this map. So we, we could definitely see that happen if he takes good fights here, but that's a lot of pikes. He's actually not fully walled there. Kazra doesn't know it. There is actually a hole. We'll see if that anything happens there. But now that Redemption is in, the monks try and convert the Manganel, and the Manganel gets deleted. Oh, God, this is so intense because Khosrow wants a castle. He wants a big fight and a castle to protect this eco. But look at this push again. Actually, very interesting. Either Khosrow is doing a loop around to try and hit this from the other side, or he's going for a counterattack with Lightcap. It feels like a loop around to me. He is kind of showing his hand attacking the houses. Gosh, Yamada's got a whole city here. <laughs> It's actually really hard to go through those choke points of the houses, too, without getting rocked by the Manganels. And there's the castle! People have been saying this is Viper! But we might find out it's somebody else here in a second. The Lycav are still roaming around. 
He's building this with a lot of villagers. The siege sees the villagers. They're going to go in for the villagers here. Will this castle go up? It feels like the castle could easily be denied. That's a lot of siege. That is a lot of siege. But hold on. Khosrow is going to swoop in. He'll kill the mangonels. He does lose all of his light calf. But maybe it's worth it. Uh, we have people saying doubt confirmed here. But uh, may may maybe it's confirmed to be like a half doubt. I, I don't know how that works at this point. That's a lot of light cap you need to defend from. Khosrow's on the way to Imp. He only has eight pikemen. It's a beautiful hold, honestly. It's an amazing game, but he needs more pikes right now. And Gajamata is just going to continue to go crazy here. The light calves have bloodlines. They have armor. They have attack. This will, this will be good enough to run underneath TCs at this point. The TCs don't have fletching. It's not necessarily good enough to fight against large groups of pikes, though. And Gajamata disrupting most of this farming eco. So, I mean, it's an interesting game because Khosra will be an imp faster, which obviously brings you huge benefit. But it's not like he's going to be able to push his opponent because Gajamata has that large buildup in front of his base. That's a Gajamata castle if I've ever seen one. I don't think he thinks Khosra is on the way to the Imperial Age right now. Oh my god, Gajamata's going to push from this angle now. Okay, type a one in my chat, guys, on YouTube and Twitch, if you would be completely dead against Gajamata at this point. Uh, this is me verbally typing one. Like, this... Okay, well, obviously you would be. Okay, you obviously would be, because, you know, these guys are the top 16 in the world. It doesn't matter. But I'm saying, like, if you were... If we were all somehow even skill level to these guys, because this is insane. Like, this amount of pressure that Gajamata is piling on is insane to me. We've got Lightcap here to deny another castle... Could deny that one as Gajamata continues to build the zone. Gajamata does not know his opponent's on the way to Imp. The starting TC for Khosrow is getting Mangonel down right now. So he has to defend this. He also has to defend his TC. There is Siege on the way from Gajamata. If the Siege gets here in time, this castle could be denied. So it's another half-doubt castle, but the castle will go up. What a game. Now Gajamata, his castle might not complete. That completes... Khosrow's an imp able to make trebs, but Khosrow is, like, definitely very much stuck in a corner right now. Just five pikemen. <laughs> Gosh, Amada even converted his barracks. Like, <laughs> this is crazy. So, 145 population for Gosh, Amada and Castle Age against 102 population from Khosrow and the Imperial Age. We have zero on gold for Khosrow. We have 12 on food. We have 44 on wood. He's in full stabilized mode. But he has two castles. He has trebs to be able to take out the castle from, from Gajamata. Not to mention maybe like the forward houses. And I still feel like, especially with Dravidians having the cheaper barracks upgrades, I still feel like maybe Khosrow could get to help. He could, he could treb all this down. He could stabilize and he could be okay. Now, I love the amount of vision that Gajamata has and how he's thinking about map control. But man, what a what a fun series. What a unique series as well. Game number one, Scorpions and Lycav? Just not something you would expect. Now, if this were... If Gajamata is MBL, we are going to have big problems here because uh, MBL is known for getting housed. A lot of people seem to think that Gajamata... It's not MBL because everyone seems to believe that Otter the greatest MBL, but still, it's like if you built that many forward houses and then your opponent has trebs, you could have big population problems. Remember, this is the player that did just lose a forward castle as well. So, uh, crazy. Um, here comes the Lycav. Here comes the siege from Gajimata, maybe towards the north? I see movement around. I mean, he's fixing his eco. Lycav are still here right now? Kills are still happening? And, oh, God, he's got Siege here trying to defend his monks. I mean, actually, the monks will beat the pikemen. These are Bengali monks. They're not going to get poked to death. The best unit for the Bengalis would be Elephant Archer. Now, that is such a risky castle. Oh, my God. Uh, castle? Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Oh, no. Does he see it? Does he see it? Does he see it? Does he see the villager? He sees the villager! 
This is like the third time for Kozral. It's an almost doubt castle. And uh, castle's going to go up. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he does it. That castle actually goes up as well. That is an important castle for Kozral. A risky castle for Kozral. And remember when he had 12 on food? He's up to 45 on food. He's still got pikes on the field to help with light cap. His eco is not looking too bad. There's a TC that could be denied. Now, I mean, clearly he's struggling for army control. Gajimata's just all over him at the moment. And your opponent has built, built so many buildings in your base. They're going to have vision on your eco as well. And it just makes it a lot easier for them to make decisions. You see text flying in, but you see this vision right now for Gajimata. Like, he just knows every move that Kozrael is going to make. He's definitely going to be expecting the Halb upgrade. So I think going Elephant Archer is the ideal world here. If you can't go Elephant Archer, maybe we could see something like Ratha. It's kind of a weird play, but sometimes players will opt, as we see a castle from Gajimata there in the north. Some players will actually opt to go for their own Halbs to kind of match the opponent. I don't think that is a good real a good choice at this point against the Dravidians. Dravidians are never really going to be going for units that are countered by Halbs. So that would feel like a waste. This is nice from Kazra. I mean, to find counter damage when you have lost 50 villagers, when you have been stuck in your base for so long, is so impressive. But he still cannot move out all that easily. He is just currently trebbing down these houses. Look away for a moment now if you're Gajimata and all your light cab are going to go down. Look away for a moment if you're Kozrao and all your halves are going to be Bengali halves because that's a lot of monks out there. But there's now a lot of halves for Kozrao. He's got 40 of them. And I only see two elephant archers in queue. Two elephant archers on the field. What a game. Kozrao refuses to be broken. Beautiful stuff from Kozrao. Well, hopefully for him, slowly kill some of these monks. I can't even tell. Bengali monks are stupid, man. Like they're, they're... I don't think he's going to lose a single one, actually. They're healing each other. He then has his own units in there fighting. All the monks are going to survive and still hold that position. Still 200 population for Khosrow. He continues to get some counter damage in. He's killed about 10 villagers with these light cav. Still finding some spots. Still waiting to see if the Elephant Archer mass will get there. And kozrao has got 70 on food. Has used this time to get 70 on food. Also, it looks like converted a villager there and is attacking Vils. <coughs> this is crazy. Also, very impressed that Gajimata didn't get housed. I, I would have I would have lost those houses and I would have been pop capped massively. I I'm, I'm sure he can realize, though, and he's making more. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he's not a 200 pop anymore, guys. I'm not kidding when I say these things. I'm not just saying it, okay? He now has 190 pop space. The castle setup for Kozrao seems perfect. Kozrao has two relics, too. Which is kind of tricky to get in these situations. I mean, how are you supposed to raid Kozrao now when he has this castle setup? It's, it is the perfect castle stack in defense. But there is always a point with the Bengalis where you cannot kill their Elephant Archer mass. If the upgrades come in, these Elephant Archers are going to dominate unless the Dravidian player mixes in some skirms. So they actually do have Light Cap being made by Khosrow. I wonder if Khosrow notices the castle on the on the belt of the pants here. There you go. I said it for you guys again. Because I think if he notices that... Both players seem to be building up towards a treb war there. Yeah, there's trebs from Gajimata. Gajimata wanted to surprise Khosrow. But Khosrow knows about this. And now Khosrow is going to go for this castle. Wow, that's huge. That's actually incredible. Because now he can't be raided at home, at least easily. If he takes the hill here, Gajimata will have limited gold. And Gajimata was just never expecting... Khosrow to know about this. A beautiful play from Khosrow. Techs are flying in. Castle gets trebs down. Trebs here will go for the other trebs. There are the elephant archers, though. Here's the light cap behind going for those monks. The monks are finally going to die. The halves still do bonus damage against the elephant archers. And Gajimata is pop capped. 
but he won't be much longer because he's losing all of his units right now to this attack from Kozrao. What a amazing game from Kozrao. The Elephant Archers have to back away. Gold could become a real issue now. And, and in this moment, guys, I guarantee it, we are going to see Kozrao find the next area to raid. It's the perfect moment, right? Your opponent is on the back foot. Your opponent built forward castles. There's not a single castle in the eco. This is now the opportunity. I say as he's not making light cav. <clears throat> um, this would be a good opportunity for him to be able to send some light cav into some different directions, move out, maybe be able to find some villager kills, or go for your own elite elephant archer. He's actually going for elite elephant archer himself right now. Okay. What is the what is the silver crown for Dravidians? There's Woot Steel, which is the which is the orange crown. What is that again? Oh, the, I think the elephants regenerate with that. I, I think the elephants regen. I, I, I believe their elephant archer should be very strong as well with that. Um, so the elephants are going to heal, whereas on Gajamata's side, the elephants are going to attack slightly faster. I don't know what you would prefer. I personally would prefer the extra attack, but I think I'd also prefer to have the relics. I'd also prefer to have the halbs in front. I'd prefer to have five defensive castles with an excellent eco setup. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, who's going to be able to produce more elephants? It's going to be Khosrau. And we are seeing Woot Steel now as well as attack. Now that means the infantry ignores armor from the opponent, which could be pretty helpful. Um, I, it's not the most useful situation you could find in the game. But it is still something that is helpful. Especially when the light cap have armor, for example. Who knows what else we're going to see here from Gajamata. But it feels like it's just going to be an elephant war. An elephant war it is. But if the halb's getting close, they're still chewing up those elephants. Wow, it's elephant time. Let's Let's go. Look at this. Gone is the is the mobility. It's all about the chonk right now. Let's go. People people traveled a very long distance today to be at live viewing parties to watch an elephant duel. This is your life, people. Are you proud? I hope you are. I'm proud of you. I'm the one talking about it. So if you think it's weird, I'm the guy who's bringing you the chonk. Uh, the trebs are going for the elephants. I mean, what better use of these trebs right now but to go for the elephants? And it feels like with the attack speed, it feels like with maybe the hill, that things are looking better for Khosrau at the moment. Populations are still incredibly high for both of them. It is not a pure elephant war as occasionally we'll see light cap mixed in. This is the... <laughs> this is the immovable object against the unstoppable force. We will be here uh, for three hours, but to hype up the slowest moving fight you will see today, it does feel like Khosrau is actually winning. And now Gajamata is going to run away. And if you leave this area, you're leaving a whole lot of gold. I also like the idea from Khosrau. It feels like he wants to mix in some skirms here. But I mean, if you have the food and the gold, why go for skirms when you can make a unit that's 300 HP like this? Florida man with mimosas. Thank you for the donation. You have broken the donation box that we've used for Hidden Cup 5. Uh, that must be someone at the USA live viewing party who is enjoying the mimosas. Shout out to you, though. Thank you, Ma Mezzo, who clearly is not drunk on mimosas for the donation as well. Uh, Elephant Wars continue. I mean, it, it really doesn't feel like a ton of progress is being made here, but I got to lean towards Khosrau because, again, Khosrau has the relics. Khosrau has the additional gold accessible. And Khosrau has the trebs there, too. This is... <laughs> I've run out of things to say about this, guys. I only have so many different ways to say the same thing. Oh, great elephant micro. Oh, Gajamata. Oh, look at him. Look at him move. Look at him go. Look at him try and advance up the hill. You really do need to get to the top of the hill here, though. I mean, being on the hill is such a big advantage. Maybe he doesn't feel like he can do it. We've got a castle again from Khosrau next to all this. I think Khosrau's going to win this game. Khosrau's going to win this game with elephants against the 
well, on paper, maybe the better elephant archer civilization. I don't know what you guys think. And I'm going to throw in a curveball to your predictions. Tato told me in person that Dravidian elephant archers are extremely underrated and that more people should be doing it. And this was like a year and a half ago. I, I do remember an instance where Tato did it on migration, actually. I think in a game against Leary in Titans League. That was maybe a year ago, but maybe a Tato confirmed moment here for Kozral. 47 elephants slowly regenerating. And then Gajamata's got 30 elephants with no access to gold. And Gajamata can't raid the opponent because the opponent has castles everywhere. I mean, the, you could still try, but it feels like it's going to be extremely difficult to get any raids done. And no access to stone or gold there. Getting picked off by Light Cav. Gajamata building a defensive castle just in case raids come in. But Gajamata might be grounds down here. Might need to accept that this game is not winnable. Gajamata has been a fighter this entire tournament. And is going to continue to fight here. And we see, wow, we see Siege Elephants now being upgraded for uh, Kozrel. And that, that should be really nice. Like, I actually haven't seen this situation that many times. But if it was Siege Ram, for example, Siege Rams are really strong. I guess the difference with the with the Siege Elephant is you you can actually benefit from some Blacksmith upgrades too. So that's why we see those upgrades for Kozrel. It's like $1,000 on the line here. And... Gajamata, I think whoever this player is will already have surprised many. I think the reveal is going to blow our minds later on today. All right, people, people, come on. What are we doing here? What? Kosra, why are we choosing this tiny little choke point to try and move 50 elephants and four traps? Don't you know how this game works? It is it's really difficult. Kosra, not really pushing at the moment because the pathing's awkward. Gajamata get it, finding some raids. Gajamata trying to take this fight. There's the Siege Elephant. I I don't feel like the Elephant Archers look sad, but the Siege Elephants look very depressed to be there. And it, it actually, it makes me feel bad. I didn't feel bad before, but now when I look at the Siege Elephants, like, this Elephant didn't want to be there. What, what did this Elephant, what was he put through to just slowly waddle forward like that? Anyways, he gets the job done. That one gets to live. Well played, Kozrael. Kozrael up 2-0 here. And that was a crazy, crazy game. One of the best games in Hidden Cup 5 so far. I mean, the aggression from Gajamata, the defense from Kozrael, Kozrael's ability to stabilize. But then, like, Kozrael's castles, I think there were three castles that, if things went slightly differently, never go up. But instead, the castles went up. And because these castles went up, they were in the perfect position. I mean, this felt like the moment of the game right here. This castle gets denied, it's game over. And Kazra had enough light cav, he swooped in, he killed many of the monks, he, he killed off most of the siege. And then clicked up to the Imperial Age after this. Like, how do you go, why, how do you have the eco balance to go to the Imperial Age after that? I will never understand that. Crazy. So Kazra up 2-0 here in our third place match. Welcome in everybody. I want to go to the bracket now and explain to you guys how the day goes. We have third place match, best of five, leading into a big grand final. The viewer, uh, sorry, the viewer identities. I guess technically they are hidden. The, the player identities are hidden here. And the grand final is going to be against Vasco. It's going to be Vasco de Gama against Alexios Komnenos here. So we'll see how Vasco and Alexios do later on today. Right now, Kaz are up 2-0. We also do have our live viewing parties. Uh, in the UK, as well as in Florida, which we'll show you here in a second. There is our chat briefly over top of our UK viewing party, which again, to repeat this, they, this thing sold out in two days. These people got their tickets so quickly. Hope everyone's having a great time there. It's great to see people grabbing their drinks. And there is, wow, we've got a lot of signage here in the U.S. What's happening here? People in line to get their food and drinks. And I believe I saw a, a sign that said this map is pants. Okay, security, get rid of that guy, please. I definitely saw a sign that said this map is pants. 
thank you to that guy. I'll get to meet him later and thank him for that sign. Maybe I'll sign it, actually. Who knows? But uh, it's great to see you guys. It's great to see. Thank you, everybody. Again, 50% of all donations goes towards the prize pool right now. Prize pool continues to climb because of all the donations that have come in today. We are very close now to the players who lose in the first round getting $3,000, which is incredible. Obviously, the further you go in the tournament, the more money you make. Winner later on today is going to receive over $11,000. Second place will get just below $8,000. That is a lot of money to play a game that was created in 1997. So thank you, everybody, so much. <laughs> Most of the donations the stream is receiving right now are from half-drunk people at the USA and UK meetup. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Someone said, just a reminder that USA already beat the UK 248 years ago while UK was in early imperial age. <laughs> Guys, this is about bringing people together. This is about bringing people together. This isn't about, you know, our differences. This is about our similarities. Love each other. Jeez, this is all because of that guy who made fun of the fact that there weren't that many people at the USA one yet because we had just opened up. It's all because of London guy, whoever it was. Anyways, I'm having fun. It's all love, guys. It's all love. If there's one thing I know about people from the UK and people from the US is they don't mind making fun of each other. So um, it's all good fun. We've got Koreans here for Kazra, game number three. We've got Bohemians now for Gajamata. This is on Cup. And I'm going to steal Stats Guy's job here. Uh, quite frankly, he's done a horrible job. All of his stats have, have either made fun of me or been around about things other than Age of Empires this tournament. But uh, I'm pretty sure Koreans are 4-0 or 5-0 on Cup. I think the civilization has not been beaten yet. So odds are very good right now for Kazra to maybe get the 3-0 here in our third place match. I don't hate the Bohemians. I do think the Bohemians can be great in the late game against the Koreans. Um, the, the thing about this map, though, is how do you want to play water? And I'm not sure how the Bohemians would do that. I think they have a relatively generic tech tree when it comes to the water. I, I could be wrong, though. Like, maybe it's one of those things where they're sneaky good on water. I, I don't know why I'm focusing so much on their water tech tree when usually you don't really see a ton of water anyways. It's just occasional fire ships and demos. The Koreans, though, do have the turtle ship. And it's unfortunate I don't have Dave here to ask how many turtle ships are going to be seen in this game. Dave, are you watching? Could you chat, possibly? Because he had a really good streak where he was guessing the amount of turtle ships that would happen in a game. Dave said seven. Okay. Bro, if we, we're not seeing seven turtle ships here. Dave gets a race if we see seven turtle ships. Seven? All right, that's a pretty epic call out. No hesitation either. I'd like to, I really respect that. A lot of people would think on it, but he immediately said seven. Good to know. So the way this map works is you've got the two separate areas of water and the two separate areas of water are very important. Right now, the players are just scouting their own base, but we're going to see Gajamata go for a dock, most likely on the one area of water. Kazra is going to see that house villager. That should tell him that that's where the dock will go. And then there's the other area of water and that area is more expansive, but it's not between the player bases. So we have seen people prioritize the docks between the bases because it is very helpful in controlling that area. And in some ways, it's actually less likely your opponent's going to be there because we've seen a lot of other people dock the other side. So but if you do dock one side, you cannot send your ships over to the next. You would have to make another dock. And right now, it seems like they're docking the same area. So this is important for people to scout those areas right now. And Kazra is scouting really early. Now, Korean towers have been very strong in Castle Age. Koreans in general, Castle Age and beyond, have dominated this map. But I feel like Bohemians could definitely get some... They, they, they utilize some bonuses a bit earlier than the Koreans. The free mining upgrades coming in, that starts in Feudal Age. And that can help out. Also, what I would love to see is a wagon war. I want to see the war wagon against the Hussite wagon here. Scout's a little weak for Kazrao as he just goes full circle to see what his opponent is doing. 
and he will probably head over to his own dock now where it looks like Gajimata is being annoying. There's the fishing ship, and there's the scout being annoying, which Gajimata did in the previous game as well. I respect this so much. I am nothing if not annoying. Loom is on the way for Kozral, as we will definitely see Feudal Age. And I definitely didn't know that stats guy. That's true. This is, listen, I'm sorry. I didn't know that you had audio on. I thought you just threw up the stats. I didn't know you listened to what I said. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, stats guy, by the way, is Robo, who is the admin of the, uh, one of two admins for this tournament. He and JBR have done a phenomenal job with helping make everything go smoothly here. Um, I... I, I don't know how much input JBR is giving into the stats. Uh, I've always considered JBR to be a little bit nicer than Robo, though. Let's just say that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, but but honestly, salutes to salutes to them. And oh, JBR is doing all the stats. Oh crap! Well, I should have known. He's from the UK. With all these donations we've got from the UK people at the meetup, making fun of Americans. No wonder. Yeah, it makes sense now. Um. <clears throat> But no, on a serious note here, uh, many years ago now, it would have been, what was it, Robo? Like 2016? 2015? Anyways, uh, you know, I, I briefly just mentioned kind of the idea, like, what if player identities were hidden? Like, could would people stop mind gaming themselves against Viper? Would people actually play better against Viper? I talked to Dave a little bit about it, but then I had a deep discussion with Robo about it a long time ago and eventually hidden cup one happened and here we are hidden cup five the tournament has changed a lot since then the community's changed a lot we didn't think we'd have this many people here watching <laughs> come hidden cup five i could promise you that so it's cool that we you know it's still the same crew pretty much a lot has changed but a lot has stayed the same and we appreciate you guys for appreciating that and watching kazra seems to be going fast castle based on what I'm seeing here. This Khosrael could have rushed to the Feudal Age, chose to create a few more villagers. Seems to be expecting to lose these three fishing ships. And then also is going to lose those fishing ships if his opponent scouts it. Fast Castle into what with Koreans? Turtle ships is an option. I'm not seeing the resources look that great for Khosrael. Ooh, I actually really like the Spearman edition with the fire ship here as well from Gajimata. The Spearman will help out. It's going to be archers too from Gajimata. I, I'm going to be honest with you guys. This isn't looking that great for Kazro at the moment. Like he's going to lose his fishing ships. He's going to have archers coming over to his base. He isn't walled at this point. Maybe something went wrong with his build order. Ooh, that would be a huge find for Gajimata if Gajimata sees it, and he does. Okay, so Gajimata knowing about that means he can use Spearman, actually, and his scout to disrupt that if he wishes to. He could also choose to dock that side, but if you can kill the fish with your scout, you're going to do so. Now, eventually, there's going to be a fire galley there for Kozral, but fishing ship down. Amazing start for Gajimata, and then there is a dock from Gajimata. So, res collected should be getting higher and higher for Gajimata over time. Nice build from him. And again, archers are going to be out. Kazra did just scout the range. Uh, thank you, Poop Octopus, for donating about turtles. We really appreciate that. Uh, another one of those moments where I wonder if my parents are proud <clears throat> of me here on the final day of my favorite tournament. They show up, they tell their friends, yeah, my son talks about video games. Then the first thing I'm, I'm doing is thanking someone named Poop Turtle. Down goes the fire galley. Here come the archers. I'm still wondering how on earth Kozra going to defend from this. I don't have many answers because this looks pretty brutal. He's going to have to quick wall. He's going to have to trap and the archers say just pass. The archers are going to have fletching in five seconds. And with that upgrade, villagers could start to go down. Gajimata was down 3-0 in his semifinal yesterday, brought it back to 3-2, and almost won game number six. He's a fighter, man. He doesn't care if he loses a game or two. He's here to play. And look at the micro. Look at the control. Kozrao, again, really struggling this game. Doesn't have anything on water. 
Doesn't seem to have a lot going for him on land either at the moment. Definitely feels like something was off here. It felt intentional to me that he was going up later, but something with his build was off. Uh, we, we we're not going to review it. I almost feel like there's a slight chance maybe there was an issue with the boar or something that we had missed. They're just assuming that certain things are going to go well for them. Transitioning into farms now, pushed so fully off of gold. Is making skirms, which can push this back. And we'll have the upgrades now. So it does feel like Khosrow could potentially stabilize. But this is all Gajamata wanted. A little bit of damage. Then head to Castle Age. And in Castle Age, Gajamata can continue to gain a bit of a lead here. Yeah. 5 0 Eco KD. And with 5 0 Eco KD, I, I would love to see Gajamata continue to build up archers. And <laughs> thank you, Step Octopus. <laughs> and uh, and maybe add e either more water control here, potentially some siege, or if you really wanted to go crazy, you could go on the stone and you could go for a castle drop if you're Gajamata. It's very rare against a player like Khosrow that you're going to have an opportunity here to be in Castle Age so much faster and to be able to push the opponent. It does look like there's some sheep there that maybe Gajamata had found earlier. But Khosrow scouted his opponent really early. So maybe he scouted his opponent trying to steal some sheep. Didn't find his own sheep. Against any other Civ, you might be terrified running out into the middle right now with your archers because of the potential of demos. But Koreans cannot make demos. Bohemians can, though. And Gajamad is making one right now because he saw the skirms there. A perfect game for Gajamad, people. The perfect game. 6-1 Eco KD, a couple sheep have been stolen, kind of a non-issue at this point. On the way to Castle Age, didn't really have to use the market that much. Didn't have to adjust. Uh, didn't have to be extreme. And Khosrow might need to be extreme here. Maybe think about a couple defensive towers. I think with a couple defensive towers, this could be good. We see villagers on stone from Gajamata though, people. Wow, okay, thank you. Thank you, Turtle. People are having conversation via donos. I'd like to say thank you again, everyone who's contributed, joking or not. 50% of all donations go to the prize pool. So thank you. Everyone who's come in, the grand final is after this, and then we have the big reveal. Final day of Hidden Cup 5. Gajimata's going to find his sheep there. Dave predicted seven turtles. Hmm. I don't know. I, okay, I think this castle is going to go on the, on the front, right? Good map control here for Gajimata. Nice demo there. Nice defense. Ends up should be able to end up killing that fire galley here in a moment. A defensive castle is definitely what most players would do. But this is Gajimata we're talking about. This is Gajimata. Well, no stable yet, so maybe doesn't feel comfortable advancing out when there's skirmishers out there. You don't want the castle to be denied. Now Khosrow is pulling a couple villagers, almost like Khosrow wants to drop some towers here. One of the players in this tournament is named Ganji. And I haven't heard Ganji's name that frequently when uh, people are guessing who Gajamata is. But it would be pretty epic. I mean, it'd be an epic run if a qualifier player like Ganji made it to the third place match. But it'd also be epic to be like Ganji Mata, you know? <laughs> I didn't think about that till now. There was someone in my chat who said that. That's pretty fun. Tower there from Khosrow. And I imagine there's going to be more. And we see the defensive castle here from Khosrow. We see the second TC. And yeah, this is just a safe way of playing it. Archers aren't being upgraded, which is interesting. I, I think those archers could be worth at least upgrading Bodkin Arrow. But oh my goodness. Split with a $1,000 dono. This can't be donating from a plane, but live here at the USA Watch Party. Don't forget to tip your bartender. Well, I don't know if that's you trying to tip me. Uh, when I'm there at the USA Watch Party later, just to be clear, I'm not going to be bartending. But Split, thank you so much for that. Salutes in chat, man. 
things are going crazy here as we build up towards our final. Um, the archers are getting picked off. We will have some Hussite wagons, though, coming out of the castle from Gajamata. And Khazrao has made it to the next stage. Khazrao's made a couple towers there in that region. Drops TC number two, three, and four, actually. And we haven't seen a turtle ship yet, but there's our first sight of a Hussite wagon. I hope you guys enjoyed the history segments during Hidden Cup 5. Um, I was a little torn on that. I wasn't sure how appreciative people would be with anything you do in life. There's always people who aren't a fan, right? But it felt like the majority of people really enjoyed it. And learning about Jan Zizka and the, the actual use of the Hussite wagon was really exciting for me. I, of course, had a preview on most of the videos as I did have to give a lot of insights into like Age of Empires 2 and, and looked through the scripts and whatnot. But it was a lot of fun, and also Riley, who who did those videos, is uh, he's watching my videos more now than ever, and he is a big fan of Phosphoru, who who went for the wagon strategy and you putting. He really liked those videos, so he enjoyed making those. Yeah, so those wagons, they're basically really hard to kill. Historically, they wouldn't really roll around. Apparently, they'd be stuck in the mud and they would wait for oncoming cavalry, but. Here, the wagons are getting pushed away. And I mean, guys, I'm really impressed with Khosrow's ability to come back into this game, in all honesty. Also, has a TC in this area. Is dropping some towers now to protect it. Wagon gets shot down again. I mean, the siege is taking good care of that. I, I was expecting Gajamata to be in a position to be aggressive. Gajamata instead opted for the economic approach. So this game will go late yet again here. There is always the potential for more turtle ships out of the docks. And we'll see if Khosrow is going to do that. Manganel should be able to weaken these fires. And uh, fires might need to move away here for Gajamata here soon. Ooh, okay. So Gajamata has enough stone for a castle. I just saw some villagers on screen there. I think Gajamata is trying to decide on what to do with this castle. Again, if the Koreans could make demos, you might not build this one. But because the Koreans cannot, this is a good castle. There is a turtle ship in queue right now for Khosrow. And the turtle ship is going to be on the, uh, I guess, the right side of the water, you could say. The, the lower portion of the cup. Oh, no, it's not. Sorry. It's the upper portion of the cup. Okay. But once that castle's up, slowly Gajamata can start to shoot those towers down with the castle. And could really start to make a move here against Khosrow. So I think Khosrow... Okay, turtle ship against Hussite Wagon. Who wins? This is another unkillable force versus an immovable object. Or, wait. Unkillable force. What, whatever. You, you get the point. One has oars, which would barely move. The other one's got wheels rolling through the water here. Well, I think before this gets worse, Khosrow needs to consider a castle in front of that TC. Okay, this turtle ship could be converted. Khosrow's got to be careful. Tower's now down. We still don't have a castle from Khosrow. I'm shocked. Okay, sailing away with the turtle ship. There is a mangonel here as well. Could see some extra fire ships maybe. Lots of stone being mined there from Gajimata. And we're going to see a tower here. From Khosrow just to protect the turtle. Monk is going to get shot by the turtle. Okay. Well, that's the problem. It's like you can convert a turtle ship. But it is so difficult to get the conversion off. These turtle ships just destroy everything. Just waiting. Will we see Imperial Age? We see redemption right now for Gajimata. Ooh, 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 ooh. We also see sneak villagers from Khosrow. We see more games in this third place match, or will Khosrow get the 3 0 before we ramp up here towards our final? Okay, there's villagers building outposts there. I actually think Gajamata wants to castle drop Khosrow. So he, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's definitely something going on here. I think that Khosrow also saw that because Korean villagers have extra vision. Okay. This has been spotted. Amazing quick walls here from Khosrow. Wow. That was insane. See, a lot of players will just prep the walls, but when you're that fast, you can wait till the last second. 
Here come the Vils. The house will also give vision. Oh, God. Oh, God. There's a Manganel there. Oh, gosh. Amada. Gosh, what's the Mata? I think we might see attack rounds on open spaces here from Kozrel, hoping to hit the castle foundation when it goes down, but no. He sees this. The villagers are all exposed. There's no protection. And Gajimata is going to run away. It's actually not that bad for Gajimata because he has a monk with redemption to convert the siege. He still has these wagons. Ooh, okay. Uh, well, he might not have the wagons. He might not get the conversions. The monk is really weak. Oh, no. I take it back. Oh, villagers are going down. There's a cav archer here, too. No conversion yet. Oh, man. This is crazy. Micro from Cause Rally is going to use both the mangonels here. Okay, kills the monk. Will lose his mangonel. And now Gajamata might go for that forward castle, but this is against Koreans. And we have a castle there. Wait, but Khazral, there's siege. Khazral, bro. Now confirmed, there's siege. All right, well, loses some bills. Probably about to lose some more. Guys, if someone is siege pushing you, please don't drop a castle, okay? Like that, I, I want you guys to learn from Hidden Cup. And we've got the best of the very best here. But this is a doubt confirmed moment. People at the live viewing, get your doubt signs prepared. Because this castle is a disaster here so far for Khazrael. And we are going to see a castle from Gajamata as well. We could have the double doubt. Could easily be the double doubt. Um, Gajamata doesn't have many vills. There goes Khazrael in the TC, out of the TC all the time. Monk goes down. Uh... <laughs> Very hard to call. It feels like the castle for Khazrael will not go up here though. There's too many wagons around, and Gajamata is just diving underneath here. This is insanity. We do also have Siege from Khazrael to try and deny the other castle. 75% against 75%. Villagers going down on both sides. Uh, I, I don't know if any of the castles are going to go up. It feels like Khazrael will actually complete this. And then what about Gajamata? No way! Doubt confirmed. Doubt confirmed. The castle doesn't go up. Khazra finally completes his, I mean, at a cost. And these two villagers are looking to prove that Gajamata is not doubt. Now, let's see if that happens. I don't even know if you want to complete it at this point because it could just be trapped down. And Khazra just bought some stone to build another castle somewhere else. 20 villagers behind in the Imperial Age and probably wants trebuchets there too. My goodness, man. That was crazy. Um, <laughs> still waiting to see how things go now <laughs> as things will settle. I mean, losing 20 or 30 villagers isn't so good for your economy. Gajimata will probably have one castle. Oh my God, Gajimata is going to try and convert the tower. So with redemption, you can convert enemy buildings. You can't convert enemy town centers. You cannot convert enemy castles. But if you get underneath the towers and there's no murder holes, you can actually convert them. And Khazral deletes that. Amazing stuff here. I think Gajamata's eco is still amazing. Like, also the Hussite wagons bring you really good value. They're really awkward, really difficult to kill. So Trebs will take out the castles, but Gajamata will still have lots of resources to fight in this one. Castle Foundation gone. I would like to see that deleted. So you get some stone back. I don't know how much stone you would get back, though. And some cheeky towers here from Khazra on the side. I think Khazra is going to be happy with the fact that he's essentially up, in his mind, two castles. But he's got to be worried about this because the monks and the wagons are continuing to wreak havoc here. He just doesn't have an answer. We might see more turtle ships in a moment, though. Like, a couple more turtle ships would make sense if you're worried about fighting on water. Thank you for the gifted subs, Croco. Not the first time you've done that. Thank you, everybody, for the new primes here on the final day. Hope you're ready for the grand finals. This is just a teaser of the action we'll have. Just the third place match. I mean, Gajamata's got a ton of stone. And Gajamata also has bomber cannons out. Research chemistry while on the way to imp, which only the Bohemians can do. 
and still being stubborn, does not want that gold to be available for Kozrael. Converted the market there, which is kind of funny. And we have Hoof needs to being researched now from Gajamata. Wow. This Bohemian thing's here. That's crazy. I mean, after losing that many bills, I didn't think that, you know, and all the villagers running around, I did not think that Gajamata was going to have the resources to afford that. This goes right for those upgraded cannons. We'll see how things develop here. Uh, still waiting for Khosrow to make more normal types of army. It feels like just towers and siege for him right now. That is a little awkward if Gajimata notices that. It's also awkward if Gajimata does not notice it because Korean towers with upgrades actually outrange bomber cannons. So keeps are a, a genuinely good strategy against cannons. It's keeps against trebs that become the problem, but of course you need to have castles in order to go for trebuchets if you're Gajimata. He's got two. Here we have the micro. They're distracted elsewhere. Kozrael paying attention. Kozrael multitasking. Kozrael, stop it. Maybe he can complete that tower now. It does make you think, where was Gajimata looking? Maybe at his monks and his wagons? Maybe towards the middle now. This is likely where they were focusing. Where there's Trebs and now Hoof needs this. So I'm not seeing enough towers there from Kozrael to make me think he can't lose this position. He's going to make his own Bombard Cannons here. And the micro will be important, but repairing away, using his own trebs, using his own cannons. That's a lot of hills repairing. This micro from Khosrow is insane, though, actually. He actually took out the treb here with his own trebs. He's still microing here. Bomber cannon gets converted, though, from Gajamata's monk. Okay, tower upgrades on the way now. So the towers will have the range we talked about. Will there be enough towers for Khosrow to be able to hold this position? If he can hold this position, it should be amazing. I think he's also missing arrow slits. There's like arrow slits as an option. I think HP upgrades could be good as well. So the towers are stronger. My goodness, Gajimata. Like you gotta, you gotta just convert these cannons at this point because Khosrow's not gonna let you kill them. Boom! Two trebs go down and a Bobar cannon gets converted. Gajamata with the plays, even using the cannon he converted to finish off the treb, and this is what Gajamata wanted. Still could be dicey, but how on earth are you supposed to kill that many cannons right now? Especially when there's a castle next to them. Beautiful play from Gajamata. Yeah, this is how you play it. I did lose that area, but I'm not seeing the eco really be set up for Khosrow to do a whole lot more than what he's doing right now. Maybe occasional skirmishers running into the eco. There's a wagon, which could be killed by villagers here in a second. But it's just like the, the most important thing for me is this push in the middle. Because both players are committing so much to this right now. It is all cannons. It is all trebs. It is all action towards this gold area. And bohemians are just simply better with the cannons. Again, in theory... The Korean towers can pick off the cannons, but when you have that many of them, I think you're just going to end up seeing the towers go down. Wagon's going to be punched down by the villager. Actually one-shotted, which is hilarious. Here, villagers are attacking skirmishers. Though it's awkward for villagers. But these cannons in the middle will continue to push back these fortifications. Khosrow will maybe use this time to try and stabilize, but... Khosrow has now has, has to give up that gold control in the middle. Elite Hussite wagon for Gajamata. Wow. Honestly, maybe the best unit to make here. Because we haven't... There's no need to make really like the Halb upgrade, for example, because the opponent's not going for Cav. So I, I actually really like the Elite Hussite wagon upgrade. Full unique unit, basically, from Gajamata. I like this push from Khosrow. Like he, to win this game, he's going to need more of this. The action on the sides has given him a real chance, in my opinion. But once it's Elite Hussite Wagon, those wagons destroy the skirms. They'll destroy the, the villagers. They can run eat underneath your town centers. They could also like deal with that, basically, which is what you want them for. And slowly but surely, Khosrow's still going to be losing ground towards the middle. So it's awkward. Like, Khosrow's making it awkward on the sides. 
but he's losing ground towards the middle now. You know, or is he? Let's see. Here's there's the turtle ship coming in the side of our screen. There's also a tower there. Turtle ship! MVP? By the way, Dave said seven turtles. I don't know if people are keeping track, but uh, I'm seeing one on screen, and then there's another one on the way. I mean, you, turtle ships might be your best option, but the worry still is the monks. If the monks convert the turtles, you're probably going to stop making them. There is another turtle. There's a TC from Gajamata. Yeah, these turtles are just not going to be it. Down go to the turtles. Monk tries to run away with the relic. <laughs> Freaking Kosrao. <laughs> Kosrao's addiction to relics in Hidden Cup 5 has been fun to watch, man. I mean, he's so greedy. Like, the, the Mudflow game yesterday in the semifinal, he's, like, basically dying everywhere, and you still have random monks bringing in relics. That, to me, is, is another Viper confirmed moment here. Um, if I had to put my money on anyone, I would say that Kazral is most likely the three-time champion of Hidden Cup, the Viper. But people still believe Viper could be in that final. We, of course, won't find out who the players are until the reveal. Okay, so now that's quite a few towers stacked up for Kazral. He didn't have like three or four towers in one position. He has that now. And then when you garrison them, they can kill the cannons a whole lot faster. It feels a little weird for high-level age to see this, right? This tower repair garrison meta. But it is what you've got to do. A lot of villagers just died around the base of that tower, though. That's... Oh, jeez. I mean, he has 157 villagers, though. He could honestly afford it. I swear, if Kazra wins this game, this would be crazy. I mean, his opponent has everything to kill him. I think that... Elite Hussite Wagons into Kazrao's Eco is what Gajamata needs. Because there's no way to defend from that. There's no unit out there that could really kill the Hussite Wagons in the Eco at this point. Except maybe villagers themselves, but then of course lots of villagers are going to die. In some ways, Gajamata's kind of okay with this situation because he's taking all the gold. He's like, oh, okay, fine. Just let me chill here for a second. I don't need to push you yet. Beautiful micro continues here from Cosrail. Yep. Little expansion on the sides from Cosrail. That's been spotted. Just too many Hufnitsa cannons here. And those towers are going to go down. I wonder if you could even trade realistically. Be happy with losing a cannon per tower at this point. It's probably not the best long term. But when you have that much gold. I would say it's probably fine. Random scout there for Cosrail. I guess he's going to make more of those. Uh, just just finding villagers that are building outposts, but it feels very unimportant at this point. And there, that tower is going to get shot down as well. And this tower has also been shot down. Every time he takes a tower, he loses a cannon. That's what it feels like, because Khosrow's paying attention to shooting the enemy cannons. But Khosrow doesn't have that many more towers here. Also, 160 villagers for Khosrow, and still making them. Usually you're just making villagers without thinking about it until your population capped. And since he doesn't really have a large army, <laughs> he's not population capped. So he probably is what explains this. But we might have a new record for Vilhai in Hidden Cup if this continues here at this point. 163 with 8 more in queue. God, is Khosrow stubborn. Both players are around 200 population, which is pretty wild. I'm just waiting. I think Gajamata's going to come in here with some demos, and it's going to end this game. Here we go. I see a demo on screen. There should be more, because there's more in queue. The cannons are hitting. The demos are going to make their way through. The demos might get taken out by the towers. But if they don't, villagers will die. Boom! No repair villagers there. Towers will fall. And Khosrow is going to fall finally. Gajamata refuses to give up. I mean, he had a, a, a massive doubt castle earlier. It looked like he was going to lose the game. And he, he could he somehow got to Hufnitsa. He got the middle back. And yeah, again, like Khosrow, he's not going to want to call this here. But because uh, he has he's two and a half thousand gold. But genuinely, what are you supposed to make 
when your opponent has this army on the other side of you. All right, so here's a question, viewers. So there's a tech the Bohemians get. It's the, I think it's Hussite Reforms, which um, it makes their monks cost food. Do you research that tech here when you have so many relics and when you have the gold? I think it's actually worth it because you're not spending a ton of food on other things. But there are a lot of people saying no. It's like eventually the gold's going to run out. I, I don't think it's a high priority. Let's put it that way. Halbs, cannons, monks all sitting here. TC's going down. Kozrael's slowly losing villagers. I mean, his pop isn't going down, but his, his map control isn't going up here. And he's going to go light cav with the Koreans. The Koreans have the worst light cav in the game. They're lacking attack upgrades. They're lacking HP upgrades. And they're lacking armor. So, not a situation that makes you all that excited for Khosrow's position. Bohemian Halberdiers also do additional bonus damage against Cav. So it's like you've got the worst Cav in the game, and then your opponent has Halb. Mm. There's a lot of money on the line here. There's a lot of pride for these two who would have wanted to be in the final today. So Khosrow continues to fight, but... Uh, uh, a turtle ship sighting. Okay. Dave is really hoping this game goes on until we see seven turtle ships, but turtle ship and it's not really going to be it. And I'm I'm failing to see the win condition at this point from Kozral. I think more so from Kozral's perspective as his turtle ship was just stolen from him and the villagers are unhappy about that. I think it's more so he has he doesn't feel like he's been truly killed yet. He might just be sitting here like, "Come on, dude, kill me. Finish me off. Come on." My pop hasn't dropped down below 150 yet, even. Come on, finish me off. And I think that's finally going to happen. It's just Hussite wagons into the back of the eco that needed to happen. Khosrow continues to fight. But you, there's no answer to these. Those These towers are there to protect these cannons here. It looks like those halbs found the bomber cannons. I didn't know this was back here. I guess khosrow has been hoping for one big pushback. Mm, trying to, probably saving these Bombard Cannons, but remember when he was at 160 villagers? Now he's at 120 villagers. And that's only going to get worse for him with units still streaming into his base. He's still losing his cannons as well. And the GG is called. Gajamata gets a win on the board. And we are not finished yet with our third place match. Wow, what a fun game that was. I mean... I loved how Gajamata even played Feudal Age. Something went wrong with the start there for Khosrow. I was also impressed um, with... I was also very impressed with how Khosrow stabilized that game and maybe even had the lead at one point. Um, but it was back and forth. Then in the Imperial Age, it was the Hufnitsa upgrade from Gajamata and that slow push that eventually took full control of gold. He was just able to mass enough cannons to be able to shoot down the towers and this is the big moment of the game where gajimata had a failed castle here in the age community there is a player who's known for failing castles and apparently this series is doubt versus doubt this is doubt against himself uh gajimata's forward castle failed this is when i thought that maybe gajimata was going to lose this game he was later to imp his castle didn't go up he lost a lot of wagons a lot of siege here he was still three minutes away from the imperial age and here's a live look at our uh, Florida viewing party. As again, we've got we've got signs here. And I I can't quite read them. I see Dave on one. I see Quickwall on one. I see pick Celts there from the guy in the middle. We'll see if there's Celts in the finals. Uh, Vasco de Gama and Alexios, hope you're paying attention here. Every person in that crowd has a doubt face on their seats. And then here is the live viewing party at the UK. And uh, he, that guy's booing himself because he doesn't see himself yet. And now he, now he realizes he's on screen and I just made fun of him. But what's up, guys? Let's go. Energy's high. And then salutes all around, of course, here uh, in, the, in, the, in the chat on Twitch. Also on YouTube. Thank you, everybody. Viewership's been incredible so far. It all ends today. Didn't cut five. But we will continue soon here in this series. Uh, should be Kosra's home map pick. He's got high tides in Arabia remaining. Actually, those are the only two maps remaining at this point. I would say Chinese on Arabia 
would be the go-to pick for both players. We might see a Chinese mirror, actually, if it goes to that. And then maybe something like Lithuanians, Malians, or... Mm, I think Lithuanians, Malians is probably the most realistic Civ matchup for High Tides, but again, we'll see what map actually ends up coming. By the way, Mapu, our observer, said there was no issue with the boars there for Kazra. It might have had something to do with the sheep in the previous game, so... Live prize pool is flying here, people. Again, 50% of all donos go towards the prize pool. Thank you, everybody. If you want to support the stream beyond that, honestly, the best thing for me, sub to the stream if you've got a Twitch Prime laying around. Subbing to the stream in general is just so motivating for me to see the sub count go up. We just passed 10K yesterday, which is nuts. To have more people using the emotes, you know, to, it adds more of a community feel to see more people in the chat with the sub badge. So thank you guys for that. I've missed people who've gifted subs too. Or at least, typically, man, if people are being this generous, I have a little bit more time on my hands and I can thank everybody. But I, I really just can't do that because of how crazy this is right now. This is nuts, dude. This is nuts. And we're not even in the final yet. Thank you, guys. Someone said, who said Age of Empires is dead? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Who says it, man? 2024 Age of Empires still, still alive and still well. So <clears throat> I want to remind you guys that if you go to hiddencup.com, there is a Guessing Heroes tab. On the Guessing Heroes tab, you can imagine that. Guess the heroes. Uh, this is going to close down at some point today. I have not been informed on when exactly it's closed. Maybe Robo could tell me or somebody and find out the answer to that. But before the final completes, we are closing that. If you have strong idea of who you think the players are, if you would like to guess all 16, please go to hiddencup.com. Go to the Guessing Heroes tab. Um, below the stream, there's also a Guessing Heroes um, banner. So you can just click that if, if that's easier for you. Please make sure to guess. I also do want to give another shout out to our sponsor, Surfshark, guys. Everything you've seen here this week would not have been possible with, without Surfshark and their sponsor of the, of the event. Um, if you're interested in a VPN, please check out the link below. Please click the link, look at the link, read about it, even if you're not necessarily going to pull the trigger today. It would mean a lot to the future potential sponsorship of events. We do not have many good sponsors in Age of Empires 2, so really appreciate Surfshark. Thanks, of course, to Microsoft for, for really being the base of everything, man. Uh, Microsoft brought in a patch for us to use in the qualifier and the main event, which brought us better performance than we were experiencing months before. Tons of money involved as well in supporting this. It's crazy to me that uh, little old me is, has had some type of connection there with them. It's been amazing. So thank you, guys. All right, interesting stuff. So Arabia game four, and this is just a best of five here in our third place match. We've got Kazra, who's gone for the Chinese. And we have Gajamata, who's gone for the Hindustanis. Now, on the draft, Gajamata had Chinese available. So this tells me that Gajamata might be saving Chinese for the potential game five. But it is not the mirror matchup of Chinese that I was expecting. And Chinese start with the additional vills. They don't start with food, though, so they need to get vill production rolling. Uh, we still continue to have 1776 jokes. Continue. Uh, thank you, Twuggle, <laughs> uh, very much for the donos here. <laughs> and, um, you know, Chinese are seen as one of the best Arabia civilizations if they are able to bring in their resources quickly here. Hindustanis, I would say, are solid. But uh, anytime you're up against the Chinese, you need to be aggressive. You need to focus on pressuring them. Base is fairly open on Arabia in most cases, so Khosrow is going to have to look to protect himself here. There is a player who likes to choose yellow. There is a player who's known for picking Chinese a lot in tournaments. And that player is a player who won Hidden Cup three times. We'll find out at the end of today. Is Khosrow the Viper? Is Khosrow maybe Yo? Is Khosrow maybe a Leary, a Hera, a Doubt? All 16 players are revealed after the final. I'm very excited. I, um, I've obviously done Hidden Cups before, but we uh, brought in a production team for this one, and I, I don't know who the players are. Nothing has been revealed to me yet. 
but I was given a preview of how the reveal would work, and I'm very excited. I'm struggling to contain myself at the moment, actually. Uh, it's actually quite bad for my nerves and my anxiety to, to only be casting this with solo. Like, I almost, <laughs> I have no, no moments to breathe right now, guys. <laughs> this is a lot for me. Four months ago, I was streaming on, on Facebook in front of 250 people. <laughs> and now uh, we've got like over 10K on YouTube and over 30,000 on Twitch. So I'm, whew, you know, I, I'm definitely struggling with this at the moment, but I hope things have been solid for you and I hope you guys are excited. So, oh man. And sure, I was on Twitch before, right? And we hit big viewer numbers before, but it doesn't mean that it, with the flip of a switch, suddenly this feels normal to me by any stretch of the imagination. This is, this is nuts. The energy's been high. And Kozrael's been pushing in all those deer. He was not lamed at all. And he's going to be have a pretty perfect start here with the Chinese. So usually the benchmark, when you're looking at the idle TC time at the bottom left, is if the Chinese have 25 seconds or less of TC idle time, that is a good start. If you're below 25 seconds, that might even be the dream start. It's just so hard to get Vil production rolling. But Kozrael has probably played this civilization a thousand times. And Kozrael has not lost any food. Has all the sheep. Has all the deer. Smooth Dark Age is really what, what gets the Chinese rolling with all their bonuses. Cheaper technologies and a great tech tree. Gajimata on the other side will have cheaper villagers as the game goes on. And is really good at one or two things. I would say booming because of the cheap villagers. And then camels. So this gets to a situation where you could force your opponent into night. So let's say um, you, you play Feudal Age in a way where it feels that Kozrael is going to make archers. Thus, Gajimata would make skirms. And then the best answer to skirmishers would be knights. And then you make your own camels. That's kind of the ebb and flow you, you think about. Obviously, that's uh, easier said than done, but... My expectation here is we just see a scout war and we see some adaptation from there. Hindustani scouts also do, uh, I guess, all their stable units, but in Feudal Age, all we're going to see is scouts. Uh, those stable units do destroy buildings very quickly. Kazrael's missed Gajimata's base here. Not the biggest deal if your opponent isn't going for uh, Dark Age builds. Like if they're going for Militia, with the early barracks, Man at Arms. You really want to have that scouting, but I think he saw the wolf over there. He hasn't seen gold. He hasn't seen stone, so he's headed back this way. <laughs> knock, knock. Who is there? Not a Florida watch party viewer. He is still in bed. Thank you, Conron, for the donation. <laughs> Conron, you happen to be from London? Are you from the UK? Just a wild guess. Maybe this Conron guy is from the UK. Maybe. Guys, it's it's just noon here, all right? For you guys, it's evening. You've been up all day. Don't be so judgy. Man. We People have to travel a long way for the USA meetup, though. I'm really excited with how many people are, are there, how many people I'll get to meet later. Um, as far as I know, it's not only Americans. Uh, from what I've heard, we have some people from Europe traveling over, so that tells you what they think of London. Um, <laughs> uh, we had some people from Canada fly down as well. Um, I don't know if those things are true, but, uh, I, I believe just from the discord, I've seen some people chatting about that. So it, it's been amazing. All right. It's not a competition, even though we like the jokes, it, it's just so cool that I could do something like this and have so many people show up and I hope it's a good time for people who, who are there. It's going to be scouts from both players. Gajimata already trying to wall up quite a bit here. And Kozra will likely do the same. Pretty good maps for both of them. Gajimata looking to wall a lot faster, though. Walling with three different villagers here. And this is not showing the wall villagers he has on the other side of the screen, too. So, you know, I would feel some level of pressure against the Chinese, you know? Especially if you think Kozrao is who I think Kozrao is. Maybe you want to make things messy. But there is also a feeling Kozrao is so good with quick walling. You might not want to try and be aggressive because you might just quick wall out the pressure. 
and then suddenly all your aggress aggression doesn't work out, and then there's a counterattack, and then you can't quick wall. And basically, I just explained my attempt to be a pro player in Age of Empires 2. That whole scenario, very common. Walls are going down for Gajamata. Scouts are moving forward now for Gajamata. The walls, I think, are complete for him. So he's going to move forward pretty quickly here. And Kozrael will not find any damage. And Kozrael is not walled. So pretty nice situation to have, right? I was thinking maybe aggression before walls. But walls before aggression works out in this case. Because Kozrael is at home and is open. Chinese are so good in the hands of the right player, though. Look at the resources collected at the bottom left of your screen. It's crazy. And now, guys, normal players pre-wall, right? They pre-wall some of this. So when the scouts show up, they don't have a problem. Kozrael has pre-walled the berries, but everything else is open and ready to be quick-walled. And there, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Did you see that? Did you see that? There were palisade walls, then there weren't palisade walls, and then the scouts show up and he just goes, boop, little quick wall. And you feel that as the opponent. You feel that. You're like, man, none of my attacks are going to work. He's flexing on me. And on one hand, you want to be motivated and be like, oh, this Khosrow guy is flexing on me. But on the other hand, you can't break him. So you're like, oh, well, honestly, he's so good. You know, I can understand it. I do the same. <laughs> Lots of scouts from Khosrow. Archers as well from Khosrow as we're going to move forward. I missed that stat. But I imagine stats guy has worked really hard on whatever that was. And wow, this early archer switch is interesting here. This is a lot of army here against a walled player. But great control here from Khosrow. And, I mean, if you can get enough army, you could break through these walls. And archers on the other side means you can pick off the villagers there too. Now, what Gajamata can do in this scenario is house wall behind and try and find the reinforcements. Sometimes you're going to have archers coming forward across the map. It's so good from Kazra not to have done that, actually. Kazra knows if he moves forward that those scouts will find him. All right, scouts moving in. Kazra will see this. Skirmishers in defense behind the walls from Gajamata. That's really all he needs, and he picks off an archer. Nice defense. And again, his opponent's still open here. Now all this investment here from Khosrow hasn't necessarily accomplished much. One to one here. Uh, two to one, excuse me, with the total KD. And it seems like Khosrow's probably not going to break Gajamata. How can he break Gajamata? That's what so many players have been asking themselves. How can we kill this guy? Khosrow's somehow been able to do it. I mean, game number two was unbelievable. I don't know how Khosrow got that win. Preps the house walls there. Brings his scouts home. Has the spearmen around. But, you know, the thing I have to circle back to is the resources collected and that how the techs are cheaper for the Chinese. It feels like if Khosrow gets to Castledge without receiving any damage here, Khosrow is going to be in a really nice position. Double archer range from Khosrow. Will probably be something like crossbow in combination with knights, and then the camels from the Hindustanis could struggle. Uh, Sprout, thank you for the dono. Thank you, wannabe Lynx. We've got someone right now where it's midnight watching, staying up all night to watch Hidden Cup. Thank you for that, guys. This is awesome. <laughs> okay, donation. Donation from the uh, USA watch party here in Florida. Okay, you ready? Uh, name, sun's out, guns out. Donation message. Five mimosas down here at the Florida party. No fish and chips in sight. Smells like gator meat and freedom. London got nothing on Florida, man. All right, well, thank you, sun's out, guns out, very much for the donation. I'm glad you're enjoying the mimosas. Good stuff. <laughs> These archers will probably be upgraded to crossbow. And like I said, I think a follow-up of knights would make sense, but Gajamata will be in the castle age faster here. Gajamata actually getting some upgrades on scouts soon, maybe, and adding a few more scouts out of that stable, too. Those archers have to be careful. 
Kazrael is just chasing these things down. <laughs> He's just like, you're not getting away, man. Continues to follow these scouts around. I like the idea of going for light cav here for Gajimata. You need something... You, you need some extreme, I think. You need something in addition to what a normal game would bring you, but... Also, it feels like he's adding extra scouts because he knows he's going to lose these scouts. And yeah, he, he loses most of those scouts. Now the like have idea it doesn't seem as exciting. This has been so smooth from Cosrail here. That's a lot of archers. This definitely forces your hand into skirms. Skirms is, is an absolute must here if you are Gajimata. And then you need the camels too. So it'll probably be Skirmisher Camel against Knights and Crossbows. Maybe we'll even see the Light Cab upgrade here from Khosrow. Khosrow never went for the full walls here. Was confident enough to play open. TC number two, TC number three. Really good economy coming if those complete. And Crossbow and Vodkin's on the way. And there's the Light Cab upgrade. Gajamata's dropping a, a TC in a really nice position. The TC should complete, and the TC will stop Kazra from breaking through in that position. It's also the perfect TC. That TC actually saves him here. Losing access to that gold would be really bad. Whitecab arrive. Kazra sees it. Doesn't get the kills with the Spearman, but does drop Palisade walls. And has a TC going up here. No walls. Is pressuring here. Killed a villager. This is so much pressure, man. And he also needs to defend at home right now. Has a camel, has a spear. I mean, this is just perfect play from Khosrow. Khosrow's playing so smooth. And what I like from Khosrow is how Khosrow's playing with aggression first and eco later. I think in this tournament, there's been a tendency from Khosrow not to be the aggressive one, but to be more the defensive one. Certainly was a little bit more reactive against Alexios, but I think Alexios is so aggressive that there was some fear there for Khosrow. Almost like there's some fear now from Gajamata. This is a best of five for third place. Khosrow will get it if he kills another batch of villagers here. It feels like he's flying right now. He's made no mistakes. It's been virtually a flawless game. Looking around, separating the light cav from the crossbows to get into the wood line. Gajamata tried to maybe trap those crossbows, and it didn't happen. And the crossbows now are able to flee for Khosrow. He's bringing his light cap back over. You could tell a couple times there that Gajamata was trying to build a house. So the light cap couldn't get the freedom. But they do get free. And there's the siege workshop now from Khosrow. <laughs> um, okay, we continue to receive donations from people who have already bought tickets to the live viewing party. I would like to reiterate that as amazing and as funny as it is, it is not a competition, okay? I'm glad you guys are having fun. I really appreciate the support. It is not a competition, okay? And here comes Khosrow looking to be aggressive on the stone. <laughs> One of the donation names was American Live Viewer Honest. <laughs> the donation names are actually cracking me up more than the donations here. Get it out of your system before the finals, people. Finals are going to be epic today. Skirms pull all the way back. I mean, you know, Gajamata felt like if he could drop the TCs early with Hindustanis with the cheaper Vils, that he could be okay. But it's just how could he compete with this much army all the time? And now Siege on his face as well. He's, he's going to need monks. Maybe get some conversions on the Siege. Hindustanis do get redemption. But this this feels like Khosrow is just moments away from breaking this guy. And it's so in, it feels inevitable because Khosrow is really not making many mistakes. That's the impressive thing. Continuous army production, continually raiding, finding good positions, lots of confidence in the attack. Like right here, notices that. We'll pull away the Manganel in a moment. And Khosrow, more on food, more on gold, more control over this game. As we see TC number four from Gajamata. TC number four is probably fine for vill production, right? You can still get those vills out, but it's like, what are you going to make to kill this army right now? And Gajimata has a monk. 
And he, he wants so badly to convert something, but there's always light cap patrolling around waiting for the monks. This is perfect. Does have his own siege coming in. Okay, big moment from Kozrael. I'd love to see if Kozrael notices this because I don't think he knows the siege workshop is there. Oh, geez, a big shot though. Okay, he's running underneath the TC. This is risky stuff. He's running underneath the TC with his siege, with his knights, but he will kill the siege. And I think he believes this TC is about to go down, which is why he's going to sit here. Does lose some knights to conversions. Doesn't or isn't able to finish off his opponent. But guys, Khosrow's flying. We even see TC number four for him. Gajamata needs a crazy castle. Will it be a doubt castle? <laughs> if it is a castle to protect this area of the eco, it will not go up. Maybe I shouldn't say that. It's extremely unlikely. You could place a castle behind that TC, and then it just kind of stabilizes things for you. And your opponent has a lot of archers, so then maybe you could make some golems. So sometimes we'll see players delete the farms and build the castle back there, but then you give up so much ground. The ideal scenario is you defend from this, and Khosrow's like, nope. How about I don't let that happen? Does micro, but loses the Meganel. Nice job, Gashamata. Manganel continues. Big shot there. Okay. Gajamata defending. There's the castle. Interesting. Siege. Again, microed by Khosrow. And again, Khosrow dives. Here, Gajamata loses another one. Oh, it's so expensive to repair TCs as well, guys. It's not cheap. You spend so much wood on it. And it's it, all your focus is here. And, and then you can't focus on expanding your eco in another way to the other areas of the map. Everything's so constricted. Everything's so condensed here. It feels like Khosrow might be able to finish off Gajamata here, guys. I mean, it, feel, it feels inevitable, right? I'm still wondering if Gajamata could maybe get one or two big shots on the crossbows. If you clear out the, the siege, actually, the skirms might be able to do an awful lot on their own. Lightcap dying to the TC here. 6,000 more resources collected right now for Khosrow, but he does get caught out there by a camel. That will be it. That will be a dead Manganel. Khosrow noticed it. There could be another Manganel that goes down. That's nice. And then this opens up, uh, up an opportunity for your siege, but Khosrow noticed it. How does he notice that when he's trying to save his other siege weapons there? Well, uh, try, trying being the key word there because he, he didn't actually save them, but still, there was an attempt. Pretty soon, I think Khosrow is going to finish this series in style. We've got villagers going forward, folks. And he was a player who has built some pretty risky castles in this series. The Bay game was insane. Oh, God. And apparently, I don't know why people are saying Huang right now. I'm going to guess this is probably a donate message. Yes, Huang apparently donated... <laughs> Thank you, Huang, for the donation. I, I imagine that was probably not the real Huang. The Age of Empires 2 legend Huang. I, I could be wrong. Beautiful shot from Gajimata. Okay, there's a chance? Maybe? Castle? No, Castle is not going to be denied. Yikes. Okay, so... Later on today, we find out who these players are, but... Gajimata's had an incredible tournament as is Khosrow, and it's going to end for them here. If this is the end for them, I think they deserve some salutes here uh, as we head towards the, the possible GG. Gajamata has been one of the most difficult to guess, but also has been the biggest fighter, I think, in Hidden Cup 5. Khosrow has been incredible with his micro, his adaptation, um, his, his ability to survive. Like, Funnily enough, it's a similar thing for both of them. The fact that they've survived a lot of different things, but also so different in how they survived, right? For Khosra, it was like, I'm going to defend with so little. That was kind of the thinking for him at times throughout the tournament. He's definitely had some style moves, definitely been getting some big highlights here or there. Here, he's using crossbows to micro down the golems. Golems are a great counter to archers. So if you're getting those kills, that's just because of your amazing micro there. He might even pull away. But yeah, Imp is on the way right now for Khosrow. He's up 
Winning this would mean the end of the, the uh, third place match. And a couple knights could head over there to protect those crossbows. And that's going to be castle number two for Khazral. But he doesn't have villagers going that way. It almost feels like he wants to build the castle somewhere else. I'm a bit confused about that one because I thought I saw villagers going somewhere else. Oh, shoot. He can just do both. Oh. Oh, okay. I thought he would delete that one. No, he has enough stone to have the castle on the front. Nice micro here from Khazral. Split. Takes out the mangonel. But yeah, he's just going to have castles everywhere. Crossbows get pulled away. The knights are here now to, to deal with the rest of this. And then one imp is in. Even though you just killed those crossbows. I'm sure Gajamata has been feeling it for some time. Three forward castles from the enemy and the Imperial Age. And he might feel like it's time to call it. Unless it's ACCM. If it's ACCM or it's Mr. Freaking Yo, they're not going to call up. Oh, GG's called. GG's called. Kozrao is our third place player in Hidden Cup 5. Well played to Kozrao. Well played to Gajimata. I, I knew the GG was probably going to come. Kozrao ends up winning. Now, what we are not going to do here is we are not going to do votes on who uh, viewers think Kozrao and Gajimata are. We are going to save the votes. We're going to keep things moving along here. And if you would like to guess on who all the players are in Hidden Cup, yet again, please go to Hidden Cup five, uh, Sorry, hiddencup.com. And make sure you submit your guesses over the next hour or two. Again, I'm going to get some details here for you so you have an idea of when the voting is shut down. Uh, being told the guessing competition will close between the third and final starts. Guessing will close when the first game of the final starts. Okay, so as we do the highlights here, guys, you basically have maybe 30, 40 minutes max to get your guessing done, we are going to have to close the guessing for the entirety of Hidden Cup before the first game of the final start. Just keep that in mind. This is how the third place match went. Th this was cool, man. Like, third place match always has a different feel from the final. Uh, these players are happy to play for an extra thousand dollars, but ultimately everyone plays to be the champion. But we had some really crazy games. Like this strategy from Cosrail, the scouts coming in, the Ram, the Scorpion, Completely caught Gajimata off guard. This was not the type of game Gajimata was expecting for Bypass. And from the start, villagers were dying and things were messy. And eventually, Khazrael got the job done. Then in this game, I mean, the water focus was fun, but the land focus w was really crazy. Khazrael uh, didn't really have the fishing eco he would have wanted, but he expanded into the TCs later. And he was like three town centers producing bills. Gajamata was on one town center, but Gajamata was so aggressive here. And honestly, I feel like Gajamata did enough to win this game. Just a couple moments going differently here. Castles being denied. And this should have been a Gajamata victory. Kazrao just so good at getting the timings right in defense. We eventually saw quite a few elephants in this one. Again, there were there were three castles that actually could have been denied here from Khazrael, so I'm not sure we have them all in our highlights. Khazrael lost TCs. Khazrael lost Eco. Khazrael was raided everywhere, but he just kept coming with Lycav and kept finding opportunities to chip away at Gajimata's attack. Okay, so we, we might see all of them, actually. This was the first castle that maybe shouldn't have gone up. Look at this. Monks underneath the TC. Lycav everywhere. Siege everywhere. Villagers are getting pre-pulled to the side here by Khazrael because he knows that the siege is going in for his vills. And then he just, he barely had enough Lycav there. He only had four Lycav and was able to get the kills on the siege to allow him to finish this castle. And this was, this was basically one of many, but here's castle number two. Like everyone's screaming doubt confirmed the whole time as these castles struggle to go up. I can understand getting the castles right. I can understand the defense. I do not understand how a player can end up getting every castle up, being an imp so much faster, and then getting the eco to go for the amount of elephants that he did that eventually won him the game. Insanely impressive. This was game three. This was also a Dao castle fest. <laughs> this this was also incredibly messy. Gajimata, Gajimata initially having a pretty big lead, I felt. And then he decided to go for a forward castle. And when he went for the forward castle, 
Khazrael was going for a defensive castle, and I thought initially that Khazrael's castle, again, was not going to go up. But he had enough fills. I guess that's the key. Somebody tell Dal. Had enough villagers building the castle, and Gajimata did not. So Khazrael's castle, despite the losses, went up. And then the castle for Gajimata was denied at 90%. He actually had more failed castles or more, let's say, problematic castles in this game. Than any... No, I'm... never mind. I'm remembering a series King Stephen played. We probably had just as many in a series that King Stephen played. But moving on throughout that game, Gajimata finally wanting a win on the board. Bombard cannons, monks, and Hussite wagons. Just kept going. And won the game. And took us to the fourth game. Where maybe Gajimata, if he won that, was going to have Chinese in game number five. Didn't have Chinese available in game number five. And could you guys tell that I'm like moving my hands around and going crazy when we're uh, when I'm even summing up the games and I'm not on camera? Sorry. It's like I'm on camera and I'm just like, chill. But when, when I'm not on camera, my arms are flying. I'm smacking my mic around because I, you know, that's just how I talk. So hello, everybody. Welcome to the final day of Hidden Cup 5. Crazy uh, best of five there between Kazra and Gajimata. But we have our finals coming up soon. Um, listen, we got to thank our sponsor Surfshark before we move along. We've got a couple things to get to and I've got plenty of people to thank here uh, because of all the donations that have come in towards the prize pool, uh, all the subs, all the energy, all the hype. But uh, to keep things moving, I want to do a big thank you to our sponsor Surfshark one last time. In the lead up to Hidden Cup 5, I spent a great deal of time speaking with potential sponsors. Most of them weren't products that I could really get excited about or they didn't believe in me or AV2 to have a strong viewer base. Surfshark VPN was a massive exception to this. These days, the internet is kind of everything. I mean, back when this game came out, we were playing on wooden computers and uh, our keyboards looked like, well, they looked like the same one that Doubt is still playing on. But unlike Doubt, times have changed. And with all the good internet can bring, there's also a lot of bad sometimes. Using a VPN like Surfshark can provide a safer experience when sailing or surfing through the internet. I mentioned Doubt and his old outdated keyboard, and when I asked him about an edit, he told me, as long as I don't have to do anything, do whatever you want. So here is the Lord Doubt say on Hidden Cup 5 sponsor. Oh, if you need a VPN, if you want to surf, if you want to be, no. Internet is unsafe place these days. If you want to be a safe surfer, <laughs> we have an amazing deal here. It's called Surfshark. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. Below the stream, you will find the Surfshark link and the deal with Hidden Cup 5. That is it for now, though. We now move into our next series in Hidden Cup 5. And if you need VPN, Surfshark. All right, uh, gotta love Doubt. Um, Doubt's amazing. <clears throat> I've got the pleasure of meeting him many times in person. He's he's so fun. He's such a good personality, and he's an amazing player. And for all we know, Doubt could be uh, one of the finalists here. That's kind of the whole point of Hidden Cup. Just a quick look to the bracket, real quick, to remind you all of what has taken place before we uh, ultimately move into the break. Prior to our final, we're gonna keep that short for you guys, though, because I know um, you guys want action. And you want to see Vasco da Gama against Alexios Komnenos. So that's everything that's taken place. We have 16 participants. We don't know who is who. We find out later today after the final. Thank you all for being here. But we do have to get things prepped. Now, usually in Hidden Cup, um, I, we have a few more videos prepped where we explain player styles and preferences. And we did have one in the works. But last night, we decided it wasn't quite where we wanted it. So I'm going to replay a video I've already shown you guys. Now, normally that could be disappointing. It's like, come on, T90. We want something new. But with certain videos uh, and with certain uh, player showcases, I have a feeling you guys may enjoy this one uh, as, again, still keeps a focus on our Lord. Um, short break here, folks. We're going to first give you a, a peek into the player that is Doubt. And then we'll be back soon. Dave will come in and we will start our grand final of Hidden Cove 5. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome to a Hidden Cup 5 showcase, where we dive into pro players and their reputations in the complex world of AB2. Hidden Cup 5 features the world's best players, but they're on hidden identities, which makes it crucial to recognize their styles to guess who they are. This player showcase is all about Doubt. Doubt is 38 years old and is one of the biggest Age of Empires 2 legends. He has been competing in and cashing in Age of Empires 2 tournaments since 2002. For reference, three players in this event weren't even born when Doubt was winning Age of Empires 2 tournaments. He has lived and breathed this game for quite some time, apparently while using the same keyboard. The thing that comes with being around for so long is experience, and Doubt has experienced it all throughout his 22-year career. But something else that comes with experience in modern-day gaming is lack of speed. And Doubt will be the first to tell you, it's tough to keep up sometimes. For example, here is Doubt giving the world a quick wall tutorial. Again, again, again. Wait, he hits me? Ah, okay, okay, okay. Hey, can I? I walk him in, actually. That's some next level shit. Okay, got in, get in. So if someone fails to quick wall in Hidden Cup 5, God damn it. Doubt confirmed. If someone sets an elaborate trap in game, only for it to go horribly wrong. Oh fuck, he's actually here. Doubt confirmed. Oh god. If someone has the opponent massively outnumbered, oh, no. I cannot miss this, right? And misses it. I, I actually missed that. Great throw. Doubt confirmed. Now listen, it's important I clarify this point that this is all in good fun. Doubt is always easygoing and is happy to laugh at himself, and he is well aware of the memes surrounding him. But I didn't want to take this for granted. Doubt is a fearsome competitor, and I didn't want to make too many jokes at his expense here. So I asked him for some input and what he was comfortable with. And Doubt, in the most Doubt response ever, said, As long as I don't need to do anything, do whatever you want. So with that in mind, uh, there is one more thing. confirmed. Doubt, all memes aside, all Doubt castles aside, is always an insanely prepped player. I can remember Hidden Cup 3, where Celts was utilized, and he and Tato were using this strategy on opposite sides of the bracket. And then in Hidden Cup 4, I remember he was down 2-0, came back to win 3-2, playing as Gonzalo Pizarro. The memes are there. What? How is he getting by with like 12 EAPM? The micro's not, but Doubt is truly one of the best, and our scene is lucky to have him. That's all from this Hidden Cup showcase. Stick around. Hidden Cup 5 action is coming up next. All oh, dog in your chicks. That's how this, they call this.
Ladies and gents, we are back. It is time after eight days. We are here and we have one more series left to go. You are looking at the trophy that the Hidden Cove 5 champion will receive. And we know it's down to two heroes at this point, but do we even know the players? It will be Vasco da Gama against Alexios Komnenos. Thank you for the journey that has been Hidden Cove 5 so far. And thank you for being here, whether it's in person at the live viewing parties, or it is online right now, or it is in the future uh, with me, of course. I have Dave, who is with me for Hidden Cub 1, 2, 3, 4, and, and 5. What's up, dude? I wouldn't miss it for the world, dude. I wouldn't miss it for the world. And we have an amazing final here. I see a lot of new faces. I see a lot of people I haven't seen in a long time in the chat, which is amazing. Welcome yeah. to Age of Empires 2. This is going to be incredible. I hope everybody is ready. Tristan, I hope you're ready. I am so ready, dude. I'm so yeah, ready. I'm, I mean, I'm nervous. I'm not going to lie. I'm nervous, people. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're nervous, but I am. But uh, yeah, of course, I'm ready for this. This is what we live for, dude. And guys, I want to just remind you all, uh, those of you with strong opinions out there, those of you that maybe enjoy competition, Pretty soon, the site closes that does the prediction. So if you haven't already gone below the stream and looked at the tab there or gone to hiddencup.com uh, and looked at the Guess Heroes tab, this is your last chance to submit your guesses for all 16 heroes, all 16 identities. You do not have to, but last call as far as that's concerned, so make it quick. I uh, did also want to say thank you again to everyone who supported, donated towards the prize pool, all the new primes, all the gifted subs coming through to the channel. and. Big thank you to Microsoft for, for the game and the development and the prize pool, to Surfshark for what they've done for Hidden Cuff 5, and then, of course, to Red Bull, which is sitting back here behind me. Uh, they, we would not have had the Hidden Cuff 5 we've had so far without all those three sponsors, so thank you. But, uh, Dave, I'm not going to speculate much. I want to just look at the draft and go there and, and see what these players have picked for us today. We have a best-of-seven grand final, and we are going to start it off on evacuation let's go baby <laughs> remember in the build-up to this both of these players have done a very similar thing on evacuation we felt like they might have been training partners apex thank you for the donation i know apex is at the live viewing party right now must be nice buddy <laughs> thank you for all the support everyone this is gonna be absolutely incredible and when I'm looking at the drafts here, Tristan, I see a lot of common themes with these two that we've seen throughout the, uh, the Hidden Cup main event. Notably, Mongols being picked first overall for both. Yeah, really interesting, especially considering Mudflow is also in the pool because the conversation in Alexios' semifinal was he prioritized Mongols for Bay. And then Kazrao prioritized Chinese for Mudflow. But yeah, both players prioritizing Mongols. Now, here's a question. Obviously, we have our guesses on who you think these players are. Do you think they know who they're up against here? Do you think they have an idea after watching all these games? I think everybody has an idea, especially going into the semis where you, you could previously view what the player's styles would be like. Is it 100%? Maybe not, but 90 potentially like it also helps that they know who they are right so they can take that extra name out of the pool yeah, <laughs> if true. that makes sense right <laughs> we don't know who they are for 100 percent, but they, they have another <laughs> name to remove essentially yeah i mean that's a fair point i think because these players are so similar style so for us we're, we're maybe thinking like out of a pool of of two or three and it does actually narrow it down if they know they're on identity. Mm -hmm. Let, let's hope they know who they are. Um, they're about to find out, I guess, here in the final. So, evacuation game one. Um, Alexios's maps, Bay, Mudflow, High Tides. All very different, I would say. And then Vasco has Bypass, Cup, and Arabia. I'm looking at a map pool here for a final. After all the bands and picks, that is very diverse, Dave. Like, every single uh, skill set that players need to compete in Age of Empires 2 they're going to be on display here today yeah we're going to have that early water pressure right we're going to have the uh strategic map control on cup then we have the closed map builds on bypass i see turks over there 
for Alexios. And then we have the open style of play on Arabia, that more hybrid approach on high tides where you have to make the decision, do you go for the water control or do you go for the land really early? And then the chaos, the absolute chaos that is Mudflow. This is going to be amazing. If these are the two players I think they are, we are going to have a banger. And also, if it's the two players I think they are, it always goes to the final game in the finals yeah. between these two. I suspect Vasco de Gamer is uh, Hera, and I think Alexios Komnenos is Leary, always to the final game with those two dudes. Yeah, yeah, they they have gone. Whether it's the round of sixteen, whether it is the quarterfinals, the final, wherever they have faced, it tends to go late. But let's go to what the viewers have voted the players as thus far throughout Hidden Cup. Uh, the view count's pretty high right now. It's very possible that people didn't see all the games. I know you guys couldn't necessarily dedicate eight hours every day to Age of Empires. So let's sum it up. After every series, we would have the viewers vote on who they think they saw, and. For the start of the week, things were pretty good. You know, people were not voting for the same player more than once. Things got a little hairy uh, near the conclusion of the bracket because uh, Viper was voted in twice as a player who won. Then uh, you had Leary voted in as a player who lost. Only for round number two to see then there's only one Viper. Suddenly Sato shows up. Suddenly Leary is now one, even though he apparently lost his Alfred the Alpaca. You know, it, it was tricky for people with the second half of the bracket. I think the top of the bracket as well here, Dave, gets fascinating because, um, granted, we already saw the third place match and whatnot, but according to viewers, it was Hera beating Tato earlier. Now, I said to you mm -hmm. or, or somebody, I actually think Alexios has a greater chance of being Tato then maybe a Viper, who people are not ready to admit is maybe out in the semifinals. I think Tato could sneakily be Alexios. Maybe Leary did go down in the first or second round. It, it is really complicated, but I would say I'm with you. I think Hera Leary final is what we are looking at here. That's just my guess. I think the surprises for Hidden Cup are really going to come elsewhere once we get to the big reveal. Well, some of those strategies we saw coming out of uh, Alexios were not traditional Leary strategies, right? I'm thinking about Cup yesterday, where he just went fast castle in order to boom. Is that something that we've seen from Leary before? I mean, it didn't work. <laughs> so yeah, true, maybe, true. Uh, you know, he's never going to do it again. But we, we don't <laughs> commonly see stuff like that, right? We'd see a, a, a lot of aggression uh, from him. And, and if it is indeed Leary, I mean, he's really adapted his game and he's really playing solid economically and just great late game Age of Empires too. He's not forcing yeah. that push in early Imperial Age as we know him so best for doing. Yeah, I, I agree. I think like, okay, the, the difference between these two players today is going to be, will Vasco be able to be as defensive as he has been? And then will Alexios be able to break him? I think in the past... Mm -hmm. Vasco was maybe so greedy because he was able to be, but I genuinely believe that he is going to have to respect the the army from Alexios, the control from Alexios a little bit more. So that if you're looking for differences between the players, it is that Vasco is more defensive than Alexios. Alexios, at, to a fault sometimes, has been aggressive. Like on maps with Fish, he's just skipped out on Fish, and he's still been able to win even though on theory you should be fishing or competing on water just because of how good his land micro is. So uh, I'm very excited. Now, I've been told, folks, we start in like five, six minutes. The players are getting prepared, so we're still going to chat out a little bit more here. I want to go to the prize pool. Uh, somebody said at the start of the day, it'd be funny if we got to 69 420 for the prize pool. And I was like, well, that's never going to happen. And as donations continue to fly in, we are actually getting closer to the 69 for 20 live prize pool. Uh, thank you, everybody, so much for the donos. 50% of those donos go through. It's a mix of donations that are very serious and thoughtful. Um, someone called me a phenomenal creator, an amazing human. And then somebody said, we can't see the stream because of Dave's head. Uh, we had someone making fun of the UK. We had someone from the UK very drunkenly making fun of the US viewing party. So we have very serious, thoughtful, trolly, excited viewers here, which is all exciting. 
But I'd actually like to see our live viewing parties again. I know the UK was filled up, but I want to see what the US is looking like because I'm going to be there later on, guys, to meet everybody uh, after the day concludes. Um, now, there you know, we are. People are coming in. There's food in the back. There's drink. Go ahead, Dave. Tell me, tell me what you're seeing here. What's the energy like at the U.S. viewing party leading up towards the final? Well, I saw. Where is the guy? He's missing. I saw a We Love Dave sign. Where are you? <laughs> I Bro, think We Love Dave was kicked out of the building. <laughs> you know, the beautiful, uh, yeah. the beautiful thing about my head blocking the stream is that if you look at my forehead, you can actually see a reflection of the stream. So you can actually watch it <laughs> on my head. I like how the guy in the front there has monopolized. I like how they've monopolized other people's doubt faces. There we go. They know they're on screen now. And we, okay, the Pit Celts guy's in the back. Okay, what is that? The UK, is that, does that say the UK meetup can't quick wall? <laughs> 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 the UK meetup can't quick wall. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, yeah, where's your signs, UK meetup? Yeah, you got man. out signed. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> funny. That is really funny stuff. I mean, you never know, dude. Uh, you know, we've we've been to a bunch of these. Uh, you never know the energy you're going to get. You know, I'm always, when I go yeah. to them, I'm a little concerned. I'm like, I, even though I've done this for so long, I like to act like I'm not nerdy enough to go, you know, to an age of empires, a 20 year old game event. And then I'm kind of at the center of it. But when you get there, you're like, Oh, we're all just like normal people who enjoy age of empires too. And, and uh, are also surprised and excited that the game is back and that we have such a strong community. So to have hundreds of people get excited about going to events like these is exciting. So well done everyone for making the trip. And uh, we'll, we'll see, I'm sure we'll see them. If there's a Dow castle, especially, there will be doubt signs flying. I, uh, I personally, uh, well, and my fiance as well, she would call me out for not giving her credit. Uh, spent hours getting the, like taping the sticks onto the back of the doubt signs. And we've had doubt faces in my living room for a week. It's been very weird to like finish a stream and just see doubt, you know? <laughs> oh man. Well, I'm glad you actually finished his signs. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like the spirit of doubt to actually finish something that uh, you've started you know true true yeah yeah that's a fair point well back to the draft then we go uh as we're getting close here so game one evacuation let's talk about evacuation or what we'd expect here so there's been a lot of games i definitely recall vasco de gama and alexios both opting for galleys on water in combination with archers on land so i think dravidians could accomplish that for alexios I could see Persians accomplishing that for Alexios. I think Japanese, probably the best at that there for Vasco. But if not that, Malians. I think those civilizations are probably the best there. But is there any any civs that stand out for you, I guess beyond Mongols, because we talked about that, uh, as a surprise or things to look forward to on the drafts here? Once again, wondering about Gujaras, right? We saw Gujaras on Bay yesterday from um, Khosrau. Didn't really work out against Alexios, but Alexios might have to fight them again. Unless Vasco is going for that <laughs> Kajara strategy I brought up on Bypass in, or in order to counter the Turks. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Yeah, Gajara stands out to me. It is his last pick. So that could just mm -hmm. be a Civ that isn't played here because there's seven games. There's eight Civs there. I also didn't notice earlier when I said that Chinese was in first pick that Alexios actually picked up Chinese later on on his draft. So he does still have Chinese available for Mudflow later. So that'll put pressure on Vasco to do what he did before, play with the Magyars, play aggressively there. Um, you know, Byzantines, I think is, it's a civilization where we can kind of see them played everywhere. We've said that for years, Dave. But now that we're at the end of the week, we haven't really seen Byzantines played much. I wonder where they're going to fit here today for Alexios because it doesn't necessarily scream. None of these maps scream Byzantines to me. It's always like Byzantines can be good, but I'm not sure if Byzantines can be as great as maybe some other civilizations can be on these maps. 
Yeah, I think it's more of an adaptive play, right? It's always a great civilization to have in your draft for two reasons. One of them is that it you deny it from your opponent. You really don't want to play up against Byzantines, especially if they have a plan. And then number two is if your opponent makes some uh, maybe unexpected Civ choices early in the games, and then you're, fi you're heading into a game six or maybe a game five, you've kind of eliminated some of the Civs they can pick, and Byzantines might be a great counter pick on a specific yeah. map to one of the civilizations your opponent has left. So it just gives you a ton of flexibility. They can really do anything, right? They can play into the archers. They can play into the Navy. They can play into the trash units. They can play into camels as well. So there's a lot of options there and it gives you so much flexibility for a good player uh, to really utilize. Yeah, I agree with you there. I think the other thing, since we're talking about flexibility, Maybe the Mengalis and the Dravidians are going to be big ones to look to on either side today. I would consider their civilization strong at certain things, but I would not consider them flexible. Neither civilization getting knights could be a problem for a player like Alexios and Vasco. So that definitely, to me, falls into the category of game plan has to work. You cannot fall behind. And I'm, I guess that brings me to my next question. If these two players are who we think they are, what... Like, are we expecting comebacks? Or are we just expecting both players at the peak of their game? One guy gets the lead, never loses it, go game two and continue on. Like, what? What's the potential here? I th I think we're at least going to a game six. I think we're at least going to a game six. Alexios has been kind of a slow starter here, but he's finished really, really strong. Vasco hasn't shown many weaknesses. We'll see if Alexios can break through that armor. I mean, he's he's been a little underrated in the first couple rounds and then heading into the semifinals there too. It felt like Kozrao was playing a little bit better than him, but Alexios is, oof, he's looking dangerous, man. I, I had him winning my hero bracket before Hidden Cup 5 even began. I, I like to think that, you know, I'm omniscient a little bit. I, I, <laughs> I, I've got the, the predictions down and I've got Alexios as the underdog maybe against Vasco, winning this four to three. All right, crazy final on our hands. Folks, we have a countdown. This is a live final here. Get ready. Thank you, everyone. Again, half of all donos go right towards the prize pool. It'll update live on your screen. The view count's insane right now, everywhere across the scene. Thank you so much. Also, because I don't have this many viewers that frequently, I should remind you, if you are watching, and have a Twitch Prime sub available. There's no better time to join in spamming the hype and the hero emotes or whatever, whichever emote you prefer. Thank you in advance for that. And uh, yeah, I mean, Dave, we're gonna be right into it here soon. Uh, evacuation is not gonna give us any time to chill either. This might also be the first time where we see both players take the, the boars with their scouts, because I think usually it's one player doing it and the other player not doing it. I think both of these players did it in the earlier rounds and now they're against each other it could also be a situation where they both send the scouts to the other side to deny the person taking that board with the scout immediately like right away because they know the history but welcome in everyone yeah here we are grand finals hidden cup five it's been a long week it's been a long event i think for those who have issues with color blindness we are going to change alexios to red here today also, if he is who we think he is, he is known for changing his color. We got game number one on evacuation. And what a map to start off on here, Dave. And both these players have been so strong throughout the tournament. Uh, whoever they are, big names have been guessed consistently. Vasco de Gama goes for his number one pick, which we speculated on, the Mongols, and is going to start this off doing something that he was the first to do in Hidden Cup 5 on evacuation. And he's going to bring in that boar, bring in that precious Mongol hunt with that scout. Yeah, but look what Alexios is doing. He's not bringing in the boar immediately. He's instead looking for the cows. So there's a lot of extra cows that you have on this uh, main continent area of evacuation. And he's going to try and find those. Hasn't found really any yet as Vasco continues bringing in that boar. But now Alexios has a scout on full HP. So if Vasco wants to go contest the cow control on that main area, he's going to have to fight with an HP disadvantage. 
Yeah, and it's it's funny to say that, to say cow control and have people not laugh at it, but it is actually a big deal here. And it, I didn't think it would be, but it seems like it, it's quite balanced in some ways, right? The one player gets the boar, but then their scout is weaker. The other player then has the scout to be able to, to find those cows. Now, over mm -hmm. time, this map was named Evacuation because you need to leave where you started. But there's a trend I noticed from Vasco, actually, where he just gets so far ahead. It doesn't matter that he is on this area where you eventually run out of resources. So the aggression is key between these two. It was is also the key with, with Alexios. Combining water and land aggression on a map so brutal, only the best can do it, Dave. And I, I'm just, I'm thrilled, I'm excited, but I'm very, very worried for Alexios here. With Vasco having all that extra food as the Mongols, Vasco should have a nice early feudal age. Apparently cows have 333 variations of moo. <laughs> I wasn't aware. <laughs> Thank I, you, Seth, for, guy. I didn't know that. Yeah, all right. Well, I mean, I can't even fact check him on that. A little busy at the moment, so good to know. Stats guy has he asked me at the start, he says, How how trolly should we be? I said, Well, let's take it, let's let's have some fun the first couple days. When we get to the grand final, though, it's all serious facts. And I would I would agree. That's a very serious fact to have in here. People seem to appreciate it. So Persians have the extra HP on the dock, Dave. They have the better work rate in their TCs and their docks. You really need to make sure if you're Lexios that at the very least you're dominating water here, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It's going to be tough, though, if the Mongol player gets up faster than you, which they should with that additional boar, right? We yeah, see yeah. A, a, a lot of resources collected here for Vasco, and most of that is the hunt. As Vasco now finds one of those cows coming down and another rhino on the way. That's the second rhino plus the boar. That's so much food available. We could see an insane uptime here from Vasco. Alexios will have more resources available overall with the cow control and with the dock a little bit faster and the second fishing ship out faster. But Vasco is such a great player at taking advantage of all the timings as we've seen in the previous sets. Yeah, and, and it also timings in this game can mean you use the timing advantage in one area to then put your opponent on the back foot there, switch uh -oh. to the next area, which on this map is perfect. Vasco he game one in the final. He's wondering, should he try and see if his opponent's paying attention? And Alexios is paying attention. And there come, there is the evacuation. So players kind of know this is going to happen. The question is, what are you going to do about it? Because if you pressure on land, you're then going to potentially lose water. Persian should be really good at mixing those things. But something I remember Vasco da Gama doing was going galleys on water. And then also he would go archers on land. So... Neither Civ really seen as like the best naval civilization here or even the best archer civilization. But I mean, this isn't this isn't a low elo game, Dave. They're going to take advantage of every single age. We've seen the Dark Age matter a lot already, even with just the scouts. And now at this point, uh, they're really going to need to make sure they take advantage of feudal age. It's very interesting that Alexios is going to that backwood line. A lot of players will go to that. Actually, almost everybody goes to the forward one because the hunt is mm. nearby so that if they yeah, have to yeah, go yeah. for a tower it'll kind of protect both things but alexios is like screw it i'm just going to this back area he might be relying uh just on the cows the goats and then also the water he thinks he's gonna win for the food supply and Ooh. he needs a lumber camp there yeah, alexios that's, that's, your villagers I, are I, I, ooh. He's microing Dave, and I'm going to assume that he thinks he built that lumber camp, but those villagers are walking home, and he's still microing, and that is not good for Alexios, but that is. So now he's going to, oh, eventually, Hello? eventually he's going to see these vills come back onto his screen here. That's <laughs> so demoralizing, man, when and you look like, at your TC ah, and then you see that. <laughs> I mean, oh, that's God. funny. It's funny. It's maybe relatable for many. That's not good. That's not good. That's that's a lot of idle time there for Alexios. But he did kill the scout. Vasco doesn't have the vision now. And surprise, surprise, Dave, we're going to have galleys from both players here. So I was wondering if we'd mm -hmm. see that. But I, I suspected that these players were practice partners. And now at this point, they will have got to really see what the opponent's going to do too. So galley war on water. Actually going to be scouts from Vasco on land, which Alexios doesn't know about yet. 
I actually found it really fascinating that Vasco went up without Loom. And Alexios, even though he saw individual villagers with his scout in Dark Age, maybe didn't click the vills to see if Loom was in. Or maybe didn't feel like he wanted to lose that extra HP and lose that control over the early stages of the game as the scouts come in now the spearmen are in here and this is a rough position it's just that the classic early aggression from vasco mm -hmm. the control yep. over the map and it's smothering and this this is mongols for you as well he's used the mongols so perfectly here it could that be two vil picks he's gonna get the second villager pick here oh it's wait in. no he didn't get it is that the same vill? I don't know if that's the same vill that came out, but all the scouts go down, the villager survives, and actually Alexios really made out there. And even kills the goat. He says, you're not taking this. And that villager, <laughs> he just made a leap of faith into the town center, managed to survive one. Basically, no one should have survived that. And Vasco, again, three times on this map now, has gone for that huge full wall. But we still yep. have the scout alive from Alexios. He's going to know exactly what the plan is here from Vasco. And even though he did lose a villager with Persians, that's kind of fine. Because your town center production is making up for that. The idle TC here from him, though, is not fantastic. 47 seconds already. Hey, you're producing out of the barracks, the range, the stable, the, the TC, the dock. It's messy. It's very easy to forget to build a house here. Now, Vasco's waiting. I think he is expecting his opponent to be going for galleys as well. Alexios actually has the galley advantage right now, but you have to get the galleys there. And this is just the brilliance of Vasco. He knows oh. that he's going to have the, the numbers by the time Alexios makes it over. And I like the walls from Vasco. I think that's quite smart. I think it makes it difficult for your opponent. And... Look at that quick wall there from Alexios. If there was any question on if these guys were going to be prepped and ready here, I mean, look at that. Remember the galley micro on that Islands game from Alexios? It was superb. It was amazing yeah. in that game against Cosrow, but this is not great for him. He forgot about this wood line, walling up everything else, and he's now sending Spearman over to support against the scouts, but we know Vasco is not going to give this up. He's going to go for that villager and try and save as much HP as possible. That fill dies is being out popped on water by the galleys though because it's two dock production here and already seven galleys on the water from alexios i love the transitions from vasco sorry dave the transitions are so clean and he's utilizing extra hunt from the mongols behind this there's deer that he could take and he's milled that and that's going to be another nice snipe there from vasco three to one eco kd but as we've said with vasco all tournament it's not just the snipes on the it's not just the kills but it's the eco and the fact that he's taken every deer he's on his way to castle age right now it's going to make him feel pretty good having said that though he's got to kill his opponent's fish right now because uh, alexios just mm -hmm. killed his alexios has a lot of galleys out there and alexios could be up to castle age here soon yeah as quick as you are if alexios does wall you can't let him get a free fish boom going you have to yep. stop that. And that's exactly what he's going to try and do. He's still controlling the land areas. But we can look at the villager count right now. It's 33 to 33. Now, we have a little bit of a castle age advantage for uh, Vasco. But if he lets the fish boom happen, Ooh. that advantage is going to disappear. Oh, Ooh, that is such a creative play there from Vasco. He's used his galleys to kill the spears. And now his scouts can find another villager pick. That is so smart. And Alexio still hasn't clicked up, Dave. I mean, this is... I thought maybe the resources would stabilize a little bit for him. Having some fish, being Persians. He's going to drop a market now to click up. But how is Alexios going to be in Castle Age at 18 minutes on the back of a scout rush here? Yeah, that's, that's actually wild. I mean, he's still got some of the scouts alive, too. He's yep. killed so many villagers by just running around with these weakened scouts. Alexios has been trying to fight them off with vills. It's not working. He's been trying to chase them with spearmen. It's not working. Vasco is paying attention all the time. And I guess the question now, when he gets to Castle Age, what do you transition into here for Vasco? Are you going to go for a greedy eco expansion or step lances? Or is your opponent just going to resign? What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's your answer, Dave. Alexios just says, okay, GG. I haven't clicked up the Castle Age, and maybe that says how much he assumes his opponent can do with the position. I Listen, 
if there's ever a map for you to assume that step lancers are going to ruin you, this is it. I, I could see why you would think it's inevitable that Vasco is going to kill him here. Would have liked a little bit more fight with Alexios, but I do want to circle back to what I said. If we think these are the players we think they are, sometimes when these two players we are guessing they are face off, it's like one player's strategy works. The other guy's like, okay, he got me. And then the other guy's like, the next time I got to make sure my strategy works and I have to get the better of him. So uh, here we have, uh, there was a glimpse of the UK viewing party. Here we have the US viewing party. And now we are back to the draft. But that was a, a I don't want to say it's a stomp from Vasco because I felt like the game could have gone on longer. But it was, it was clean mm -hmm. play. And he used his number one sieve, the Mongols. It was clean play, but I mean, it feels like Alexios could have fought on a little bit longer there. He won the water, right? He yep. had won the water. That gives you a lot of access. You have Persians as well. Your TC is produced faster. So if you can hold on until Castle Age, you can catch up in the eco. And then you can start spamming out camels or knights or whatever you need um, to keep yourself safe. But I mean, there it is. Hello. I love you too. <laughs> I love these signs. These are actually some really good signs, guys. Well played. Looks like the We Love Dave guy just, just walked away like my job is done. He Back had his, to my speed. Uh, well, the, the moment was there, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I agree. I, I would have loved to have seen Alexios have a little bit more fight, but I think Alexios, I mean, we didn't see Alexios lose much. But when he did lose, it was never a big fight like the Gajamadas of Hidden Cup, right? It was always like, well, okay, plan didn't work out. We're going back again because he's just such a killer, dude. And that brings me to my next point. It's like that there was never really an instance there for Lexios where he had mm -hmm. control. So I think this next game, whatever he goes for, I'm thinking it's going to be Mudflow or High Tides. I've been told it's Mudflow. He's got to make sure he is the aggressor. Apparently, mud flow is his choice. He'll have Chinese, Dave. A great civilization here. Yeah, Chinese. But the last time around, he punished the Chinese, and we've seen the Chinese, um, you know, be very, very strong on mud flow. But with the presence of the Magyars, which Vasco has in his draft, you can just kind of spam military, and if your opponent gets a little bit too greedy, you can start picking off their villagers left and right. So, Alexios will need to be careful. He will need to pr produce more army than Cosrow did yesterday. And judging by his style so far, I think he should be fine. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think, I think Alexios will know what his opponent could have done differently yesterday. Hey, listen, people, so many people here. Thanks again. And sorry, chat, but I'm going to say it's between every game because I don't have 30 plus K viewers uh, watching all the time. Reminder, if you want to support the stream and you've got a Twitch Prime, we got a prime emote subs. <clears throat> Great time to encourage it. We'll see if it does anything, Dave. I just felt like I had to, you know, say Twitch. something. Thank TV you, everybody. Slash Dave underscore AOE. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, send it, send it over there. Head over there. <laughs> drop some of those primes over there. That, that's what I was going to say. Exactly. <laughs> Game number two. And we've got Alexios against Vasco de Gama. Now, the first game was, was a very short one. And we speculated on sieves. And we thought it was going to be Chinese for Alexios. He goes what? Byzantines. And we have Vasco de Gama going Italian. So maybe with some time to think about it, Dave, do both players seem to think that water control on a map with no fish is actually really important? I mean, maybe they both watched that game yesterday and said, like, Chinese just don't have the time, right? Yeah. Chinese just don't have the time to get into the units that they want. At least Alexios thought that. And he goes for Byzantines, and then Vasco was looking at his civilizations and maybe thinking Chinese do have the time if Alexios mm -hmm. plays them, and I need something a little bit different from Magyar, something that can pressure that middle uh, woodline zone. Yeah, I mean, there's still going to be maps where the Magyars and the Chinese can be strong, and these guys are planning long term here. But I was not expecting Italians versus Byzantines now. If, my, if I'm remembering correctly from the history lessons we had this week, I believe Alexios from, from Nenos is from the Byzantine Empire. So maybe it's a bit of a home field advantage here for Alexios. So I would, I would assume that the player who's playing as Alexios does not really care about that that much. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, okay, to explain the struggles of the map, 
there's so many exposed areas on land for you. The double berries, uh, the areas where you have to farm, which isn't around the TC, the golds there. But towards the middles, the bigger wood lines where most players tend to go. And then there's also the stones. And yeah, I mean, I'm no longer expecting a scout rush. I actually think we might see these guys like wall up their vills or maybe make spearmen against scouts and go like double triple dock with these match with this matchup we have dude when you think about this map though you think about spearmen numbers a lot of the t a lot of the time regardless of whether True. there's a True. ton of scouts the spearmen are still good harassing everything byzantine spearmen the cheaper spearmen could be really really useful here if you want to go water and then keep your main base safe the spearmen could be amazing and then as soon as you see the mad archers you go into cheaper skirmishers and you just yep. keep yourself safe keep that control but look at this two villagers Ooh. coming forward and the walls are already going up from bosco but alexios was tracking that and alexios has already walled in his two woodline villagers on this side it's gonna get difficult though because that lumber camp's in a really awkward position for him okay so vasco brought vils forward to try and disrupt his opponent's woodline because more vils are going to come over here eventually and so he he initially, I think, wanted to fight there. He researched Loom. I was pretty sure he wanted to kill those two Vils. Won't get the kills mm -hmm. now. Nice job from Alexios. He's sending another one. He's sending another huh. one around the other side. Like, he's going to fully wall in this lumber camp. Unless the Vils chop through in time. I actually think those mm -hmm. villagers are very close to chopping through that tree. Villagers on the way. Palisade's going to go down. And then there's a villager here, too. Devasco being a lamer here. And I actually really think this is strong here. He has got some perfect walls around that lumber camp. Yeah, and there's no straggler trees really around your TC other than those reeds. And the reeds only have yeah. 50 wood on them. So yeah. the wood, uh, lack of wood for Alexios is going to be absolutely brutal when he gets up to feudal age and he's trying to drop those production buildings or maybe a dock or something. Two on wood there just isn't enough. I think though, honestly... I think you can just bring however many vills you're going to send that lumber camp anyways and take down one of the palisades and it's still kind of okay. I could be wrong. Obviously, there's a lot of other things happening right now. But yeah, you just take out the one palisade and you yeah. should still be able to use that lumber camp. It, it will just be very inefficient and it will be a target for Vasco if he knows you're going to be doing that. Absolutely excellent unit control from both players so far. They're both trying to get the hill with the scout. We see Vasco once again falling behind on that scout war. But he's got the villagers to help, and Alexios takes it out. And now there's two villagers against three. All of them have loom, and suddenly Alexios has managed... Oh, God! ...to get himself oh, that's trapped. A problem. That's a problem. Yeah, it was looking good for Alexios. Now, let's see, because you got to build the palisade wall, too. This could actually be a trap... For Lexios, if Vasco isn't careful, it seems like Vasco, though, is repairing enough, will kill that villager, and Vasco still having a pretty reasonable click up to the next oh, stage. Now, hold on, behind? another palisade? Okay. Oh! 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 He lost the wood okay. from that, though. That's that's actually not great. He lost the wood from that. He still has the scout alive. Yep. I think it's one hit away from death. If it's two hits, that's great for him, but I believe it's one hit. And he's gonna uh, act like he's gonna attack and go back. Be running away. Oh, it's two yeah, hits. Like, nice. He's like, I'm gonna attack you. No, I'm not. I'm gonna attack you. No, I'm not. He's gonna use the scout. Know that Vasco doesn't have the barracks up yet, which is good for him because he doesn't have the wood for anything himself right now. And I do think at this point, Alexios, you just you gotta go home, right? I think you chased that mm -hmm. a little bit too far. There's the barracks for Alexios, and we. We, we're foolish here. We think we, they're going to have an easy Dark Age, think we can talk about the bonuses, but no, this has very much become about wood control with the Vil fighting. Um, I would say pre-walling in your wood lines, the biggest key right now on this map, Vasco's doing it, and we'll probably see Alexios choose to do it on his wood line back at home. Yeah, and Vasco's gone for a stable. Byzantines are just going to keep spamming out Spearmen. I guess the, the harassment on the woodline was just to slow down the Woodyco a little bit, maybe prevent yep. this amount of Spearmen coming out. Vasco will choose to try and run around with scouts once again. But it feels like Alexios, if he keeps the Spearmen production up, if he keeps them in the right spot, should be relatively safe. And he I should agree. have a more comfortable position here. 
Um, then Vasco, once those scouts aren't able to find any damage, he also has his starting scout giving him a ton of it, information. He knew that stable was coming so early. This is a problem, though. Like, these Palisades have made his life so annoying. Like, and it's very easy if you go to just wall it, that you accidentally wall using your opponent's walls and forget about it. Mm -hmm. He deletes one and then shows up. So I still think you got to wall it up. But I, I just looking at that, that thing that has to somehow benefit in some some way, shape, or form. I agree, though. I like the decision from Alexia to pretty much just play towards the uh, d defensive spears here. Okay, so T90's mic is bugging out a little bit. We'll get that fixed in a second here, folks. But the scouts are still coming in. The spearmen are still roaming around the mill at the front of Vasco's base and uh, vasco really unable to find any damage with those scouts the woodline was really annoying early for alexios but uh he has managed to figure it out there's the walls on this side as the archer range goes up vasco will find that however there's a spear we're waiting in there in defense alexios has done a fantastic job we have to question when does the dock come in for alexios because i think the dock could be a really really valuable addition and he's going for the big big walls in the north huge walls from him skirmisher is coming on to the field spearman still in defense and he's trying to lock down the entire northern area of this base and wall off one quarter it's... of the map however there are archers yeah to me this is this is a little ambitious but when vasco's on the other side maybe you you want to play this safe and, and being the Byzantines, if you get the walls down, they have the HP. Maybe you'll be okay. Gates there from Alexios. He does have skirms. He does have spears. These are all counter units to what's coming his way. But yeah, I agree. It definitely seems like Vasco's the aggressor here. Alexios, maybe a little bit out of character, playing defensive, but he's gonna. He should be able to hold from this, Dave. He could complete these walls now. The spearmen are there. The skirms are there, and those walls can complete towards the edge of the map. Yeah, just a lot of patience with the villager movements here from Alexios, right? Thank you, Switzerland, for also watching uh, Hidden Cup 5. We're glad to have you. And the scouts have found their way into this side, but there's so many spearmen. Vasco might have overcooked here a little bit. He's trying to look for those opportunities, really trying to utilize his impressive micro. But Alexios is always there with defensive units. Yeah, to those watching in Florida uh, for the U.S. viewing party, please be careful venturing outside the facility. You may end up like that Spearman we just saw go down. That didn't help Alexios to lose another defensive unit. Vasco still has denied the walls, but he always has more units, right? He always has the spears. He always has the skirms ready. So, you know, we haven't seen the walls really pan out this hidden cup on this map. But I'm not ready to give up on him because he's Byzantines and he can always just make mm -hmm. more units. How on earth does he have 600 more resources collected? Please someone explain that to me. Because he doesn't have that 16 villagers trying to build walls. <laughs> Still. That's, that, that, that is impressive. I agree with you. It is also the, the pro of having your villagers work. Vasco has been great. All Hidden Cup is focusing on the vill efficiency Still waiting for Alexios to really have that moment, that Archer moment, oh, this that wall good moment. Go oh boy. Well, that's that's better. Oh, oh no! No! Oh, disaster! It would have been Alexios. better. You let him die. His death at least would have bought you something. Now yep. there's nothing. That he opened yep. the wall to try and save yep. himself, and he wasn't thinking about the Empire. He wasn't thinking about. You know, the, the friends at home, he's sacrificed himself for absolutely nothing. Yeah, and it's unfortunate he didn't know the scouts were there. If he would have had an extra second, he would have been okay. Again, Alexios just trying to play defensive here with the Byzantines. And thus far, the aggression from Vasco has paid off. He might go back for that villager. You have to say, resources looking good for Alexios. The walls are panning out. Like he actually has completed most of the walls. It seems like he might be able to be in Castlades a little bit faster in theory, but we have the next decision from Vasco, Dave. And he says, I know what to do against Palisade Walls on Mudflow. He might have even picked the Italians for this reason, and he's going to go for Docks right now. God, he's just so annoying with these scouts, isn't he? 
every single time he sees an exposed villager until that the very second that spearman arrives he's attacking it and he might even yep. kill this one quick wall oh, oh. quick wall Four. quick wall what? Get some. so it's five eco kills here from vasco and feudal he's got two docks he's gonna be making galleys now and res collected is looking pretty nice for vasco vasco's had full control first game was 18 minutes and now Alexios seemingly looking for an answer. You know, just as an, a, a side combo here, Dave, I got to say, Alexios that made it into the finals was aggressive, right? He tried to find aggression. He tried to make it happen. We haven't seen the aggressive Alexios so far in Hidden Cove 5 finals. Oh, he's got Spearman attacking a galley. Now he's getting a little bit... Uh... He's getting a little bit curious about what damage he can do in his opponent's base. And he comes into the farming eco, which is good disruption. But remember what we looked at about two minutes ago when he had 500 food in the bank and Vasco had like 150. Now Vasco yeah, is true. up to the castle age first because this farming is absolutely insane for this map. As now two docks are being added from Alexios and he's about to click up to the castle age, doesn't have the second building. So even Ooh. more delay, just things aren't going his way. Yeah, it just hasn't been his day so far, right? That's a big part of competition is when the level's so high, is it is everything going to click for you on the day? And Alexios does, I mean, he does a great job not to lose more here. This could have been so much worse for him. He dropped some stone walls. He will cook up the Castle Age here soon. And there he goes. So you know, the thinking right now for Alexios is if you could get into fires with the Byzantines, Byzantines mm -hmm. could dominate the middle. So I like that. I think Vasco is going to need demos with his galleys, but we are definitely seeing the war galley upgrade from both in Castle Age. Yeah, the difficult thing here for the galleys is there's not a lot of room to maneuver. However, in Vasco's favor, if it is a fire versus galley battle, he can just toss demos in to those choke points in front, right? And then yep. have the damage from behind as another quick gate comes down Ooh. there from Vasco to save the villager, and he saves Ooh. the villager. This is unbelievable. It's dirty, dude. It is It is dirty, this Vasco guy. He'll kill all the skirms. I mean, I'm pretty sure Alexios knew with just one spear. His his days were numbered oh, out that there. Oh, the villagers are weak on the wood line. Oh, man. He's going to have to run from that. He paid such a high price for that wood line. Now he has to abandon it. So, oh, God. He, you know, he walled to secure the map. And the wood was the most important thing and often is on mud flow. And 24 minutes in, Alexios again taps out. Vasco de Gama able to bring the level he brought this whole tournament. And either it's Vasco being at 100%, Alexios may, maybe being a bit below that. Maybe it's the nerves. Maybe it's the stress. Maybe uh, Vasco is simply better. But Vasco with the dream start here to our final with two very quick wins. Vasco looks incredibly prepared. Vasco's execution is 100% on point, and it, it, it's getting to the stage where if you're Alexios, you're just thinking, man, do I really need to change my entire game style to try and put pressure onto this guy? Mm -hmm. Because I'm not even able to get into the army that I want. I, I yep. can't even mass anything. He's killing me with scouts early. He's killing me with spearmen early. He's killing me with villagers early. Like, how am I supposed to do anything against this? I think you, you got to go back as we take a look to the USA meetup, all the signers, walk up, make Loom sure. Is noobs. <laughs> Loom, okay. Loom is for noobs. We love Dave. Pick Celts and um, the, the other one I can't quite read, but I think that is the guy who also had, uh, was rooting for, is that the drawing of Vasco de Gama? That is a Vasco de Gama sign, and here's the UK meetup. Ready, prepared, and excited here to see if Alexios can turn things around here, Dave. I'm just going to go back to the strategy. I feel as though, you like, what I wanted to see there was scouts and aggression, right? We saw spears, walls, mm -hmm. and defense. Um, on high tides now, or bay, or whatever this is, I want to see aggression from Alexios. We know he can do it. I think that, you know, due to the respect of his opponent, or maybe the nerves here, he hasn't wanted to let himself shine, but we've still got Bay, High Tides, Arabia, Cup, and Bypass. Take it one game at a time, but yeah, Lexios is more aggressive than what we've seen so far. He needs to be.
he absolutely needs to be. Remember, he still has his first pick available on Bay. So maybe he can hit some of those timings, right? We'll see what uh, Vasco has cooking for uh, Gujaras. Also, Arabia still here, where Vasco maybe won't find the opportunity to get those villager kills as early because you don't need to stretch out for those resources like you do on some yep. of these other maps. So maybe yep. Alexios can, you know, get his feet under him and, and push back a little bit. Uh, high tides there. Alexios looks so impressive on that map. And, well, and we, we need something here, dude. We need something. Yep. There's already been a hidden cup where it was a 4-0, right? Were there two hidden cups where it was a 4-0 in the finals? Uh, I think There's just one. It one. was hidden cup, hidden cup 3. Yep, hidden cup 3. Okay, hidden so it's not, it's not a trend. It's not a trend. That's good. No, no. I mean, it just comes down to getting, like, feeling comfortable as a player. You have to feel comfortable, and I do not see... I think Alexios is looking at the game on paper and saying, well, in theory, if I play defense until this stage of the game, I win. That's not you, dude. That's not you. It's just not you. So I think here's the positives for Alexios. High tides, amazing civilization available in the Lithuanians. We've seen Lithuanians be one mm -hmm. of the best. Arabia, Chinese available. We've seen, we know Chinese are one of the best. Bay, Mongols. We know Mongols are one of the best. I'm seeing three wins up there. That's before we talk about Turks on bypass. So I'm not ready to give up on Alexios, but obviously we just need to see a win on the board for us to have some type of belief in him. <laughs> Do you go Arabia if you're him? Ooh. Uh, you know, I, I would be tempted to do that. However, I am worried that if Vasco has the 2-0 lead on you and you go immediately to Arabia, that Vasco takes a massive risk and goes crazy with a lame attempt. Because I think in a closer series, you might not be as, as like prone to laming like a madman if you're Vasco against Chinese because you're like, this is risky for me. I don't, I don't want to not get my own resources. But you can take the risk to potentially steal like tons of sheep, maybe a forward villager, make it messy for the Chinese. You can do that if you're Vasco right now. I think you save Arabia because that's probably Alexios' best map. And you instead go for high tides here. I would go high tides, Lithuanians, or Bay, Mongols. Either one should be really strong. Keep in mind, the last High Tides game, Alexios won. He lost the villager while trying to build the dock. Hopefully, he's True. learned his lesson this time <laughs> around. Yeah, it's going to be Cup, actually. So I was wrong. Uh, where I, I know Alexios played Saracens in the past. Bit curious to see what we'll see Civ wise here. Because uh, the Koreans weren't even picked, actually, from either player. And we've seen the Koreans win very frequently there. I wonder if Vasco da Gama is, instead wants to go... With the Bohemians, I could see that, but he might want to save that. And we have a very interesting Civ matchup here on Cup Game number three. And when it comes to the guessing competition later on, you're trying to guess who these players are. We did not change Alexios's color. It is Game three. Things have not gone well for him, so he has now changed his color in game, which to me further confirms who this player might be, Dave. But it's Japanese against Dravidians. The map is Cup. And honestly, these civs are both flexible on water. They're both flexible towards infantry and archers. This is going to be a very even civ matchup. Yeah, Dravidian's a very GL-esque pick as well, if we're thinking mm -hmm. about it. Not really something that we've seen maybe someone like Leary play very often, although it is a great mm -hmm. archer civ, as you mentioned, and lots of eco bonuses trending towards that. Japanese is also a super solid pick on this map. You could go for the two militia drush or maybe the men at arms if you're feeling particularly aggressive you could just play water too with your uh higher hp fishing ships or you could play the archers or something like that you're saving wood on the lumber camps on the mining camps so that's what you can put into those early builds and get that map control get that aggression um early on here but last time remember vasco in the semifinals making scouts and fires against double fi dock fire ship production from his opponent he was making scouts to counter ships yeah it's interesting i mean i think we could see that here both civilizations are known for having great long-term stable units but scouts are scouts they give you vision vasco used scouts wonderfully in both games so far um so i'm not going to argue against that but i do think it feels a little bit more natural to wall on this map than others 
So my guess is we're definitely going to see an early dock. And on this map, it then comes down to where are you going to dock? I always think that, you know, the, if you're going to play water long term, you're probably going to want to dock the bigger water area. But mm -hmm. players have instead decided to dock between the player bases, which helps you if your opponent's going to be sending scouts to your base or sending archers and spearmen across. It just gives you so much protection and so much coverage over the immediate area between the bases. But we'll find that answer out now. It looks like Alexios is going to dock on this side. Sent two villagers, which makes me think he... So he's going to gather maybe, with them, yeah. Yeah, that or he wanted to use the dock as part of a... Like to get the pop space with Dravidians. And he realized that the dock builds slower than a house. And he needed to rush that down. Oh, I think he's done the that math. might have been it. Looked it looked like it yeah. was just on time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was. Nice call out. It's just on time there with the Dravidian. So really, really solid job. And there's the first fishing ship on the way from Alexios. So even faster than the Japanese. As the second boar now comes in for Vasco. And he continues to push the deer. But the scout is coming forward here from Alexios. And it's going to find the dock villager. Mm -hmm. Doesn't do anything. Just finds the dock and then keeps roaming around. That's me. I attack that dock and I, I tell my opponent, hey, I know it's here. You know, just a little attack signal like, hey, I'm ready now. I'm not going to be defensive anymore. Now, in my case, I would definitely be defensive. But Alexia should be. Yeah, I am a pest. That's all I've got, dude. That's all I've got. <laughs> but then when people realize I've dog... got no. <laughs> dude, attacking Listen. a dock is like sitting in front of the goalie and waving your stick around in their eyes. It's just annoying. <laughs> Listen, all right. You got to do you got to work with what you can. All right. And sometimes that attack signal, that could be one scout attacking a dock. That could be militia. You know, you got to freak your opponent out. This is the finals. I don't know if Vasco da Gama has a lot of reason to be afraid right now, but just saying maybe Alexios would uh, let him know he's he knows he's there because Vasco da Gama does not know where Alexios is currently fishing himself. Let's take a look at the timings. Should be a one second faster. Uh, here for uh, Alexios, and that's gonna be it's gonna be really nice when he hits the feudal age and gets that extra two hundred wood. If he wants to go for the water, water control, it's actually a little bit faster from Vasco. Yeah, yeah, a little bit faster from Vasco here. I think just the three seconds of TC idle time from Alexios was the problem. So now it's like you're gonna get all this extra wood if you're Dravidians when you hit feudal, but you kind of have to pre-plan your steps here. So you still have to have the wood for the second dock if you're going to do that, or the barracks. It feels like a second dock would be natural. But we're seeing a barracks from Vasco de Gama. So barracks from Vasco back at home. And Alexio is bringing bills to the middle, telling me it will be a bit more water play for him here on Cup. A couple extra hits there for Alexios too. The three seconds actually might matter for the Feudal Age scout upgrades, but the two villagers are going across with another dock. Barracks is coming up, and is it going to be, like, just stable again? Is this going to be a repeat of the game that Vasco played yesterday, where there's a forward dock, a back dock, two dock fire galley production, and he mm -hmm. wins because he has three or four scouts helping to attack the ships? I think... The thing that's easy to forget right now is that Alexios is going to have so much more wood in the bank than we realize. He gets 400 wood now, or two 400 wood. So he scouted the fact his opponent is going for land army. He can make ships to kill the fish. And now he should be able to know, I need a barracks. And if I make the barracks, I can make spears. Now I'm concerned because I'm not seeing the barracks yet, but we are seeing some walls. He will ultimately... It, well, you would assume save these fishing ships, but Vasco's being the freaking worst. Vasco de Gama. He's not dominating the... He's not exploring the seas in the way that Vasco de Gama actually did, but he's doing it in his own way here in Hidden Cup. And now runs back. And yeah, Dave, it is scouts. He's sticking to what works. Scouts and spears here for Vasco. Yeah, he did notice that second dock a little bit earlier this time around, and that dock isn't as forward as the one was in the previous set. So it's a little bit easier to kind of mass your fire galleys. Here, as Vasco now goes for a dock in the southern area, he's going to try and take control there. And his scouts have shown themselves to Alexios. Alexios is getting a lot of chip damage in there with the fires. Not as great of a start this time 
for Vasco with these scouts as it was in the semifinal. There are going to be spears out there for Alexios. The spears out there. Vasco choosing to use his scouts on water is precisely what he had done in the semi. But I wonder how much of that in the semi was due to the scouts and how much of that was due to the fact that his opponent didn't make spears right away because we're going to have some spears coming to the middle which I don't recall happening. Mm -hmm. And now your scouts can't be anywhere close. The spears will actually help out a bit against the ships as well. And Alexio has scouted this. He adapted to it pretty nicely. He's got more production on water. And as long as he's walled at home, these scouts might not have a big payoff here for Vasco da Gama. I think the position's not bad for either player. But if I had to pick a position from here, I would definitely pick the position of Alexios. Mm -hmm. That galley being added in is super interesting too. Like... What serious value is that gonna get Galley gonna add for you other than like sniping maybe a repair villager? But he doesn't even have Fletcher. I, I, I think he's doing it because Vasco is using the Japanese fish to block a lot of these shots, Dave. I think that's the reason. I do think continuing with fires, mixing in a demo is the safe play. And oh my god, the micro continues from Vasco. Great, the galley hasn't done too much. The scouts are contributing, the spears all went down. And while the scouts will go down as well, with one dock production, Vasco's been able to stay uh, somewhat um, relevant on water here. And he's added mm -hmm. fish over there this entire time. Really good play from Vasco da Gama. That's just a great call out, right? You know your opponent's attention is fully fixed on that top pond area, the marsh area. He knows he can get away, which is adding a dock, adding three fishing ships, and that's really helping his res collective. Once again, 400 ahead. He's just consistently ahead at all times in terms of res collective. Now, I don't think that yep. includes the free 200 wood from the Dravidians, but still, super solid play here from Vasco. I think Alexios feels like he has to continue to invest here because he has the fish. So he will continue to do so. Finally finding the fights we thought he could find due to his initial production. But Vasco repairing very consistently, still mixing in the scouts. I'll be honest, though. The first group of scouts excited me. The second oh, demo. group of scouts even excited me. But as the demo connects there, I'm not sure if additional scouts at this point is the way you want to spend your additional res collected. This is going to be nice clear up here from Alexios. And we have three more scouts from Vasco da Gama that are going to be on the field. I guess maybe he's going to go find fishing ship kills, but he shouldn't be able to break into Alexios' base, provided Alexios finishes the walls. That galley has added so much more value than I ever thought it would, and that's only because his micro with it has been incredible. But yeah, okay. this is the problem. Right? Okay. The scouts are okay. here. You had to wall to that TC. Don't let the scouts run through here, Alexios. It's fine. It was all, all part of the plan. He protects himself. Now, the fishing ships are very weak from before, which is probably why Vasco decided to make more scouts. I just... I'm loving how Vasco continues to add the scouts because he's so good with them, right? He clearly is able to get a lot of value from them. And it must just be so annoying. It feels like Alexios is spending half of his time trying to deal with scouts, and so he can't really think about being aggressive in, in the, the normal way he would. I mean, he's so good with them, but at some point, they're just not good against what yeah. Alexios is making, right? And he hasn't yeah. been able to snipe the fish because Alexios has been pulling them away. Now, both players thinking about going up to Castle H. I hate the fact that Alexios has still left the front of his town center open. Agreed. When it Agreed. just seems like such an easy thing to wall off against a, a, a scout nerd on the other side. But he is going for a market. He does have the Spearman chasing. Of course, Vasco would pull those scouts away at the exact last second from the Spearman. And he's going to go up to the Castle Age fairly soon here. So, something Alexios doesn't know right now is that his opponent has been fishing on the other side. Now, I don't know how important the fish are, really. That'll run out eventually. But it is something that Vasco's been able There's to do. There's a lot of fires in that dock. Ooh, here true. They go. Yeah, fires are going to come back on water. That's actually really nice, though. I think if Vasco there in an ideal world, he would have actually surprised his opponent with a demo. But to surprise his opponent with fires when his opponent already has fires, it's not that big a deal here for Alexios to just say, oh, okay, I queue up a couple extra fires myself. Here I'm going to go for the attack. But, oh, man, the scouts actually, just the distraction there, sacrificing themselves. Nice job, Vasco. 
Find someone who loves you as much as Alexios loves this one galley. That thing <laughs> has survived he has let, a lot. Yeah, he's let the fires go down, but that galley, man, he's going to micro it. That's the type of unit we expected from Alexios today, right? We thought it was going to be, like, uh, ranged units. I haven't seen a ton of them today. Demo, good micro. First upgrade we're going to see from both players has to be War Galley, in my opinion, to upgrade the ships. Nice job from Alexios to still keep those fishing ships alive against this nerdy micro from Vasco. Vasco de Gama, though. Tons of wood to work with, Dave. It feels like he's probably just going to be happy to drop his TCs and head towards late game. We have the, the Berry, Berry Brigade. Brigade. <laughs> Looks like a cereal. <laughs> Uh, we have the Berry Brigade, I assume, at the USA viewing party here. That's what those shirts were earlier. <laughs> Looks like a like a children's TV show, TV show or something. <laughs> True. <dude. laughs> it looks like it's like I watched that right after Blues Clues or something. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, <laughs> we're gonna see. <laughs> Some Navy continue here from both players. And obviously, because it's Vasco de Gama, he's going to continue with the scouts. But now Pikeman upgrade comes in from Alexios and his second barracks. I like this. I also like how both players are prioritizing their eco right now. Yeah, like Cav is in. Husbandry's coming. He's going to find himself a villager. But three town centers from both. So good eco expansion here as Pikeman are now on the way, at least the production. And... I love to see the eco upgrades actually coming in because in some of these sets, we've seen that second wood upgrade delayed until Imperial Age. Actually, a surprising amount of the sets. Players are just so I focused mean, on other things, but forward siege for Vasco. This is going to be the first time we see the Bosal upgrade this entire series, <laughs> right? These games have not been True. long, so they're not really in the habit of researching it at this point. Uh oh, there's uh -oh. the monk. Monk starts to convert here. Now, losing a villager wouldn't be too bad if you can kill the monk. And the monk's going to back away. There's now pikes coming over. There's fires coming over. Alex Alexio snipes the monk. And Vasco de Gama showed himself a little too early here, in my opinion. He, he definitely wanted to attack with this, though. Look how close the buildings are to his opponent's base. It's actually uncanny how similar this game has played out to the semifinal where Vasco played True. this exact same style. Because remember where that monastery was? Remember where the Siege yep. Workshop was in the semifinal? Exactly the same spot. He's played in the yep. Scouts as well. The only difference is that Alexios has had phenomenal control. And he's managed to negate a lot of the value that Vasco got um, from the earlier semi. I agree with you there. And, and Vasco has not transitioned into his food eco in the same way he did in that semifinal because of the resistance from Alexios. We're also, mm -hmm. remember it was all in Knights from Khmer from Vasco in the semifinal. Well, now he's Japanese. So long-term, the Knights might not be something he can plan with. I'm noticing no bow saw. Like no horse color for Vasco TC. could be oh, a problem, God. but the like have run in. I actually don't think this is, ooh, losing the Manganel would be horrible, but I don't think this this is going to be that bad for Alexios if he has pikes on the way. He got his <laughs> fires converted, Dave. He got his fires converted, but he did save the Manganel, but everything else went wrong here. That was a pretty clutch attack ground, though, on the Manganel, and he's managed to keep it alive, and the pikemen are here. Can he repair with more? Can he repair with more? Vasco's trying to take it out. He oh! does it. He does. Oh, no. That's just... If you're Alexios, you're just like, is this what this day is going to be? Is this what this day has become? Like, Vasco just able to have a little bit more. But I see in the stone count rise up for Alexios. He might see a castle here shortly. He still has pikes. He still can go for siege defense. Vasco's taking control now with the attacks. This is a close game we expected from this final. We just didn't expect the first two would be so, so landslidey. Those light calf thinking about diving through, but they know there's pikemen there now. Would be a really nice time for Vasco de Gama to consider like a guard tower upgrade and some forward towers or the redemption mm. upgrade on the monks. I think both those things could help. This is such an awkward position here for Alexios as he tries to get an attack round, but Vasco has already dodged around three attack rounds from Alexios with those light calf. 
It's just a, a weird spot. You can't run under the TC because the Mangonel is automatically attacking the middle there. So you have to go yep. around the town center and approach from the ooh, sides. Ooh, and then you have to ooh, try and prevent your pikemen ooh. from being converted. What's happening? There's so much happening. It's it's just not enough defense for Alexios. Vasco continues to just run circles around Alexios here. And the siege is taking out the TC. And this Manganel as well is going to go down. And Vasco de Gama looks like he's prepped to maybe be able to win this game. We're going to have a castle from Alexios. But we might have our first doubt sighting in the finals. There's no way this castle goes up, Dave. Surely there's no way this castle goes up. Well, the fires are still there attacking the Mangonels. Can they get converted? I don't know. There's more pikemen on the way. There oh. is a demo, I think, coming out of that dock. Attack round doesn't work. Oh, no. Vasco does kill his own light calf, but he was able to use the demo, calf Demo, there. demo, demo, demo. Demo's not no. going to get in close enough, Dave. Demo kills one monk. The castle is denied. Alexios, disaster of a finals for him. He's down 10 villagers. His castle's denied at 60%. Doubt confirmed. Oh, he was doing such a good job. He was doing such a great job early of denying all of the pressure here from Ooh. Vasco. And now he needs to get value with this Mangonel. He gets oh one. He sends that all the disgusting. rest of the villagers. This is a massacre. That was disgusting. That micro there from Vasco was disgusting. He pretty much had already won the game with his position but he wins the game with even more style. Vasco de Gama goes up 3-0 here, is now one win away from winning Hidden Cup 5. I mean, what can you say, right? It's just like, it's a carbon copy of his approach in the semifinals. It works so well yep. there. He did it again here. Alexio stood up against it a little bit better um, than Gajimata, but like, man, you just lose one fight and suddenly you're in the worst position ever. And you just have to wonder, how did I get here? Vasco's that good. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know, you know what more to really say about it at this point. Uh, Dave, I'm going to let you talk as I have something to attend to here as we prep for the fourth game. But uh, talk away about what Alexios could possibly try and change here, dude. I mean, when we're thinking about Alexios he's just got to get himself into a comfortable position every single game be it dark age be it early feudal age he's being attacked by low numbers of scouts by skirmishers by spearmen by archers by villagers whatever he never has the advantage it feels like in momentum or in map control and for that reason he just hasn't been able to express himself vasco has been smothering so if we're thinking about Maybe a map where you don't have to stretch out for the resources. Maybe a map where you're comfortable on. Has to be Arabia here. <clears throat> Alexios picking a home map from his opponent. Going for more standard gameplay. Maybe picking Chinese. Maybe even going Mongols. If he feels like he needs to do something different. But Arabia is where I would go. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I want to see an archer from Alexios. That's what I've been waiting for the whole series. I know... Some of these maps don't necessarily allow that freedom in the same way. We haven't seen a scout from Alexios, like Mudflow, for example. Never, we didn't see a scout there. We haven't seen an archer, uh, to my knowledge, the entire series. Am I wrong? Obviously, there's the starting scouts. But archer as we see the U.S. viewing them. party here, uh, <laughs> we... we we have amazing signage that's been added. Are these people drawing new signs? Or are these people that were in the back that just got here that are coming up to the front here at our USA viewing party? I'm not where, sure. Where's our kids TV show hosts? Where are they? I think they're I think they're actually at the UK party. I think I got it wrong. Oh, okay. Okay. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah. I think they're you can see the colored shirts in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're ready. They this, are. Like, this is about to be our time. There they are. Yeah, they're in the back. And they're ready. And uh, thank you again, everybody, for, for buying the tickets up so quickly and for so many people being there. Uh, I did just have a call about pizza, by the way, for the people at the U.S. party. So <laughs> you got pizza on the way, people. Sorry, I had to step away about that live stream. But, uh, you know, we need some pizza at the U.S. viewing party. It'll be on the way there. Enjoy, enjoy uh, the, the tapas and the, and the mimosas. But apparently pizza is needed. So it'll be there. Uh, 
Thank you to Jaguar for the dono. Huge dono. Dude, Jaguar, you've been around for so long, my friends. You've been around for four or five years, maybe even longer at this point. Thank you. Um, thank you, Melissa, for the donation. It says, changed my wedding anniversary plans for this. Can't wait for the reveal. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Melissa. That's pretty dedicated. I like that. Uh, Feistro, thank you. Of course, missing so many names that have donated. 50% uh, of the donations are coming directly towards the prize pool, and the prize pool goes up live on screen. Uh, we have gone over 69,420. Uh, Epic Sea Dragon donated and said 69,420 achieved, but Epic Sea Dragon, you thought you were going to be the one that took it there, and you did the math, but you actually... <laughs> You were the donation that took us over, my friend. But <laughs> thank you anyways. Oh, man. But yeah, Dave, I heard you say it. Uh, I agree with you. I think that Arabia is the key. Uh, Chinese, still, epic civilization for Arabia. Bay, Mongols, one of the best civilizations there. Turks, bypass, one of the best civilizations there. I know it feels unlikely right now, but I am, I am seeing... Even Lithuanians high tides, which I don't think I mentioned, I am seeing four solid civilizations and good game plan civilizations for Alexios. It's just, we're, we're waiting for Vasco to ever show any sign of worry, and it just hasn't happened so far. Yeah, he's got to get Apparently. some wins, man. He has to delay until that pizza gets there. Come on, Alexios. <laughs> Pizza's course, on the way, the... bro. It's not there yet. Yeah. Of course, after the finals, folks, uh, if you didn't already know this, we reveal exactly who these players are. So uh, hopefully we get more games out of this final. Vasco da Gama determined to make this a speed run. We've got Lithuanians for Alexios here. Game number four. And we have Malians then for Vasco da Gama. And this map, Dave, it's all about flexibility. Both these civilizations are really strong with that. You've got the water towards the north, which players will usually expand to. And then there's also going to be resources towards the south as well. So lots of areas to go. The key for me for, Ale for Alexios is be aggressive. Stop expecting aggression and then responding to it. Be aggressive yourself. I expect to see something, either a double dock on water. Maybe we'll see, you know, the food in the south be utilized. Maybe some, some scouts, some fast spearmen that would make sense. From Vasco, this guy's usually the one coming to land, isn't he? You think of how he played in the previous game. He went for uh, one dock mm -hmm. and then scouts. Game one scouts with some water game two scouts with some water he's always had land aggression so i would expect like with the malians i could see archers being an option but uh i just he's been consistently aggressive and i expect him to to be aggressive here he's got no reason to doubt himself right now from alexios i just want to see him guard the villager or put the villager on that little island at the top and wall it in yep. early because if you place the dock on the marshland you can't really quick wall on the sides of that. And your opponent might be able to kill your villa with the scout. But right now, Vasco, he doesn't seem too concerned about stopping that villager coming out early. He wants to just push in as many zebra or ostrich as he possibly can and get a very, very quick uh, up to feudal age here. The thing I was curious about on this map is will we see anybody just not dock in the north at all in Dark Age? It because... kind of seems like it. Yeah, because like you can a achieve a really good res collected, uh, even if you don't have fish on this map because of how much food is in the south. And I know, I, I am 97.1% certain I know who Vasco da Gama is. And while he is usually taking fish these days, and most players will, I could see Vasco just choosing to send like 10 vills down to the south and build tons of mills there for the extra hunt and the extra fish but mm -hmm. it does seem like we've got some villagers wandering to the shoreline it's just do not forget about the food down there towards the south people that's a big addition to this year's high tides oh this could be bad this could be bad for vasco we see alexio scouting this area with his oh, scout man he's looking for the villager he might turn oh. around soon because he's about to hit the edge of the map but the scout is coming along from vasco as well alexios did not wall in his villager and vasco has not either but Vasco will have the scout nearby to support. However, could the that same thing happen bill. to Vasco here that, that happened to bill. Alexios yesterday? He walls himself in. Yeah. Dang. Just just a little, like, I know that the 3-0 is because of the dominance from Vasco, but honestly, sometimes you need a, 
a good break. And Alexios has been a little unlucky. Like, he's done the right thing to scout that, but he was there too early. And then the pathing mm -hmm. on a scout went a little bit above the dock, which gave Vasco an extra second or two to react. It's not something you're going to win the game with, though. You, you got to win this series through good, solid, consistent play. And so, again, I'm excited to see what Alexios will plan on. But he knows his opponent has docked. His opponent hasn't necessarily confirmed that he is docked in the north, so I'm sure he assumes it. Yeah, similar up times, likely coming from both of them. Loom is already in for uh, Alexios, and he's weakened that scout to a point where he doesn't really care about the villager up there now. He, she can defend herself, basically, yep. with Loom. Yep. And now he should be clicking up after this villager. There we go. There's the feudal age up time. Faster than Vasco. So for the first time here, we might see the pressure applied from Alexios first, rather than Vasco. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think Lithuanians just have that potential here. Vasco will have to recognize that. And so just thinking through the bonuses, the Malians can spend, they, they can create so much, so many buildings because of all the wood savings. So if you think you're going to be behind on water, you could go for the second dock. And then if you're expecting scouts, possibly go defensive spears. I think it's still realistic to make a barracks... Uh, as well as the you know archer range and, and additional dock if you wish to. But no vills on gold, at least all right now, tells us that uh, Vasco de Gama is not going to contest on water at all here. And okay, yeah. never mind. As I say that, he's going to go over to gold and change his well, mind. He, he also saw the second villager coming up. So he knows that Alexios is, basically. Mm, There's yeah. no other reason for that villager to be over there. And he almost engage with it with a scout now that bill can collect a little bit of food from the shorefish which is going to be nice it can help to repair but it's basically to support the ships that are on this side as now alexios gets the feudal age will he find this villager here from vasco he does and vasco's plans might have changed now with that feudal age timing and the fact that the scout is there vasco needs to adapt yep vasco's gonna adapt he also drops the barracks here so he's thinking land but should be advantage Alexios on water with the fires. This is a very fast uptime, and it makes it bad for Vasco because he wasn't expecting his... He, he wasn't expecting to have to adapt. He was expecting his ga initial game plan mm -hmm. was going to be fine, but now at least good recognition from him to recognize he's going to lose water here. Yeah, and it's just a couple galleys. So just planning on sniping fish, maybe sniping some of those villagers if possible, trying to run under every single game. This man is obsessed <laughs> with goats. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, listen, you got to do what you can to oh. take advantages in this game. And if the TCs don't hit anything, which we've been saying since DE came out in 2019, <laughs> you know, you, we've hit a point now where players are just going to run right underneath there. Now, obviously, they do. there is still mm -hmm. danger in that. There's a couple people like, what do you mean? I lose my scout to TCs all the time. But there's ways to do it, and he's found that. Now, the galley addition there is interesting, Dave. He's going to have to be sneaky with that to try and kill the fish. But it, is this the start that Alexios wanted? Dominating his opponent on water. Now he needs to ensure that he knows what his opponent will do on land. And he did scout that archer range. So I really like this from Vaz, uh, from uh, Alexios. Your plan now should be to go for a counter unit to the archers. And there's the range for skirmishers. I just love the walls. The walls are sick, right? Uh, Cosmo yep. had yep. some big problems. He had, he had a little bit more of an open map here. Maybe one less woodline um, than Alexios did. Uh, at least forward to wall two. But still, he didn't even attempt to go for any walls yesterday. And got punished for it so yep. hard. Right, could have easily yep. walled to the edge of the map, didn't do it. And there was just endless mobility from his opponent, who was Alexios, and Alexios realized that, and he's going to go for the big walls to the sides. Yeah, and I, I love how he says, okay, I've got fish. You're going to be sending something at me. All right, my, tur my turn to get the lead in the at the start of the game and then play defensive. It's like the roles are now reversed. And I think with the way this map is designed, Dave, Vasco, in order to come back, his best chance is actually to get villagers in the south with all the hunts and the food there. It's risky, but if you don't have fishing ships and you don't have an army to contest anywhere right now, I think that's definitely something that uh, I'd like to see Vasco do here. 
that galley is that, <laughs> that galley is just so that's so much wishful thinking with that thing, right? <laughs> like you're gonna run well, around I mean, it takes it takes what six shots to snipe a fishing ship you're just gonna run around with that galley forever yeah. and snipe fish like come on man i mean you say that but he has nothing else to do at the moment <laughs> No, he's probably not going to find the fishing ship kills. He's also not going to use those archers to find that villager kill from Alexios on the shoreline. But yeah, this comes back to Vasco's plan just not working out here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's had to adapt. He's He's got all the units inside the building, so he's just expanding his eco. He's kind of chilling. Now, Alexios didn't have to invest a lot on the water, and because of that, he's got a lot of excess gold. Might just need mm -hmm. to go for that market, click up, and then this, you know, try and get that castle age advantage. I okay, so I love the wall, but this whole leave the berries exposed thing, I, I don't know if this is something to do with the with the next UK boy band, the berry patch, you know, changing Alexios' <laughs> opinion or something. The exposed but, berries? I don't think that's a band. But berry. like <laughs> No, the, the the berry patch, dude. The, 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 you know, what we saw earlier in the finals, that's what I'm thinking of. Because, like, I, it seems like Alexios doesn't want anything to do with these guys because these vills are so exposed. Like, now we're walling without the berries. You could wall between the wood line. And now, you know, the opponent comes in with something. And when you had all the time in the world to wall, there's aggression here from Vasco. Like, the start from Alexios was great. But now mm -hmm. Vasco is able to get some damage in that he, he probably didn't think he was going to find. And he'll be happy to see that oh, many villagers. Look at that. That many villagers. Talk about having to change your plan. Just brutal for Alexios right now. Yeah, if you look at the idle eco ton, it's, it tells you a yep. lot, right? Changes As he everything. sends now more villagers onto gold. He goes for the market now. He's going to try and force his way up. That market should, probably should have been up a long time ago. But he does have the fish so that's six, six fishing, fishing ships, ships bringing in food um and that's villagers that he can take off of food and put on the more important resources for himself like wood or gold and then he can maybe push back with the malian or with the lithuanians here yeah you know i think it's easy like it absolutely right this is the the highest level this is the final what we just saw there is should not have happened right but he has the mm -hmm. advantage and it's easy for us, because of how good Vasco has been, to look at something like that, think that Vasco wouldn't make the same mistake, and just immediately assume, oh, okay, you know, maybe Alexios is in trouble the berries? here. I... You're not going back to the berries. You're just simply not, right? Like, you're not. You are. I mean, Vasco's not assuming he is, because he'd have to be crazy to go back to the berries, but so maybe that's why he's going back to the berries. He's got skirms. He's adding some spears. He's got a couple skirmishers right there, kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Vasco's going to find that pickoff, but both players are going to be in Castle Age. It will be a faster Castle Age for Alexios, and kills an archer, loses two skirmishers. They were going to die anyway. That's good value to even take a unit. I like the fact that he's house walling over here, too. Like he's, yep. He doesn't just have that single layer of palisade walls, right? He's got the houses behind, so it takes a long time for Vasco to break in, and if Vasco can't distract you at the back of your economy and you can have the initiative for once, it feels like, in this set. Just yep. for once have the initiative. Maybe you start to swing this whole thing around. And the skirms are so coming from you, behind. This could be a nice trap. This could be a really nice trap. The spears are going to be there. There's not many archers, Dave. Usually you can you can kill the spears here, but he's not going to get them. That's worth it. You, you kill the archers. Yep. The scouts actually get away, so maybe... Vasco isn't actually that upset about it. But, okay, so I got to forewarn people here, right? Very important that people are informed. So, we have a lot of viewers, okay? If the Barry area of Alexios remains open, and he remains there with 10 villagers without walling it, I may scream, okay? I'm just, I'm letting people know in advance that if this hole, if that is a problem, I, I may be loud, okay? So, we can conti continue on here. We've got double stable for both. But I am very concerned for Alexios as he drops the TC safely in the back behind his walls that this aggression from Vasco could potentially be a problem for him. She's still playing defensively again. 
I mean, I guess he's kind of forced into it because he went for the walls earlier. I guess he has the water, so you, you want to play yeah, defensive Yeah, he's here. got the water. Yeah. But th those knights need to be, like, in the back of Vasco's base, it feels like. Yeah, just, he's got to make a move. He's got to have confidence. Make keep some army at home. The skirms are going to oh, the try their best to kill these crossbows. The knights are going to attack these crossbows. That's enough crossbows, though, with Bod Canera to take good fights. And Alexios is running right into his opponent's army. The villagers will leave the berries. Alexios does not seem to have the army count right now. He deletes his gate, which now means scouts and knights can run through if, if Vasco wishes to do though. so. And the monastery now as well from Alexios. Yeah. yeah, and it's only five crossbows. So Vasco can use those very well. And I say only five, but on Vasco's hands, they're going to feel like 15. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. He can and use those very well, but still, at the, at the end of the day, you still have an eco setup advantage. Even though you're behind a res collected somehow, you have an eco setup advantage. You have a timing advantage to everything. You have more knights on the field right now. You've got the monks coming out. You've got the water, too. You've got spinning knights <laughs> over here. <laughs> oh, man. And okay, here we go. Now, there's a monk. That monk wants Crossbow's a out of position. Crossbows go down. Monk did get sniped. Nice clear up here from Alexios. The fight looks even. He's on two TCs. And David's clear, right? You know, it hasn't gone as he would have wanted today. We've seen a better version of Alexios, but you just need that win, dude. You, you need to stabilize. And once you can stabilize and start to breathe a little bit and get the flow of the game down, we see players start to start to really sharpen up a little bit. And that this is the moment for Alexios mm -hmm. now. Seven knights, two TCs, good farming eco behind this, still the fishing ships. This is a nice position to be in. And the res collected still better for Vasco. It's actually insane how consistent that is. Even when his opponent gets all the freeze resources on the map that were supposed yep. to put you in front. Look he's at the still got a more the... consistent eco. 43 minutes of idle eco. That's actually not a mm -hmm. lot for this stage of the game because it adds up every villager's idle time against five minutes and 41 seconds. I mean, every you look yeah. around, Alexius is going to have some idols, but it's just Vasco is so... His workers are always working, and he's made it look so easy, this hidden cut man. I mean, he if we if he is who we think he, he one. is, he's made it look easy over the last no. year, and all oh, very unlucky from Alexios, actually. That was a fast conversion. And Vasco getting well, he those was, relics He was now targeting the other knights. Away. Yeah. Yep. He was targeting the other knights, and then he switched back to it. So it makes sense. But, I mean, if you're a player, even though it makes sense, you still want to believe that it's a bug in the game or something, or that you're extremely unlucky, <laughs> right? As the Bloodlines upgrade now comes in for Alexio. So they're going to have relatively even knights here. The forging yeah. advantage is there for Vasco. But Vasco is grabbing those relics. And he's denying the Lithuanian's player um, the extra attack. So it's already three relics in from Vasco. That's insane. Okay, so so this now just becomes a monk battle, actually, because neither player has left over scouts, and both players are in the frame of mind of monk knight, monk knight, monk knight. Let's see how their conversions are. You got to get the conversions oh, here if you're no. Alexios, and Alexios' monks are on the front. Every single monk gets killed. And Vasco has full map control now, and he's got six monks coming, and the TC for Alexios as well has to be abandoned. And oh, the Barry villagers! Why are you out here? They're gonna go down as well. And Dave, Vasco, it just seems inevitable right now. Inevitable, incredible. It's just the, the level of gameplay here, I don't know if we've ever seen it before. In Age of Empires 2. The preparation, so just dude. the execution. He's making everybody else look bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lost one game, two games. I forget the whole tournament. I mean, Alexios lost three coming in here. Had 12 wins, which is... That's that's the tricky thing, too. Is that, You know, like, Alexios is an incredible player. He made it to the finals for good reason. But the way Vasco is playing... If you were to have not seen the earlier games and the earlier rounds... You would maybe think they were in different class, but Alexios has been number two in Hidden Cup. Oh, he needs something. 
He needs something. He's going to try and change things. He's defending where he can with his own monks. He's going to have knights to counterattack. Will Vasco react? And he, he knew, Dave, because he didn't see the knights, he was like, they must be coming. They're going to show up at some point. Great reaction from him, but still he's going to take losses to these knights. Yeah, and this is what this is what Alexios needed to be doing with those early knights with the Castle Age advantage. He needed those going forward, right? Uh oh. Instead, he was yep. trying to yep. counter the crossbows and stuff on the berries. Should have never been in that position in the first place. As he tries to reconvert the knights that were converted from him, he gets them both back. But now he has no faith on the monks, and Vasco would just dive under the town center with yep. the plus two armor. And this might be GG. This might be a four zero final here. Hidden Cup five. We have a panic TC from Alexios behind us. And his knights are not armored in the same way. Vasco de Gama's plus two armor will mean that the TC will not kill those knights quickly. And if he has weak knights, he might even pull them back to those monks that are just waiting. Not the dream final for anybody except for Vasco de Gama here. If he runs through and kills those villagers and the GG is called, Vasco de Gama is the champion of Hidden Cup 5. And Alexios congratulates him. A stomp of a final. And Alexios, just a beast of a player. Or, uh, uh, well, yes, that too, but Vasco. <clears throat> Excuse Both. me, a beast of a player. I, oh. I can't believe the level that Vasco brought here. I kept waiting to see if there was any cracks in the armor. Lost two games yesterday, and maybe there were some mistakes there, some extra greed, but in terms of execution, feels like it was only ever the strategic element of the game that he struggled, never the execution. He was, he was mm -hmm. doing everything right yeah i mean and and the theme of it all for vasco was aggression today and at, at what i thought this was going to be was a back and forth you know a, a d defensive move into amazing counter attacks but it was just offense from vasco and while he showed his ability to be defensive in the earlier rounds he was always the player we were talking about dave there were very few instances in this final where we were talking about Alexio setting the pace of the game. And maybe, you know, is this fear of Vasco if he believes he knows who Vasco da Gama is? Or what? I'm not sure. But here we had like game two, like, you know, it, it really hurts to know Chinese is on that draft, to know how good Chinese are on Mudflow, and to see Alexios try and play defense. I mean, that, that, that was also unlucky mm. there. Very unlucky from him, Vasco. He said, why wall on Mudflow? Why wall? I can just play aggressive. I can play towards Navy. And clearly, whatever Alexios game plan for today, it just didn't work well against uh, Vasco de Gama. Yeah, it, at some days you get, you get a lot of luck. Some days you don't get any. It felt like Alexios didn't really get any of those luck elements. Example, that yep. villager earlier, right? And, but at some point, you got to start making your own luck. And he was never the one pressuring. And we said it over and over and over again. He was just responding the entire time. Vasco, once he gets a map position forward on your base, he's not going to give it up easy. He's going to keep running around with these scouts. He's going to keep attacking everything like the fire galleys here. Make him do with one dock production and a stable against double dock. It's crazy. I love the lack of hesitation from Vasco da Gama in these types of instances. He's like, oh, I have a gap into your base. Okay, cool. I I'm going to run in that now. There was a good defense from Alexios, but he lost his TC. Here is desperate to pop out there. He's never going to be able to find the kills there. Yeah, and we had a doubt castle in our, in our grand final. And, you know, we hoped, we we wanted to, to maybe believe, even though it didn't feel like the reality, that maybe Alexios was going to be able to turn it around. But I don't think, I think Alexios felt second best very early on in the in the final. And mm -hmm. I think that that showed in some cases with his decision making that or the most difficult thing to really know about a player. Maybe he just didn't. He wasn't himself today. Maybe he was himself every other day. This is sick micro from Vasco. Like he doesn't even need that. He doesn't even need that micro. And he does it anyways. But like, I know who Vasco da Gama is. I am very certain. And the thing about Vasco da Gama is that you see this you see this level every single yeah. time he's playing the game right now which which there's not many people yeah. that could say that yeah it's just it's a new level of age of empires too and everyone else just has to catch up right if it doesn't end up being the person we think it is i am going to be shocked because there's a new god on the scene <laughs> <laughs> basically or maybe an old god returning to form but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah.
Yeah, it, it, how how do you do anything? Well, the, the he had everything he wanted. Alexios here. He had the full walls up with Lithuanians. He had the water control. He equal military numbers. And one mistake of sending the villagers out to that berry area and not walling that off, he gets punished for yeah. it so hard. And then one little split second of not looking at your monks, they all disappear. Yeah. That's part of that luck element that we were talking about. He didn't get any of it in his favor today. He but just, at the same time, you got to keep your knights in front of your monks. Yeah, just I, I think it was a strong mix of Vasco da Gama being a beast. Alexios not having his day, which which brings us this 4-0, which you know it, it's it's not the dream final that viewers wanted. We we wanted to have a, a competitive best of seven, uh, a back and forth, the the series that we thought we would have had when we saw the two semifinals and thought about the matchups, but it's competition, and uh, you know it, those competitive sets don't happen all the time. Uh, Vasco da Gama is out here. He's he's cutthroat. He wants to win. And he got the job done. And uh, again, if I know who Vasco da Gama is, I also know he maybe has been on the other side of uh, sweeps in finals as well yeah. in his career. So, uh, you know, it just goes both ways. Now, uh, ladies and gents, I want to say thanks again, everyone, for being here. I think in a normal tournament, we would have lost a high percentage of you already. You'd be off taking your nap or, uh, I don't know, doing whatever you're doing with your day. The thing is, with Hidden Cup, we had eight days and incredible games and we had this bracket unfold before us and it felt like every series we wanted to guess and we would guess on who players could be but then we'd see the next series and after that series we would say hmm well i'm not so sure i was right about the first guess uh best example of that being we had some players voted multiple times. We had some players who were never selected at all. <laughs> um, and so we have the big reveal of Hidden Cup coming up next. Now, in order to get all this stuff together, obviously we just had our winner. Uh, we do have to collect ourselves, get a few things structured to make sure this reveal happens the correct way. So I uh, appreciate your patience, everyone, but we'll be to the reveal here shortly. And I'll give you all the details you need on that once we get back here in just a bit after a short break. So stick around. Hidden Cup 5 reveal coming up next.
All right, ladies and gents, thank you for waiting. As you can imagine, uh, with a tournament that's run so differently, we have different accounts and and different structure and hidden this and hidden that. Uh, it takes a lot to make an event like this happen, and it takes a lot to do a proper reveal to really uh, to really make it special, right? Instead of just being like, hey, this person is this person. See you all next time and leave it at that. So thank you for, for getting things for allowing us to get things together. Uh, Dave, this is one of the best parts about Hidden Cup, man. Obviously, the final is exciting, but uh, we have had a lot of people talking about who they think these players are. And you and I have felt very strongly on who we think certain players are. But I have a feeling that this Hidden Cup, people are going to be more incorrect than ever. Uh, and we're going to find out. We actually have the community votes. We have who the players thought they played. We have it all. Coming up here, dude. How you feeling as we head to in towards this reveal? I'm trying to remember the three different brackets and predictions of players that I made throughout the process. And yeah. I hope that everyone at home has theirs, you know, set up. I'm sure Nikoff is shaking a little bit. Mark is <laughs> saying incredibly, incredibly humble uh, over there. And uh, everyone at home, get ready because this is the second best part of Hidden Cup after the games. Maybe the best part of Hidden Cup for everyone. Um, we're going to see who is who, and it begins with the round of 16, which is where we thought some of the big dogs might have dropped out. Yeah, so just to review uh, some of the first round results here before we jump into it, because once we get started, people, uh, we're not stopping. We've got first round, the Vasco da Gama eventual champion, 1-4-1. Now, Vasco da Gama just won in the final. So, you know, Pachacuti got more games off of Vasco than Pachacuti was was... Uh, sorry, Patrick Cudi got more games off of him than Alexios did. Then Suman Guru 4 1 over Jean Bureau. Out of the great against Jadviga. We had Gadjamada 4 0 and Gregory. That's the big one. I think that's going to be the big one. And then King Steven over Slim the Grim. Kazra over Emperor Sigismund. Ganjishka against Alfred. And then Alexios all the way back against Robert Guy's card. Uh, Listen, we had 16 participants. <clears throat> we had community guesses. We had three people never voted in the entirety of Hidden Cup. I think it is time to finally reveal our players behind their heroes for Hidden Cup 5. I play this outside type of game, but then you've got all this army towards the middle, and it's just like, it's not a fun feeling. Now, here we don't see any quick walling, any pre walling. And Vasco da Gama really struggling with the amount of army that is coming out here from Pachacuti. And now, some players might place it towards... <laughs> some players might place it in the middle and just play safe. But other players, they want to go for a castle that ends the game. And just when the castle foundation is placed, Vasco da Gama calls the GG. his own castle but this castle no. might not end up going up here oh it's only three villagers for jean bureau and we have he's doing it again there's a castle coming up right now what this is the second game in this a row is beautiful i mean i was going to ask you where you place a curial age i wonder if he's going to be doing it and have the same sort of counter pushback pressure but i mean these cab archers have so much value gobbled up Only going for the for Supremacy the Supremacy right bills now. are going for the trap, oh, man. Supremacy bills are going for the trap. Oh my God! Did he did he get supremacy? Did it complete? I think he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's trying he to has. attack. Oh, the villagers fight where? back. Well, well, wait. He, he lost the castle. I, believe. I think it got. So maybe, I think he lost the castle. Maybe, rethinking it can be possible for me here. But finally, he got a very good position right now. Yeah. I do, I do actually think in some ways this isn't horrible for Otto though, because he's still trading uh, reasonably well.
Oh man, and the, and the Trebs? The Trebs get taken out there. That's expensive. Three relics is not going to be enough to work with uh, to bring you more Trebs. Also, hand cannons got whittled down by the Skirms. Great job there from Gregory. Great fight, actually, for Gajimata after this, as he does clear out a lot of the Skirms. Leopard can be working faster. So taking those buildings down is going to be quite helpful. Crazy stuff. I mean, Gajimata took losses. And he's still at 93 farms. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
I think mm -hmm. uh, there is a very happy Argentinian right now who said, I told you so all the way back on like Tuesday, dude. Oh my goodness. Also, we just... where is Jordan? Yep. Where's Jordan? Where where is uh underprepared apparently Jordan who you know wasn't practicing that much apparently there has been no Jordan there has been no ACCM revealed there's been no Viper there's been no Hera there's been no Leary but I mean we are missing some things here. I mean we have to give some serious credit to Nikov. We've been throwing flack his way the entire time. He said Tato got four owed. Tato yeah. got four owed and he. We just refuse to it. believe it. I refuse to believe. I said one of my rules of AWE2 is Mr. Yo does not get flexed on. He got flexed <laughs> on in that final game. <laughs> I can't believe it. Tato and yeah. Yo in that first uh, round of 16 going down, and that's going to screw up so many brackets going forward. That is unbelievable. Absolutely. You had to really go out on a limb to predict that those two would have gone down. I yep. also had predicted that Yo... I predicted Yo went down, but I thought Yo was Salim the Grim, and that was actually Vinchester. So mm -hmm. uh, I, that that surprised me. It was a very Yo style for me uh, from Salim the Grim, but I thought Vinchester was really hard to find. This Hidden Cup, I mean, there's players who qualified for this event that still haven't been revealed yet. I think the one that stands out to me is Sato. I know some people had maybe guessed that Sato was out there, but which one? We'll see. Let's find out, folks. Let's continue on with our reveal. Where are coming to complete this? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then when this castle oh completes, my God. will the other castle complete? I think the other castle will go oh. up as well. So people were speculating on who these players are. Paladin is in for Smound Guru. That's probably going to surprise John Bureau. And there go the Paladin. They're going to take the engagement solely, I think, to take out the Treb so we can take out the castle. And honestly, I don't think the fight is that bad for Shanguro because Kikisadors are insane, but he yeah, must you're be going to see players go. What is that? Sumanguru is walking across the map to build his first up. Okay, I, I have a memory. I have a memory. Stabilizing and boom. Imperial Age is up. Trebuchets are knocking down the walls. Oh, a very nearly excellent quick wall to trap those cavalry. Spears and monks who likes to go with the monks and now Michael as well. Let's see the Michael. He has a, a tournament, tournament in. Red did not Ooh, tournament he got he it converts already. The monks. He converts the monks and then he has the spears there as well. And Otto the Great is gonna take the middle we'll play. And Otto the Great is, is laming. Otto the Great is stealing the cows here. Well, right, going right away. Mm, probably right. Yeah, seems like it, man. But I have I have vivid yeah. memories of MBL in the past because this is fixed positions going forward to try and lame. Now we've moved the boars onto the back. The, the spearmen have not done much. We'll see if the demos do something though, man. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, there we go! There's your bottom boar! Oh man, we've got a demo here. Hit. We've got a demo, the demo. That ground that he didn't notice it! Did Otto notice it? Otto notices it it's now. Just Oh, and Otto gets oh, underneath man. it, next to it, and kills it. Brutal stuff there for Yadiga. Oh, and not well, be anyone else. It has to be him. It, no? it has to be MBL. It has to be 110% confirmed. I'm back okay. to betting my life on it. Doesn't see the bills. Do all these in, or do you bring them back? Okay, so he's going to shoot these. Now you bring your scout back oh. and one hit both of these so that your opponent can't take it. Dude, I mean, you can kind of look at it if you're Gajamata and see the way the boars are kind of going, you know, trying to hit the bill. Oh, he takes the sheep. But now the sheep are getting lamed as well. And the master boar lamed. The count is the same right now until that bill died. Other than that, though, great. Mangano micro from both so far. Oh, my God, here come the dude. knights and here come the light cow. Complete clear, maybe? Split micro from Gaja. He dodges one Manganel. He should know the other's weak. He runs into the knights and the light cap, though. And the Manganel will be saved. Oh my goodness, what a clear up for Otto the Great. That is insane. And that other Manganel is dead. He as the crossbows get pushed back. Okay, now he's just. And he, and, and he, he has Town Watch, so he can see. Okay, so just 
just don't. looking good for Slim. Obviously, it could be the most important moment of this person's career, right? But there are two players who are known to love unique units and who are known to not resign when they are dead. It doesn't, but maybe Yo does do it. We got the walls coming up. Now, Hindustani scouts do more damage against buildings. What about mule carts? Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh, oh, this is such now, a what have you moment. done? Ah! Now, what have you done? <laughs> he moved it. <laughs> Oh no! Down confirmed! No! Well, their docks produce faster and they have fire they have fire galley. The Vikings don't. <gasps> so that King is Steven. that is that is so That's tragic. Oh my god. Villagers so there. Watch. Villagers there are weak. Manganel's on the way. Siege could be a surprise. Kozrael backs away. Good micro from Kozrael. Kozrael now goes in to snipe the weak villagers with confidence. Oh, God. But he only killed one. I mean, he did a great job not losing archers, but the tower's going to go up. And that tower with Bodkin could drop a castle with, like, very little army support. The farm's blocking honestly, that, I think. Yeah, the farm's blocking he get, it. He can't do it. If he, if, he, if he finds a spot here... It's actually really good, and it makes it really awkward for Khazrael. So you could steal the farms too. The castle's gonna go up. like the like have edition i also like how jan Jishka said what does that wall do bro that does nothing <laughs> i am into your eco and i'm gonna kill even more villagers i mean it's still just two like have but you could easily kill two or three villagers with this you could still play in the like have just fine there's a weak villager that's gonna be a snipe for jan Jishka. very patient and it do and Ooh, that could right be, now that could be there's destroyed. still a big build lead for uh jan Jishka. I Alfred didn't go for it, but I think he could have actually destroyed it with the initial volley. Can he range any of the villagers here? Oh! Oh, oh no! He wanted to deny it! Huns? No, he's Malay. And he's just stacking up these fishing ships. All... It would feel very valuable to me. And there's a knight there. The siege workshop might even be denied. And Alexios is falling apart. Yeah, I mean, Japanese uh, knights in the Castle Age as strong as anyone else's, right? So happy to make them for the time being, and maybe even looking to end this game. In wow, man, it's been so cool to like relive these moments yeah. and remember these sets and what these players have done. And, and for the players we just revealed, I have to say, for many of them, their highlights fit the personality, the player we were yep. expecting. We had, we had Doubt with like multiple Doubt castles, right? We had MBL with this very MBL style. And so there's the updated bracket, there's the reveal. And we only have four players left to reveal. And obviously this means we are going to know who's won the whole thing who is vasco de gama who's our second place alexios comnenos there is one player dave that again was predicted to have beaten tato foro at the start who is missing now we could be wrong but to go back to the call out before we continue here nikov after mm -hmm. day one or two whatever day that was said i've played hundreds of games with accm i know him and he foroed tato my response to Margugu when Margugu brought that up was, sorry, Nikov. I said, no wonder Nikov didn't qualify for Hidden Cup 5. We should teach him something. <laughs> and Nikov, I believe Margugu owes you a burger. I owe you a burger. That was the bet. And I said, all viewers owe Nikov a burger. So Nikov's got burgers for life. Maybe. But let's find out who uh, Gajamata was 
who Kazra was and who Alexios Komnenos and Vasco de Gama were in Hidden Cup 5. Yeah, this is a really interesting strategy, and as you're saying, it's one that we've seen Tapto do plenty of times. So the idea behind this, guys, is you go for the forward tower and try and use this to keep your opponent in the Feudal Age, because if you're both in Feudal Age, humans will have a better eco than everybody because you've got that second... Then it cannot be taken at all. And now there's a villager here, and Gajamata doesn't know about any of this. And can Gajamata quick wall? Gajamata gets the all quick right. wall down. Oh, man, on the... Wait! Enough, enough HP there! That villager is having a I rough... Will say. I will say... With the, with the Goths, there's... Oh, what a snipe there from Gajamata. Weak, but at some point, you are going to need to deal with oh. the Halves, and that's how he <laughs> does it! Tato the whole pineapple on pizza. Uh, I, no, you know what? I'm not going to bring that up right now. So. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. It's probably yeah, probably not an important time to get to that device of the topic when we've got yeah. fires coming in on the right side and the Galleons are going to get completely surrounded. Emperor oh. Sigismund with an amazing engagement out of nowhere. It's like they just got squished in there. That was so nice to watch. Um, I'm actually surprised at how well Red is playing. Maybe that Italian's bonus, you know, Chief is in a tricky position here. They need time. That I've wanted, he's wanted. So I'm curious yeah. once I see the drop again, if I look at each ship and I go, oh man. I oh, look at the ship. trap! The trap from Cosrail Viper confirmed! Beautiful. Not only does he trap these knights, but he's got monks lined up with conversion. So it's either join us or be killed. And the other guy kind trying to get natural vision and you have a natural cutoff. To stop the huh? opponent, look at the quick walls here from Kozrao. He had to move to this side of the lumber camp because of the lack of wood from the walls. I mean, how do you fight champion? The gate comes out from Kozrao. He's like, oh god, I can't That's fight this doing. unit. Oh my goodness, how do you fight these? More quick walls behind. He's trying to desperately save the Bombard Cannon. Still getting decent trades overall. Byro Bear forward. I on mean, that TC, I, I think it's. Like, oh I my! Think it's look like, at it melt. I think it's like five full volleys from five mangonels. I don't really know the math. And if he continues to do this, he could maybe take out the TC. But the defense here, D two producing out of two archery ranges. We even have another defensive castle now being dropped here from a bear. It's going to become very difficult for Alexios to find more damage with the camels and the mangonel shots come up huge. Right as I talked about the growing numbers of. Calf archers, they plummet. Yeah, and Alexios just stays underneath the ship. But the villagers come out, and the villagers go for the siege, and the light cap come in, and, well, not so good for the villagers, but actually could have been worse here for Alexios. He will clear up the siege. Yeah, we... So, Shipwright came in, which is amazing. I mean, he's gonna snag... He's like, thank you. He's gonna snag that relic, which he's been protecting. So he's gonna have like six or or maybe like struggle. definitely struggled, but splits continue now. Unlike other island games, the more diverse games we've seen, this might just be it, folks. This this might be one oh, big God. fight and then done. Advancing is Alexios, splitting is Alexios, but he's got Kazra backed up towards his production here, and this is something beautiful. Look at both of them dance here. This is 30 seconds away from upgrades for Alexios, and about six. Close. Why kill the elephant when you can convert the elephant? And Agajimata has block, to leave that. And block, block the elephant with the knight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yep. There we. Quick walls here from Patrick Cutie. He said you thought that Vasco was Hera or Vasco was Viper. What about me? And while well, that villager is actually housewalled on the other side, that villager now dies, and this is still very bad for Patrick Cutie. And that that siege workshop is needed. The siege. That knight actually is super weak there as well for Vasco. Anyone else kind of like overwhelmed at the moment for Pachacuti? <laughs> um, in the here, yeah, that boar and then the deer and the berries. I'm really curious on how much of a role this actually plays. 
And we are going to see Vasco da Gama use the scout. My right, wall was deleted. Zebra's on the way. I'm kind of rooting for the zebra here, to be honest. Would upgrade yeah. And horse collar because of pulls. Right? Yep. And now he has no food. So even though draw, uh, making the farms and dropping off that food is nice, he was really, really delayed. He couldn't get the scouts on the field. He couldn't get the spearmen. This game's already over. Like, it's already done. I mean, before you even said that, it was like a 7-0 KD. And Vasco da Gama ready for the finals already, it seems. I mean, this guy has stomped everybody so far. And now he's going to... Well, Dave, the reveals are finished. When it came down to the final four, mm -hmm. it felt like it, it was exactly what we thought it was based on the level that we saw. Hera wins Hidden Cup 5, and he wins it with a 4-0 against his pal, Leary. And what a performance. What a run from Hera. 4 wanting Barrels, 4 owing Jordan, 4-2 against ACCM, and then the big sweep. In the final from him um we'll hear from him soon but now that all names are revealed here what a hidden cup give me your thoughts well the Hera dynasty has begun dude the Hera dynasty has begun he's won two hidden cups in a row i think this is like his sixth s tier win in a row or seventh or something it's something it's getting mm -hmm. ridiculous now in such a competitive lands landscape and you can tell you didn't even need his name behind it you just see himself express yep. himself in the gameplay and it's incredibly and incredible no one can keep up nobody can keep up right now we're going to need somebody to match his level because he is in god form at the moment and he definitely deserves this victory no one played better than him it wasn't even close yeah and like good luck right because i think like in the past now granted we're going many years back but in the past maybe the weakness of hair was like maybe the strategic side but mm -hmm. and, and the skill elements were there. Now the strategic side is there and has been, and then the skill elements are there to back it up. He's so good. Now, I would go as far to say that I knew it was Hera the very first game that we watched of Vasco yep. de Gama. That was the first series. And I I didn't want to be that guy who was like, huh, huh, doubt confirmed, you know, or guess somebody right away. But you could just you could just kind of tell for those that watched the game because of how good um you know he plays and i actually think Hera was one of the easiest guesses for me in hidden cup four which is three years ago Hera was one of the easiest guesses for me this hidden cup and it's because of his dominance and how good he plays obviously you know i don't know who is easier to guess Hera or mbl or like Hera or doubt you know I, it's dude maybe I'm they're not, all tied you know <laughs> When I look at MBL, I said I would uninstall the game if yeah. it wasn't MBL. I was that sure. I, <laughs> Vasco, I was still a little, you know, unsure. Maybe 95%. Yeah, maybe. And MBL was about yeah. 100, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree with you there. So I want to, uh, before we bring Hera in, ooh, how do we want to do this? Obviously, we have not planned for this portion. We're going to have Hera in in an interview. But I would really like to see the overall bracket again. And then I want to see the viewer bracket which would have been pulled from uh, the data that we had from hiddencup.com to see how correct the audience was. Also, how many people had a perfect bracket. This is what actually transpired here in Hidden Cup 5. We had some crazy sets. We had the biggest upset potentially in Hidden Cup history. I'd really have to go back and look. ACCM 4-0-ing Tato is a surprise. Mm -hmm. I think maybe an ACCM 4-2, a 4-3 victory. Wouldn't be as big a surprise there, but... Look at all the look at all the players who qualified, Dave, who were still getting some wins here. Here we go. So these are the community guesses. Now, this would have been based on the submission form, not any of the votes, guys. So it's showing the top three community guesses and where people fell in. So it seems like with some names, people were fairly certain, but with other names, people were pretty far off. 15% of people voted. Tato as Gregory the Seventh when it came down to it, fifteen percent, Dave. No one, well, I mean, less than fifteen percent put ACCM as Gregory the Seventh. That at, is crazy. Look at ACCM as Gajamata, nine point three four. 
The three one, sorry. <laughs> like, geez, put some respect yeah. on the name. My man just got signed. He went to the semifinals. He took two games off of Hera, which, you know, seemed impossible for everyone else. Yeah. ACCM's yep. a beast. ACCM, one of the big standout performers in this tournament. I agree with you. Some of the other ones there, which were interesting to me, is Salim the Grim. Salim the Grim, mm -hmm. people were very uncertain on who Salim was. 26% guess for ACCM. 16% uh, guess for Vinchester. And then 10% guess on Yo. And yeah, I imagine like, I mean, as you look through there, it was very difficult, this hidden cup, for people to get it. Hera's up there, Viper's up there. People were fairly certain with Doubt. People were fairly certain with MBL. But what a fun time, dude. What a fun time. Now, I don't know if we have a graphic for the player guesses. Uh, I haven't seen a preview of this. Obviously, I couldn't hear the player guesses. Okay, so when the players finished their round, they were supposed to guess who they played against. And in green is if they got it correct. Um, so obviously, uh, for example, the Hera, uh, sorry, the Jordan Mihai series, Mihai thought he played against Hera, and it was Jordan. And then Jordan thought he played against Hart. So the players were pretty spot on. They were 73% correct with their guesses for the most part, which is, is pretty good. It's cool to see that because you don't always know if they're going to know, like but it seems they, they got a feel for it. I like how Mihai was like, oh, I got 4 one I'm a god. It should, it's definitely Hera. That's the only guy who can 4 <laughs> me. <laughs> it's, also, it's also interesting because we were kind of confused on... Wait wait a second. So so did Dow, Dow guess that he played Vinch, I'm guessing? And then Vinchester thought he lost to Yo. Huh. Mm. I would have... Dude, if I got someone dropping castles Vinchester on me and failing them like know? that... Yeah. Yeah. How did Vinch how does Vinch not know? <laughs> <laughs> also, also, Dave, look what ACCM guessed when he won 4-0. He guessed a qualified player. He didn't know that he 4-0 Tato. He guessed that he 4-0 oh Mihai. Oh my god! Yeah. So he just found I. Uh, he just found out. He just out found that out. That's, he just oh found out. God, he was like, yeah. He's watching Hidden Cup and he's like, wait a second, did I what? I beat Tato. I beat Tato 4-0. And then also ACCM had no clue he beat Barrels either. He also guessed MBL. So ACCM doesn't care who his opponent is. He's actually struggled to guess. But, you know, maybe it boosted his confidence here not knowing. How did he not guess MBL? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> ACCM. <laughs> Listen, I, I mean. Somebody needs to check this guy out, okay? Well, ACCM, <laughs> what's going on over there, bro? Yeah, I mean, clearly he's talented, but the way he sees the game, it you know, it just doesn't doesn't compute. But again, correct, congratulations to ACCM for getting top four. Best performance from him in a long time. Well, we'll talk to Harry here in a second about ACCM, I'm, I'm sure, at some point. But um, guys, I believe we will not have face cam available for a winner. We, we want to talk to him here about his Hidden Cup experiences. Uh, Hera, if you're here, speak up, my friends, and congratulations for winning Hidden Cup 5. Hello, hello! Thank you so much, guys. Uh, can you can you guys hear me? Yep, yeah, everything's good, dude. How how's awesome, it feel? Uh, how's it feel? A crazy run and uh, cont continuous streak of victories for you. How are you feeling right now? Uh, dude, I feel amazing. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, guys, for having me for the interview. Um, it's uh, it's been an amazing tournament, and I have to say, my new favorite moment of the tournament was hearing you and Dave react to the reveal. That was so sick. But I uh, didn't know you were dude. here. <laughs> Wait, our mics were on. I was listening. Yeah, it was amazing. Oh, you. Oh, but yeah, you yeah. Guys, you were here. Okay, okay. Dude, I love how much you guys love the game. It's just insane, bro. I was smiling there <laughs> on PC. But yeah, it feels amazing. I'm really happy to take the tournament home. I, I put in a lot, a lot, a lot of work for this one, and um, yeah, it means a lot, man. It means a lot. All right, so Hera, we're gonna we're just gonna take you through it. I know it's it's a mix of emotions for everybody in the call right now. So. Um, so coming into Hidden Cup, is there, <laughs> is there a race going on? <laughs> you got Cobra oh, cars I'm outside so there. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't, the it, mic picks up a lot. I hope production can fix it, that. No, bro, don't be sorry. It's funny. It's all good. Don't worry about it. Nikov just said, welcome <laughs> to Argentina in the back. chat. Yeah. Um, dude, sorry. don't, don't feel bad. Um, so coming into Hidden Cup. 
Um, you obviously were a player who got to, you know, you watched the qualifiers. You did not have to, um, to, you did not have to qualify. Geez, I'm struggling here. Mm -hmm. um, how are your, how are your confidence levels? Obviously the hidden aspect, the random seeding, having new maps get brought in. There's a lot of factors. So just kind of talk me through where you were at. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, for this Hidden Cup, I was actually practicing from way earlier. So even though I didn't play the qualifier, I was helping like multiple people practice and prepare for the qualifier. So it's basically yeah. like I played two tournaments. Like I, I basically I played the qualifier without playing it because I was practicing a lot. And um, actually, the funny thing is the new maps that were incorporated made both the qualifier and the main event feel completely different. So like, I really, really love that you brought in new maps and you have to figure out the meta, like the race to figure out the meta on the maps or like what works. It's just as a player that is so so fun. So like, yeah, yeah, it, that was just amazing on your end. Um, made it made the whole experience a ton of fun, and uh, you know, got us all together talking and strategizing. Uh, but yeah, I've been pretty much grinding Hidden Cup for the past month or so here. Nice. Okay, so question right away on that topic. You may not want to reveal who you, who you practice with. You know, maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe Hearts out there saving strats for next Hidden Cup or something. But like, <laughs> I I could see. I had this sense. When I'm watching Hidden Cup, when I thought you were Vasco, I was like, okay, look for Heart and look for Leary then and see if there's some <laughs> similarities. Did you happen to hear my call out when Alexios went Turks on Bypass? Did you watch that game at all? Yeah, I actually watched a lot of Hidden Cup, to be honest. The, the, the stream was so good, so I watched a lot. Uh, yeah, I heard that call out. I heard that call out. You, you, okay. you were good. You, you caught me early. <laughs> okay, because... I, I, we unfortunately we don't have Leary here uh, with us. Uh, yeah. I, 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 you know, but it, to me, I was like, okay, this Alexios guy clearly is trained against Vasco <laughs> and lost to this strategy. <laughs> but I could tell that Alexios didn't really practice it as much, you know. So, um, yeah, that was kind of cool uh, to to kind of see that play out because, you know, mm -hmm. in other tournaments. You, you kind of get a feel for the meta. Everyone starts to do it. So that's kind of my next question. And then I should probably let Dave speak again. Um, the fact that the first two rounds happen behind closed doors, meaning all your strategies are not really seen by anyone until technically like, you know, after the quarterfinals. Did that change anything for you in terms of what you showed in this tournament? That was amazing that was i i hope and i wish more tournaments can be like that somehow I, I don't know how that works into the production or whatnot but being able to play rounds especially early on without having to show your strategies to everyone else means you can go all out that's probably why we had guys like accm come in guns blazing because i talked to accm and nec i was playing him round one and he said you know what i'm not going to do anything versus you i'm just going to save all my strats and this yep. time he came in guns blazing that's how you get those results so I love that we played first two rounds behind uh, closed doors. Uh, no player had access to the recorded games. So you come in guns blazing, and you you can use it for two rounds, which is huge. And I think ACCM took a big advantage of that as well. Nice. So talking about coming in guns blazing, from your perspective, Hera, like not knowing who you're up against um, as your opponent, how does that affect your draft for those first couple rounds, right? Are you drafting... Um, towards your strengths more than your opponent's weaknesses in that situation? Are you expecting that you're just going to be up against, you know, a very, very strong player? Or are you taking a chance that you might be up against one of the qualified players and just taking it a little bit easier and maybe more defensive, more reactive? Yeah, that, that's a, a, obviously an excellent question because, uh, like, I think I guess there's two ways to do it. You get to kind of think of, you know, the possibilities and then kind of, like, play your draft from there. But I went for, like, the safe route and just played the first draft for me. And actually, by the end of the mm -hmm. map draft and the sieve draft, I knew my first opponent was Barrels. But I went into the draft completely blind. Um, mm. So I was able to guess based on his picks. But going to the draft, I just played for me uh, what I want to do and then go from there, adapt on his maps. I guess... You, you kind of you, you also uh, have that luxury here of being so good as well. You don't have to to play the counter style. But I wanted to ask kind of perspective from maybe some other players, um, as I think you might have insights there. It's like, do you think that less people played to counter their opponent in Hidden Cup compared to other tournaments because of the lack of knowledge about whatever strats they could have been practicing or you know preferences? 
Ooh, uh, that I'm, I'm sure for sure. Yeah, I, I'm sure it plays a role um, because, you know, it's a different dynamic. I also think the psychology behind it is also yeah. uh, a big factor going in. You know who you're playing versus you don't know, uh, especially those early rounds where you have zero information. You haven't even seen what the yep, guy's yep, capable yep. of first two rounds. Uh, that is a really big part of Hidden Cup. And you know what? I absolutely love how that feels going in and trying to figure it out like the players are like also trying to figure out we have a different perspective but it's also like a nice yeah. game for us um yeah to figure out who's who uh and honestly okay. it was just a ton of fun i, I absolutely loved hidden cup uh, this time around i mean i've loved every single edition i mean th this is a really special tournament for me but this tournament especially hidden cup 5 has been just a ton of fun okay awesome so um honestly i mean this might surprise you here but i also am a very big fan of hidden cup and i also really appreciate certain <laughs> aspects of it it's gonna shock you you know the guy who's been Shocker, out here, yeah. you know, advocating for islands for a month and a half, you know, big fan. Um, but I want to ask you uh, more uh, more generally uh, on the journey side of things, because if mm -hmm. I'm not wrong uh, with your age career, I mean, dude, we, we Dave and I were casting your games 10 years ago when you were like, I don't know how old you were that you were you were younger. We were all younger. Right. We all yeah. had less gray hairs. Um, but like, you know, <laughs> I remember it. Did Shut you up. Dave I actually didn't. It's sad. It's sad because I didn't. What? You're, Hera, you're how like dare you? So disrespectful. Yeah. Look at this guy. No. Um, Hera, <laughs> do you happen to remember our conversation leading up towards Hidden Cup 2? And do you happen to remember what your goal was in Hidden Cup 2? This would have been maybe six years ago now. Do you remember that? Yeah. Uh I remember brief, like, uh, vaguely, but I, I do remember wanting to get past round one. That's it. And I failed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean that, but that you did, and it might be a bit funny now cause you're, you're at the top, but like, I remember that yeah. being the goal and, uh, funny side note, you were like, my goal is to get past the first round. And back then, like your biggest demon was Vivi. And you were like, hopefully yeah. I don't randomly get seated against Vivi. And then you got seated against Vivi. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Um, like, I, that was the one guy I was terrified of. And I, I saw yeah. the Tower Rush coming, I remember. And I still lost to it. It was just <laughs> a tragedy, man. Freaking Vivi. Um, but not to, not to bring up, you know, bad memories here. But I just, you know, it's been a long journey. So I'm just kind of curious on within Hidden Cups itself, of course, and maybe more generally, yeah. how, you, how you feel about, like, the the journey and how, how it feels to have been there and now be at the top of Hidden Cup yet again? Well, actually, the journey didn't start in Hidden Cup 2. It actually started with Hidden Cup 1, uh, except I was a viewer. I was working at oh, a, yeah. like a terrible part-time job at a deli, and then Hidden Cup 1 was happening, and I was uh, away from the game at that point, but I was still like a top player, but like, you know, top 100, not like uh, higher than that. And I was watching Hidden Cup 1 on my break, and I was so into it, I didn't go back to work didn't tell my manager I'm quitting. I quit on the spot <laughs> at a restaurant and I went home and I said, I'm gonna start practicing. I wanna play this. And, and that's where still, my journey truly begun. And there's still a man at the deli counter waiting for his for his lunch meat <laughs> to take home to his family to this day. Still standing there, Hera. Have you ever thought yeah. about that, man? <laughs> it was it was a busy Saturday as well. I screwed them over. <laughs> I screwed them hey, over. Hey, so, I mean, sorry dude, to my coworkers. It was hidden cup. It was hidden cup semifinals, man. I mean, come on, I get it. Um, that's that's cool, what I dude. told them. That's, really that's cool. what I wanted to tell them. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations. Uh, I don't know if Dave has any more thoughts, but you know, we kind of said it all in the cast. Um, you know, we've seen the consistency and improvement. You play really well, and my my favorite thing, Hera, beyond your ability, uh, which obviously there's some level of work. That there's a lot of work involved in all ability, of course, but like, dude, we had two new maps and you, you, you had great strats for all of them, right? You didn't leave a stone unturned. You didn't think that you, you could just get by without practicing on some of them. So that, that to me is what hidden cup supposed to be about. The preparation should, should have some payoff. So uh, I'm really, really happy for you, man. Congratulations. And you, you really treated hidden cup with the respect that, that I want people uh i want players to treat it with so thank you for that and congratulations again bro thank you so much that means a lot honestly and yeah like i absolutely took this tournament extremely seriously and i put in 
extra amounts of work compared to my usual uh, for tournaments. So I was like super ready for it. And uh, it was actually a really fun time practicing with this tournament since I, I practiced with so many different people, like qualifier players, the, you know, my old teammates, AM guys, the, my new teammates, the GL guys, I practiced with like pretty much everyone except ACCM, sadly. And uh, <laughs> then, you know, I, <laughs> I was able to, uh, to make it happen. So yeah, thank you, man. And it's, it's, been, a, it's been a great ride. Well, Hera, I just want to say, dude, as a fan of Age of Empires 2 for a very long time, um, even without your name attached to the gameplay, we can tell it's yours because it's pretty close to freaking perfection, dude. Like, I watch games, and in my mind, now, in reality, I know I can't, but in my imagination, I'm saying, I could probably do that. You know, I could probably do that. <laughs> I watch you play in this hidden cup. And I'm saying I would never be able to do that. My old fingers, my bald head, I can't keep up with that, bro. So I, that's just, it's just poetry in motion. And it's, uh, you know, everyone's going to have to get it figured out because you're on a level right now, buddy, that nobody else can match. And it's all to your credit. You combine that execution with the preparation that you put in and um, you deserve it all, man. Good job. Dude, thank thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, I just want to say to you, to you, Dave, and to T90, uh, this hidden cup was absolutely amazing from a viewer perspective. Like, I'm not just a player; I'm also like a fan, and it was insane to watch this tournament. I was watching way more than I should have. I should have been playing and practicing. But I was watching <laughs> a lot, and T90, you especially. I want to remind you of a moment. You know, game one, the first day of hidden cup, I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm getting ready to you know to start watching, and it was my set first. And one minute into the cast, T90 goes, oh, look, it's a, it's a gold and it's shaped like an H. Imagine if this is Hera. <laughs> I and remember I like, that. Bro. <laughs> it was on slopes. It was on slopes. Yes. Yeah. And I was like, then I'm watching the play and I'm like, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's no way. I was waiting to see who's going to guess me. Who's going to guess me. Minute one, T90's got it because of the gold. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually think you might have had another H gold, but at that point, I was actually on throw people off the scent mode, not like <laughs> get people to think it's Hera mode. Um, but we can maybe that's for some person who has too much time on his hands looking looking for the H. Uh, Hera, the floor is yours. If you need to say anything else, go for it, dude. Thanks again for for stopping by for the interview and for an amazing performance. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much once again to you guys. I have a few shout outs as always for the tournament. I'm going to start with the most important one this time around, and that is the viewers, of course. Thank you so much, everyone, for supporting me, for watching the event. You guys are the real MVPs. Respect you guys all. We, we all love you. I love you guys. Thank you for supporting me and supporting the tournament in general. Uh, shout out to my wife and my family and her family, my two families there for supporting me as well. Those guys are, uh, you know, what I'm fighting for. And um, shout out to all of my fans, of course, especially those in Argentina, since I'm living there. And I and I hear and I hear and I feel a lot of the hype from the South American fans. So shout out to you guys as well. Special shout out. You guys are amazing. And uh, lastly, shout out to my competitors. You guys are all fantastic players. It's been a great time practicing and playing with you guys. And of course, uh, the unseen heroes, the unsung heroes. You got the production, you got the admins, Robo, JBR, whoever else. Production, thank you all. You guys made the event so much better. Riley, shout out to you as well. And I hope I didn't miss anyone. This event was great. Thank you, everyone. And thanks for the space, T90. All good, dude. Congratulations again. See you next time. All right. Well, <clears throat> Dave, the end of another Hidden Cup. It was the best Hidden Cup in my eyes in terms of some of the elements we were able to do. Obviously, the uh, every goal is to have the every best of seven go to the seventh game uh, to avoid mm -hmm. uh, technical difficulties and technology getting in the way. There's things that we could not control. The guessing aspect, the upset aspect, I felt the maps. I mean, we've, we've added on to the already good maps. It was, it was a great hidden cup, a very special one. Uh, and and uh, thank you so much for joining again, dude. I had such a great time casting the games with you there's you know early rounds dave t90 but then we just get into it dude you said you said yeah. it to me you're like let's do it dude and it's just like Poof, this is my spot and we i had a great time casting with you and having you on the show again well i've been with you since number one you started this journey a long time ago i've been with you along for the ride every single finals every single semi-finals i think i don't think i'd miss it for the world um hidden cup was kind of the first one you captured a magic. Maybe it was accidental, right? Kind of stumbled into it.
just because we were trying to find a way for Viper to lose. <laughs> but um, the to your credit, you've kept that magic going. Every single hidden cup, right? Every single one is bigger and or better than the last one. This one is no exception. I think I only missed maybe one set here, and it was two games out of four. That was the Gregory sweep, and I was busy with other things, but that was the only set I missed. I it, It's yep. must watch i guess it's not television anymore but must watch something age of empires yeah. i suppose and it's all to your credit it's to the production the players um the co-casters being on here and i have to give a special shout out to robo because robo has been involved with every single hidden cup he has known who all of the players are robo has been involved but he's never been um allowed to have the same fun that the viewers have had trying to guess people right his fun is a yep. different kind of stick type of fun where he knows who people are and he knows that you don't know who they are and he's yeah. tricks <laughs> with you, right right so yeah. like it's a different type of one but he's never been able to participate and he's put in so much work behind the scenes so shout out to him shout out to jbr obviously and then uh hera for winning it accm viper leary for great performances there and uh, obviously to you have a, a great end to the stream dude you did such a good job you deserve everything that you get here and uh chat well stay humble i'll see you later all right all right salutes please to dave um <clears throat> you know i i kind of alluded to it when he was here but it's much easier for me to say when he's not like directly in the call with me a great friend of mine man um i I don't think you guys really realize where the community, like where, where a lot of this spawned from. Uh, you can hear it in our words, but like I have memories of getting home from not paying attention at school and getting home from not caring about work and sitting on and looking for games, looking for anyone that's over the rating of 1700 playing this game. There was like no players uh it was so inactive and i just wanted to put my crappy headset on or when i got a mic wear my same stupid headphones and hop into a call and just cast whatever we we could um very vivid memory in my mind from um i, I don't know this would have been 2015 2016 is freaking dave had a bluetooth headset and i'm trying to be professional in front of my 50 viewers because this is a big deal for me and he keeps walking around his house with his Bluetooth headset, you know, getting his wine. At one point, he drops the wine glass and he's picking up the pieces. And I'm like trying to be a pro in front of 50 people. And we're looking for games. There's not there, like everyone kind of garbage. The ping was like 400, 500 ping. But like we laugh, you know, and it, 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 it like where we are, guys, it kind of spawned, um, you know, he the fact that we're here the fact that um he, he's still here he's still such a good friend the fact that the viewers the community growing hasn't changed that like dave is as good a guy if not better as what he seems like on stream because you never know right the difference between someone on stream or not seriously is um and, and it means a lot to me uh and and our um <clears throat> something as well that that he's done very well over the years is is there's always something to improve on there's always something we could do better and we 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 mesh well because of that mindset so thank you please salutes to dave for that um <clears throat> well you know initially I, we were very concerned with time because we have a live viewing party at, at the us uh or in the us that i'm gonna be at um and so i was i was concerned i wouldn't have the time to thank everybody but i think honestly I'm going to have time to go through it. And I want to say viewers first, um, if you enjoyed any of Hidden Cup, I think it's really important to me that you hear the words I'm about to speak um, because you, uh, you really just don't know um, the amount of, of people that have been involved in this one and the amount of work uh, involved in it. So uh, I, it's very likely I'm going to miss someone, but I'm just going to start. And I'm going to start again with, with Robo and JBR. Dave kind of said it. They both worked hard to make sure the players scheduled played games on time. Typically in my tournaments, I have an admin, but it's like, hey, if there's a big issue, come to me. Let's talk it out. In Hidden Cup, that's a no go, right? I can't know details, and so um, that is a bit more responsibility. Um, as as they they are then making decisions if if things go south. Um, it also, I love the players, but it's not easy. 
the frequency in which players do not read rules that they say they agree to or get the times wrong or whatever is higher than I would like. Uh, I don't know if it happened this time. To, in all honesty, I just don't know. Um, they just deal with all that. Uh, they 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 make it as smooth as possible, and they they do <clears throat> a great job. So I'm going to start there. Um, the the production for this event, as far as I know, this is the last event that they will run in esports, uh, and they're so nice. Uh, I've done uh, this is the first time I've used them for one of my events but I have worked with them, uh, some of the online Red Bulls and some of the NACs. They did a great job. They're, they're so communicative. We definitely had to roll with some punches this week. Uh, and, you know, it was always thinking how we can do things better, how we can improve. And um, I, I, I'm going to reiterate this point when I thank my, my editing team. But guys, like, I'm nice. But when it comes to events and Hidden Cup, if there's any free time, if we get anything done, I'm not like, oh, okay, good. Now we're ready. No, I'm like, we got to fill it up with more shit. And uh, that's a problem I have. And uh, I was very much like that with them, this, this, uh, this event. And I did preface, I did preface that with them. And they, you know, if they couldn't do it, they let me know if they could do it, they tried. And, you know, a big part of that was the reveal. I was like, the reveal is a big they killed it with that. I'm um, so very thankful for them and the work they did. Along those same lines, I got to shout out three people who played a massive role in Hidden Cup, uh, Hardy and Ugly. And they have helped in the buildup. Uh, you know, it wasn't just the main event. The thumbnails, the emotes, the videos, the, the edits. Um, you know, <clears throat> Hardy did the majority of the editing stuff. Any image, any panel, any thumbnail any any emotes it was all ugly and uh it was the same with them uh i i you know there was not a day over the last month where they probably didn't wake up and have a message from me right uh and that's 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 a lot right i recognize that uh you know and i i try and allow some level of balance uh you know for for the people that work with me typically but that's kind of how my mindset was this month. And I told them, hey, it's going to be like this. And, and there was always something more. Um, and so I, I appreciate you guys so much for, for working so hard and uh, ultimately making the event what it was, not leaving any stone unturned. Um, small story about both of those two. Uh, I have, guys, I have memories of 2015 sitting in TeamSpeak. That's right, TeamSpeak. Uh, in that call was Hardy. Dave, MBL. And I have calls where Viper was in there too. It's such a small community that has exploded. Think about that. Otto the Great, co-caster for the weekend, and now full-time editor Hardy. And none of this could have ever been believable. The fact that it all spawned from a game that was dead and, and, and you know no official support to build up to where we are is wild. So the fact that it still has, has continued on has been incredible. Uh, big salutes, please, to Tiermis. Uh, Tiermis came on and did amazing job with editing for Hidden Cup. Uh, he did the majority of the hero videos, and it was so fun. Uh, also, in combination with, with Riley, who absolutely killed it. Um, Riley and I, Riley helped me choose the heroes. We had multiple calls on game plans. He's a very busy man, and he's a good friend of mine. I'm so happy to have met him. Um, I will come clean. Many of the jokes where he made fun of me, I actually gave him the ideas. But there were some that I did not. And so some of my frustration with the jokes was because he was he took it a step further than I put into the scripts. Okay, but uh, anyways, um, respect to you, my friend. And uh, hope to see you again at some point. Um, <clears throat> so guys, <laughs> I gotta, just to give you an idea, um, Every game that you saw on Hidden Forts and Evacuation, probably for, for every game you saw of Evacuation and Hidden Forts, there were probably five played and, and 10 watched on my side. Uh, those maps started as concepts, but to get them to be competitive maps to a point where I was comfortable with them being in a tournament, they had to be tested and they had to be competitive games. Um, I did the same for the previous Hidden Cup, but because map scrutiny was a bit higher. I, I, I put myself under a lot more pressure to make sure the maps were killer. 
And um, so I would finish casting qualifiers and I would get on and I would play games with players who lost in the qualifiers. So we had ra so many people that I asked that lost in the first round, anyone 2K1, 2K2. I cast for seven hours. I get on, I play for five hours, usually get my ass kicked. But it was like, okay, what aspect of the map needs improved? What needs to change? The, the unbuildable terrains, the tiles of trees, the, the frequency of the rhinos, the, all those things. All that was that we're on version 10 of Hidden Forts. There were so many different things we could have done. And I have to say, the maps absolutely killed it. Like, I, I'm already thinking there's a slight tweak I want to make to Hidden Forts because of freaking Hera. But honestly, we didn't get to see Hidden Forts in the final. And I, I really, uh, I just got to say that I appreciate the map team. Um, we, we had two maps that um, ultimately, we, we had two maps that ultimately made the cut, but I, we were playing games on five of them. Um, so there were so many, we had like five or six people on the maps. Special shout out, please, to T West, though, who did so much of the managing the maps and helping with the maps and, and making sure the maps were, were as fair as possible. Um, but like Young Panda, Danger Duck, uh, Hank, um, shoot, now I've said so many. I, I think I might be missing some here. I'm so sorry if I'm missing a name here. Um, please just know that I'm exhausted, okay? Uh, but yeah, I may make videos on, on the development of those maps because I think it could make fun video content uh, in the future, but we'll see. But the maps are important. Uh, to the players who trained with me, thank you. There's like a dozen of you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for training with me on the maps to make sure they were in a good spot. Uh, it was super important to me that the maps were actually good. Um, I did miss, thank you, chat. Everyone's saluting Mapu right now. Mapu deserves all the salutes. Uh, Mapu's in a fantastic observer. Uh, thank you, Mapu, for everything you did. I still remember when I uh, did not like observing uh, all many years ago, and I was very negative Nancy about observing, and Mapu won me over. It was a bit rough at the start because we had some technical difficulties, but Mapu did a great job, all right? Um, <clears throat> I mean, we're not really even done, man. The Hidden Cup website, all the stats, WDW Kid, uh, thank you so much for that. We had Jerbot managing the stats and AWEstats.io. We had Hazemi helping with a lot of the guesswork and the, the guessing heroes. We had Grim working on the poll systems to make sure things worked. Um, <clears throat> I had, um, uh, I already said that person's name. It just so many people um, on top of, uh, you know, the usual stuff for this event to make sure it, it went well. Um, and I, I might be missing some names. So, yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so, so listen, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say uh, this is where we get gets a bit emotional, all right? I don't know how long you guys have known me. I don't know how long, what, what you know about me. I don't know what you know about my career. Um, but this hidden cup for me was, um, th this was not just about this event for me. It was a buildup, uh, which I'd like to explain as a thank you. So, uh, <clears throat> so, you know, <laughs> three years ago or three and a half years ago, hidden cup four happened. And when hidden cup four concluded, uh, I was over the moon with everything that transpired. God, victory. Chill with the subs, dude. This is not helping the emotions. Just chill. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Trying to, trying to get in touch with my emotions here, victory. I do appreciate it. Okay, let me just finish. So, listen. Um, th like, when Hidden Cup 4 happens, we got... We, you know... Okay. All right. So, at the start... Of this whole thing, this whole Age of Empires thing, all anyone ever told me was, you're wasting your time with this freaking game. And guess what? On paper, I absolutely was. There was no official support for the game. The community was very small. The pathing was awful. The lag was insane. There, there was no proper area, proper location to play the game. And I could have been doing things better with my time. I maybe should have been doing things better with my time. I should have valued my, um, maybe my time more. But it is... Me casting this game was the only thing that really, uh, I really, I had ever found a spark in, honestly. Uh, you know, there were things that I liked, but this was never anything that, that felt I brought any value to with my life. 
So I kept doing it and kept doing it. And it eventually, uh, it got to this point where it was like, the logic said, you can't do this. And I got very used to that. But then the community, however small it was as we grew, it, um, we smashed it, right? And then it was like, all right, next time. It, this shouldn't work. This shouldn't happen. And guess what? I, uh, we do something amazing. And it just kept going. And I've been so lucky that every time it's like logic's here and we go here, logic's here and we go here. So very grateful for that. And, and you know, fast forwarding to Hidden Cup 4 then, right? So that's like however long that time period was. Hidden Cup 4 was insane. It was massive. Um, there was all these things that transpired. And I would just look, I was so happy and so pleased, but I was like, I, I see this as an opportunity to actually improve. Right. Let's not rest on our laurels here. Let's not appreciate this for too long. Let's not celebrate too much because I can improve that with my casting. I think the game could improve in that direction and that direction to make the community better. I think that the esports side can go this direction, that direction. And then I got an offer from Facebook. So this high moment, this big moment that should have never happened. And I'm like, let's take it further. I get an offer to leave Twitch and go to Facebook. And, um, <clears throat> So I was like, immediately, my response was, nah, I, I can't see myself leaving this. This is going well. This is great. I said, no. Uh, and then they kept approaching me. And the offer was, was, was something that any reasonable man, man would take. And uh, I was like, nah, I'm not, I don't think that's going to work. But you know what I should do? I feel like this is going to keep going. Let's reach out to who I can reach out to, to see they're on board. AKA streaming platforms, AKA direction I want the game to go, AKA all these different things, sponsors. And I, I don't mean to imply that, that it was just like a straight up no or a straight up we don't believe in the future, you do T90. But in that moment, I felt it was very clear that the belief that I had in this rocket ship was not matched. Um, it was matched by you, but I didn't, I, I, it was very clear that, uh, I did not feel as though it was, it was matched. And so I had to do the responsible thing to two years is nothing. It's, it's the blink of an eye in all of life. And I went to Facebook and when I went to Facebook, it became very easy for people to say things about me. You guys might not feel this anymore. You maybe you still do. I don't know. But all I know is for the first time in my career, people question my dedication for the game. People question my my knowledge of the game more than ever. People question my my approach, my motives. It became very easy for that to happen. And I knew it was going to happen. And so when I started on Facebook, I said, my actions have to show people. Sure, I'm on Facebook, but I can I it can be 4K videos. I can do a video every day. I, I can get better in this way and that way as a caster. If I don't improve myself in this way as a player, I cannot properly analyze these situations as a caster. I need to improve that. And so it was like literally full on game plan from the start of Facebook. You had Wandering Warriors, six months later, TTL season one, six months later, TTL season two, six months later, TTL season three, six months later, Hidden Cup three, uh, five. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so my point is that I'm so grateful for what just happened here with Hidden Cup 5, but this was a three-year thing. <clears throat> and um, I, 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 I thought about this this week. And I have nothing to prove to anyone who does not believe in the game or me or my energy or my efforts anymore. And I'm not acting like I got a lot of hate. I've got chat flying in, man. But 10 years after this, man, all I will ever look to and fight for and care about is the people who have backed me and understand. It's a weird business <clears throat> because you get used to... Uh, you get really used to the, the love, 
And so what stands out is, is the 1% of whatever negative stuff's on the end. And I'm happy that I got to this point because, you know, it's, uh, it, it can sometimes get to you too much. And it can, be, it can be motivating at times to try and prove people wrong. But screw that, dude. Screw that. I, I've proved people wrong enough. I love this game, man. I love the game. I love to talk about it. I think there's so many different ways to play it. So many different ways to present it. And I love to make people happy in what ways I can and have a great time. All right. Um, and so along those same lines, uh, I'm, I'm going to be trying to take a little bit better care of myself. Uh, this last month and a half is rough, dude. It's not healthy. Um, I, I guess it's admirable to some degree, but I want to read a book. And actually not be able to think about Age of Empires for seven minutes. I want to take a nap for once. Uh, and I still want to work hard and make content. But I'm going to have to figure out a little bit of a better balance. Um, so <laughs> I, I just, just you know, I guess I just said I don't care if people question me. But if, I, if I'm not quite the, to the same degree of, of all in and I have a little bit more me time, I think it's going to be better for me better for the content uh, i'm not going anywhere i love this game i love what i do but i'm just going to find some balance but um to to hidden cup and the accomplishments here guys i think we had over 50k viewers today the sub count's been unbelievable we had crazy donations i just i think back to the tiny town i grew up in and just the the paths i didn't have there was, I could, you, you could easily, when I talk to people about what I do, man, they say, dude, you're living the dream. And I, it's probably a weird thing for me to think, but I'm just like, this, this actually wasn't a dream. There was no path that, that you know, it, it, there was live streaming wasn't big. The game wasn't back, you know, so to be here is, is just wild. I don't know how I got here. Or how why I got so lucky, but I feel very grateful to have an amazing community who supported me and has had interest in my events. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. All right. Sorry if if things got a little emotional. I uh, you know these are big moments for me. Like I said, it was a three year build up, but um, I'm gonna have to take a bit of a break. So I'll see you in four days or something. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we've got people in Fort Lauderdale, Florida waiting for me. Fort Lauderdale, please save me some freaking pizza. I'm starving. All right. Uh, Frank, stop eating the last slice of pizza. T90's coming. Come on. No, that's right. We should have some more food showing up. I, I can't wait to meet people. To have like 300 people in person for this meetup is just amazing. I don't know about the future of Hidden Cups, my friends. I, I, I planned out the three years. If Hidden Cup 6 comes someday, we'll have learned a lot, we'll adjust, and we'll kill it. But uh, I want to say thank you, Age of Empires 2 fans. Thank you, Age community. Uh, thank you, everybody. I forgot to thank the sponsors. Microsoft, thank you. Thank you uh, so much. Crap. Um, thank you, Red Bull. Thank you, Surfshark. Please, please, please check out the link to Surfshark below the stream. Uh, God, um, <clears throat> please, seriously, do that. Um, and... Um, uh yeah that's it that's it i'm embarrassing myself that's it guys that's it for hidden cup five it was an amazing event thank you so much i appreciate this so much i'm so lucky i'm gonna stop embarrassing myself now bye see you next time if there is well th there will might be a, bye bye see ya thank you thank you everybody debate i actually think that this yellow player here this cause route player could be the viper i think gajamata hold on a second Oh, wow, that's a Siege Workshop from Cosrail. Okay, so I just assumed that this was going to be a second TC. The scouts go out to get relics, and I'm pretty sure Gajin Mata's is doing the same. This is going to be a pull right. kill the Scorpion. Cosrail might need to try and block here to not allow this to happen. Losing the Scorpion will be painful. Well, bit of a traffic jam out here, and we have the demo land that should lead to a kill. The fishing ship actually blocked off those so the villager could repair. Again, Gajimata being very stubborn. That is a weak villager. He might go from both to avoid big demo shots. They've kept their ship spread out this whole time. Not easy to do. It's very easy to take the lazy approach and just control in and hope for the best. But these guys might go every last unit. And Kazra holds on. 
Okay, but he's tracked that the whole way through, and Gajamata all over Kadro at the moment. He's ready. He sees the spears. He'll convert them. He backs away. He can go right back to the TC. This production from Gajamata is insane right now. And Kazra kind of falling apart. And then Gajamata and Kazra are both microing, but Kazra again with beautiful micro. And now he's going to swoop in with his light cap. He's going to try and kill more monks. I feel like we've seen this three times over already. He's going to kill one, two, three, four, five. The siege gets here in time. This castle could be denied. So it's another half doubt castle, but the castle will go up. What a game. Now Gajamata, his castle might not complete. That's, I mean, what better use of these trebs right now but to go for the elephants? And it feels like with the attack speed, it feels like with maybe the hill. ship here as well from Gajamata. The spearman will help out. It's going to be archers too from Gajamata. I, I, of course, had a preview on most of the videos as I did have to give a lot of insights into like Age of Empires 2 and look through the scripts and whatnot. Goodness, Gajamata, like you gotta you gotta just convert these cannons at this point because Kazra's not gonna let you kill them. Boom! Two trebs go down and a bomber cannon gets converted. The demos are gonna make their way through. The demos might get taken out by the towers. But if they don't, villagers will die. Boom! No repair villagers there. Oh god. And apparently I don't know why people are saying Huang right now. I'm going to and it's smothering. And this this is Mongols for you as well. He's used the Mongols so perfectly here. It, could that be two Vil picks? He's going to get the second Villager pick here. Oh, it's Wait, it. no, he didn't get it. That advantage is going to disappear. Ooh, Ooh, that is such a creative play there from Vasco. He's used his galleys to kill the Spears, and now his scouts can fight. And his two Woodline Villagers on this side, it's going to get difficult, though, because that Lumber Camp's in a really awkward position for him. Okay, so got the HP. Maybe you'll be okay. Gates there from Alexios. He does have skirms. He does have spears. These are all counter units to what's coming his way. But yeah, I agree. It definitely seems like Vasco's the aggressor here. Alexios, maybe a little bit out of character, playing defense. Well, that's that's better. Oh, oh no! No! Oh, disaster! It would have been Alexios. better. Just one spear. His his days were numbered oh, out that, there. The villagers are weak on the wood line. Oh man, he's gonna have to run from that. He paid such a high price for that woodline. Now he has to abandon it. Now goes for a dock in the southern area. He's gonna try and take control there, and his scouts have shown themselves to Alexios. Alexios is getting a lot of chip damage in there with the fires. Not as great of a start, this villager, but he doesn't even have flex. I, I think he's doing it because Gasco is using the Japanese fish to block a lot of these shots, Dave. I think that's the reason. I do think continuing with fires, mixing in a demo is the safe play. And oh my God, the micro continues from Vasco. Great, the galley hasn't done too much. The scouts are contributing. The spears all went down. So See, could be oh a problem, God. but the light cap run in. I actually don't think this is, ooh, losing the manganel would be horrible, but I don't think this, this is gonna be that bad for Alexios if he has pikes on the way. He got his fires <laughs> converted, Dave. He got his fire wall between the wood line. And now, you know, the opponent comes in with something, and when you had all the time in the world to wall, there's aggression here from Vasco. Like, the start from Alexios was great, but now mm -hmm. Vasco is able to get some damage in that he, he probably didn't. Skirms are so coming from you, behind. This could be a nice trap. This could be a really nice trap. The spears are gonna be there. There's not many archers, Dave. Usually you can, you can kill the spears here, but he's not gonna get them. That's worth it. You, you kill the archers. Yeah. Scout. Oh man, and okay, here we go. Now there's the monk. That monk wants Crossbows a conversion. Out of position. Crossbows go down. Monk did get sniped. Nice clear up here from Alessios. The fight looks even. He's on two TCs.
okay, chat, can you hear me? I, I actually don't know. This is, this is some ex extra stuff. Can you hear me right now? You can hear me. Okay, cool. Hey, so remember when I was supposed to talk about stuff, I forgot something. So starting in a week, we're doing a community cup. And I want to continue to do this anytime I host a tournament. I should have mentioned this more. If you look below the stream, there's the link to the Discord, guys. Um, please check that out. If you're interested in playing, it doesn't matter how good or bad you are. We will have a category for you. And you can play on the maps. Uh, the information's in the Discord. It's like a $1 entry fee just on Patreon or something just to make sure that there's a barrier of entry. But I just wanted to mention that for anyone who maybe wanted to play these maps and, and uh, you know, get to know some people more. Community tournaments below the stream. Please check that out. And for the giveaway, which is below the stream, which I also completely forgot, I'm going to have to do the, the get the giveaway winners after the stream, but I'll make sure to do that, all right? Anyways, that's it, guys. Thanks again so much for Hidden Cup 5. Appreciate that. Uh, YouTube, I'll, I'll see. I'm going to spam the link in your chat there, too, since you don't have a below the stream option. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for making Hidden Cup 5 great. I'll see you next time.